one. Good morning, cricket fans, and greetings from the Caribbean. We are coming to you live from the iconic Savannah Park in Jamaica for this the wrong six match in the Cricket West Indies National Forum Championship. Alongside me, I have Mark Rusty Donovan Hill with the point, captain of the Jamaica Scorpions, Mr. Brandon King, and captain of the Diana Hot Eagles, Kevin Henry. Head the ball. So you want me to what are you going to do? I'm going to move. It's been a bit of a mixed bag this season. Um, what, are you, what are your thoughts coming in? Any changes to your spot uh, for the drum? Yeah, I'm about to get the end of our performance. Thank you very much. All done. Unfortunately, you have lost to our seven. What would you have done? It looks a good surface. Um, it, it has a history of spinning very late on in the game, so we're going to use obviously we have you know, three um, very good spinners to so use up our advantage. Um, it looks a good, very good surface. In terms of this season, it, has, it hasn't been the best of start, but it seems that you all are peaking at the right time. Yeah. The wins are coming together and you're moving up in the table. How are you feeling coming into the final round of match? Uh, very good. I mean, we've, we've made a lot of good trades um, in the last couple of games. You know, we just need to build on that as a team. Obviously, you know, we're a rebuilding team, a lot of young players in the game of two You know, it's important that they learn around quickly. And we've been doing that and it's just about winning a lot of and of course, uh, I just have to ask you, how is Shamar doing? I know he's not part of your squad, but I mean, he's a big star of, the, of, of Western, he's the teacher of Western, so he's shown what guy I am is capable of, and you, you are the team of doing that. So how is Shamar doing? And uh, what, what can you tell us about it? You know, um, obviously, uh, a class player, you know, he, he hit you know, the international scene um, running, so, um, you know, he, he's been good, you know, obviously, holding the IPL, um, I haven't had much shots with him, but he's in a happy place, and, and, well, all the best, sir. Good luck in Sabina. And that is the news from the middle. Brandon King has won the toss on the home turf and he has decided to have a good one. Good morning, cricket fans, once again. And that's the news from the middle. Jamaica Scorpions have won the toss and they've elected to field Andrew Chan in your company alongside Mr. Marlon Pinnock. Good morning, Penny. How are you? It's good to be here back again with, at Sabina Park with you. Good morning to our viewers. Good morning to you, Mr. Andrew Chan. It's good to see Marquina Miller back in the Scorpions lineup as well. Yeah, so the uh, two opening batters for Guyana, Tage Shandapol, will be taking first strike. As you mentioned, I think that is Marquino Mindley who will be starting from the southern end of the ground. In terms of the lineups, well, it's... Uh, Tejan Rai Chanpol for Guyana, Raymond Perez, Tevin Imlach, Kevlon Anderson, Kevin Sinclair, Kimal Savory, Vera Sami Permol, Ronaldo Ali Mohammed, Gudakesh Moti, Niall Smith, and Isaiah Thorne. And for Pinney's beloved Scorpions, it's Brandon King, and then Romain Morris, of course, Javon Buchanan, who is the young batter making his debut. ABJ Mansing, Pete Salmon, Marquino Mindley, Kirk McKenzie, Ramal Lewis, Carlos Brown, Devil Green, and OJ Shields. So they're playing three fast bowlers today, Jamaica Mindley, Shields, and Green. No mm. Jermaine Blackwood in the squad. And Leroy Log is also out as well. Indeed. Mmm, that's what he loves to say. And it's round six of the. Uh, Cricket West Indies Regional Four Day Championships. Uh, as it stands, Jamaica in fifth place, Guyana in fourth place. It's a proper mid table clash here. Guyana with 66 points, 66.8. Uh, Jamaica with 53.4. Mainly to start proceedings. Good delivery, maybe a bit of in swing there to Chandler Paul, and he's firmly behind that one. Well, actually, he starts with a no ball as well. Mm. Spotted early by umpire Christopher Wright. It's good to see Marquina Milley back in the Jamaica Scorpions lineup. Yeah. 
of over 127 first class wicket as well. Mm. Yeah, he, uh, he's just about pushing for a spot on the West Indies uh, senior team. Certainly in and around the con conversation. Beautiful delivery again. Um, bouncing delivery, played off the eyes by Chanfall quite nicely. Attacking field as well, there's a forward short leg. Uh, there's a fine leg as well. Fielder just there at backward point. Very short mid off and mid on. Three slips. And then a backward square leg as well. DJ Narayan Shandapur scored a hundred in that fifth round game. His first of the season though. That's nicely played. Gets that past the fielder. It won't go all the way. First runs off the bat. Oh, they're pushing for a second. Perez was halfway off the pitch. But he's sent back by Chandler So it's the first runs off the bat and it's just a single. Full uh, face off the bat been presented. Teaching around Chandler Paul to get his account open. Yep. Yeah, it's a uh, good conditions for cricket in the other than a bit of a smoky haze across the ground. Um, not sure if it's some bushfires or some sort of situation like that. Of course, it's very dry here in Jamaica. Short delivery, well played by <laughs> Perez, even though he's kind of fending at that one. Uncomfortable with that one. Good delivery there, coming in from Marquina Milley. There's three sipping plays though. Scorpions at fifth in the standing. And of course the Guyana RP Eagles at fourth. So fourth playing fifth here at Sabina Park. Short delivery again. Well underneath that one is Perez. Nice direct approach from Minley to the crease. Fast approach, very compact. And then he, I think occasionally he, he sort of ducks. He's, he's straight and then he just sort of zags into the empire a little bit just to get closer as if to get that stump to stump action. This one is down the leg side. Easy behind the wicket is Romain Morris. But if you look at the fast bowlers from St. Elizabeth Technical High School, they all have the same type of run-up. You look at a Jerome Taylor, who you mentioned a few weeks ago in your commentary, great half a year to buy in a park. Yeah. In that test series against, it was England. Yes, it was. Spectacular bowling by Jerome Taylor. That's a good delivery. Stay down past that uh, into the third man area. Perez will come back for two. The come back, yeah, for just two. Then the over there. So a productive over at the end for Guyana to start. Four runs without loss at the end of the first. And uh, good opening exchanges so far, you have to say. Marquina Minley up and down so far in this over. Marquina known to hit good areas so far. Not been able to hit the areas he'd want to hit here at Spina Park. But he was out on an injury. But of course, Andrew Richardson, the head coach of the Scorpions, is fit and he's ready to go. So this handle is going to be Turval Green opening the bowl and with Marquina Millie. Both past students of the St. Elizabeth Technical High School as well. Yeah, all effort a fast bowler is Devil Green. He usually gets early wickets, so we'll see if he can uh, strike early as well. And if you look at Derval Green, over 110 first class wickets as well for the Scorpions. Mm -hmm. 
always looking wicked, always giving the effort. And he's in and out of the Scorpions team as well with Inja as well. Not a bad start, maybe a little too straight. But a good length, I would think. As you say, good morning to Mr. Jerome Foster. Hey, look who it is. <laughs> Statistician is here. Ooh, down the leg side in the air. Play that convincingly to Tage. A little bit of in swing there from the well Green. If you realize that feel like the fine leg boundary seems to be very wide, as if he's at a long leg region. Uncomfortable in this occasion was Sean De Paul, Terval Green getting that ball to straighten. But uh, of course, Sean De Paul steps across his crease a lot. See it there, so you can understand why Green is doing that. We can get just get one to pop up, and then maybe that field is there is there for the hook. Maybe he's going to tempt him with a little bit of a short delivery. Tana Paul isn't uh, as adept at the hook. And when the ball is full on the leg, some turn to clip that ball aerial towards the onside. Indeed. Hence why there's a short leg in place as well. He has to be careful not to overdo it, Duval Green. Because there's, there's a big gap through mid wicket as well, which is sort of the tempter, I think. Good start here by Duval Green. Always giving the effort that is needed. 35 years of age, Andrew. 36 this year. Mm. But if you want a fighter in your team, all around fighter, Terval Green is the man. Indeed. Deidre and Sean De Paul, 76 first class game for 1,330 runs at an average of 35.5. Yeah, not bad return, but you want to see more consistency from young Chan Paul. He needs to get that average up to the close to 40, I would say. And if you look at his test average, 10 match, 560 runs at an average of 32.9. Oh, beaten there. Excellent delivery by Dilbert Green to end the over. Maybe a little bit too wide, but he gets a maiden to start. Four without loss after two. Yes, up. Decent first over by Terval Green. Shanda Paul on the other hand. Not bothered so far. And if you're just joining us. It's a West Indies Regional Championship round. Six action from Sabina Park. Leary the Highlands Hurricane lead the table. And Windward Island Volcanoes in second. The Barbados Pride in third. The Harper Eagles playing here at Sabina Park in fourth, and the Scorpions in fifth. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force in sixth, West Indies Academy in seventh, and of course the combined college and campus yet to register a win in this year's championship. I think uh, whatever you, whatever thoughts you might have, it's good to see the Leeward Islands and Windward Islands back at the top end of the table, and that competition, of course, normally Barbados, Guyana in recent years. And uh, well, good delivery there from uh, Minley. Had to play that under the eyes there, Perez. I don't want to see him get carried away with a short ball, but yeah, I was saying it's good to see the Windwards and uh, Leewards back up at the top of the table. Of course, the Windwards started all hot and sweaty, and then um, since then, the Leeward Island Hurricanes have really pulled together as a team. Uh, winning their last, of course, they beat Jamaica in round five here by seven wickets. And then they beat the CCC by three. 
in uh, round four. And that was after they actually lost, I believe. Yeah, they lost their very first game. The West Indies Academy actually beating them by five wickets in the very first round of this tournament. Yes, yeah, so far here at Spina Park, Mark Hilamili not getting his radar right so far, Andrew. Well, beautiful. That is a good delivery. I think that's where he wants to be. Back of a length. The batter can't do much with that. Now he just needs to throw in a little fuller delivery. But uh, solid behind that one is Perez so far. It's good to see young former on the 19 player Justin Beckford a bit included in the Scorpions 14 man squad as well. Did very well in the Jamaica Cricket Association two day competition. Just unfortunately, his team lost to the Jamaica Defence Force in that quarter finals last weekend. Mm. How did you do? Well, of course, I'm the assistant coach for the Jamaica Defence Force team, oh. so I didn't play. <laughs> but his brother Daniel Beckford got an half century in that game as well. It's good to see both of the brothers, the Beckford brothers, included in the Scorpions training squad as well. It's very good. Well played. And uh, where did the Beckford brothers hail from, Penny? Here in Kingston. Oh, they're Kingston boys. I think Justin Beckford went to Wilmer's boys. Mm. I think he scored a hundred at the under-19 level as well. And so far in this year's two-day competition for JCA scored two centuries as well, including a big half century. A maiden by Minley, still not on track as much as he would like, but uh, he's getting there, four without loss. And I think uh, our good friend Jerome Foster, Fuzzy, still has some juve paint and glitter about his body. <laughs> I know he took a couple of days off for Jamaica Carnival. A good looking fellow, he's probably one of those frontline masqueraders. <laughs> Gyrating on all the pretty women in, in and around Kingston and on the beaches in and around Jamaica. Well, you, you know more than I do. <laughs> The allegations abound, Penny. The <laughs> allegations abound. Devil Green to Chandapal. Too far down the leg side. Well taken by Romain Morris. Champions League goalkeeper would have been proud of that. Full stretch to his right. Full stretch indeed. Now what do you think about the Champions League, the Champions League games yesterday? Arsenal buying Munich 2 all. Real Madrid, Manchester City 3 all. Interesting scores. Indeed. Good football being played yesterday. But of course, you know my team as well. Mm. <laughs> Good delivery. Terrible green getting the ball to shape back into the left handed Shanda Paul. Beautiful sunny morning here at Sabina Park for this six round action. This West Indies Regional Championship. Fifth playing fourth year at Sabina Park. Getting some decent performance from the youngsters coming up in this regional cricket so far. To Jonathan Jakes from Barbados Pride. Three and a half centuries so far, and a century. It's 
Solozano started the competition on a high as well for the Winwood Island Volcanoes. That's, that's better from uh, Devil Green. You wanna you wanna make the batters play with this new ball, Penny. And I, I don't I don't think that the Jamaicans, well particularly Mindley, have done that well enough. And yeah. Devil Green maybe a little bit too straight to chant the ball. Yeah, he's a bit too straight on this occasion. Just outside the off stump and Chanda Paul just playing inside the line of that delivery. Taking a look at the other games happening around the region. Uh, the Windward Islands Volcanoes in a spot of bother. 42 for 2 against the West Indies Academy. That's over at Coolidge. Um, in Port of Spain at the Queen's Park Oval. Bobby the Sprite. 42 without loss against the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. And the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. 37 for 2 against the CCC. That's at St. Augustine. Appeal for court behind, nothing doing there. Flirting with that one was Shannon Paul, the last delivery of the over. Building a bit of pressure here now, four without loss after four. A bit lazy this time around outside the off stump was Shannon Paul. Lucky enough he didn't get a fitter to the wicketkeeper Morris. Flirting with danger, we'll see, Andrew. to see the left-hander from Kingston and Buchanan getting in the Scorpions lineup as well on debut over the years for Kingston always getting among the runs so it's good to see him getting the opportunity at the regional level and we'll want to wish him all the best from the commentary box as well indeed Marquino Mille gets ready to start his third of the morning. We're seeing teams shuffle their, their packs a little bit as the season goes on. And Stefan Pascal is having a chance for the Winwood Islands Volcanoes. He's on 16 or 49, a young player coming up. So it's good to see him getting a chance. Um, taking a look at the Leeward Islands Hurricanes and Barbados Pride game. Well, Roston Chase is back in the mix. The Mario Richards is giving a chance as well, as well as uh, Javid Leacock for the Barbados Pride. Oh, offending at that one was Perez. That is a beautiful delivery from Minley. Needs to get that ball on, on that fourth stump line. Even if he's bowling back of a length, Penny. Needs to make the batters play. And uh, Perez certainly had a little tickle at that one. He's pitching, leaving the right-hander. Good delivery here from Marquina Minley. He was out of the Scorpions team for about two games or three. It's good to see him back in the midst. Bowling this new ball as well. Sharing it to his partner, Terrible Green. This one is a bit wide. As I mentioned earlier, he wants to be about full stump, forcing the right hander to play with three slips waiting. So if you look at the field for the Scorpions, three slip, there is a backward point. There's no cover. There's a mid off, mid on, a man at a short leg and a square leg. Also, Turful Green is at fine leg boundary. Attacking field. So after the first four runs of the first over, Penny, there has been an absolutely nothing here for the Harpy Eagles. Credit to them, they're, they're riding the, 
the tide and uh, soaking up the pressure. But as they say, ensure that pressure bursts at the pipe, Penny. We'll have to see who stands stronger. Indeed. And uh, of course, uh, Raymond Perez is opening the batting instead of uh, Matthew Nandu, who I would have liked to see in this game. Down the leg side. Won some runs here, Perez. And we know Sean Paul. How oh, he bats, Andrew. You can bat all day. <laughs> you won't be bothered. Sean Paul and Brad Wade opening batting for the West Indies at the test level. Deliver good pace, good bounce to complete over number five. The guy in RP Eagles, four without loss. Dad! Dad! Is that real? Yeah, so four straight maidens here for the Scorpions. Tejan Ryan Chandler will resume action against Dover Green. He's bowled two overs, yet to concede a single run. And it's actually going to be a change in the bowling. It looks like OJ Shields is coming on. Might be a, a change of ends for Dover Green. I think he was actually more successful from the southern end in the earlier rounds of matches. And might be trying Mindley from this end as well. OJ Shields, seven first class games so far. 14 wickets to his credit. Very attacking fast bowler as well. When you talk about pace, he have that as well, Andrew. Tends to generate pace. And any wicket he's playing on. Let's see how he starts here at Sabina Park. See the Scorpions going with three pace attack here at Spina Park. Last two games here, they just the two fast bowlers in green and shields. Now it's good to see Marquino Miller back in the setup and bowling the new ball as well. Andre McCarthy is also in this lineup as well. Not in the team. He is from St. Elizabeth. A past student of the St. Elizabeth Technical High School as well. Um, making his debut yet for the Scorpions. Good cricketer. Good prospect. This time by OJ Shields. Getting good pace and punks out of the Sabina Park wicket. Reminding if you're just joining us, the Scorpions they won the toss this morning and asked the Guyana Arby Eagles to take first strike. 5.3 over so far. The RP Eagles just smashed four runs with no wicket lost. Good delivery there by uh, Shields, that last delivery. It's outside that last, the outside that off stump. 
maybe a little bit too wide, but there's a bit of tail back in there, Penny. I don't know if you saw that late swing. If he gets that on that fourth stump line, I think he'll have Chan up on a bit of a bother. But as you know, he moves across his stumps, kind of leaves that bat hanging a little bit. There's a bit of zip in this pitch here for sure, Penny. Uh, don't know if the if the Jamaican bowlers have been as accurate as they would have liked, barring Duval Green. And Mindley was just starting to get into his stride into about this third over there. Well, that last delivery took off yeah, it as did. it passed Shanda Paul. Solid behind that one, yeah. But he still had to move across the stumps. And that, that's the other thing. At the end of the over, it's another maiden there. There's five maidens on the trot here. Four without loss. Absolutely sedate start to this four-day match here, Penny. It's almost <laughs> a half an hour gone. And only four runs have been scored. Yes, it is a sedate start so far. Both teams... Looking to use the early moistures here at Spina Park. So for the two batters in the middle from Megayana, Happy Eagles been very watchful so far. But I think the Scorpions bowlers tend to be all over the shop here, Anja. Not much wicked yeah. taking delivery so far. I wouldn't say they've been all over the shop because if they were all over the shop, Guyana would have had a lot more run. But they just haven't they just haven't used it as much as they would have liked. I think that's uh, that smoky uh haze over the ground has gone. That's a good delivery there by Mindley. Oh that's green apologies. Um but he's been the pick of the bowlers I would say. So it was a, a change of ends. There will actually be a change in the commentary box at the end of this over. I will leave Jerome Foster and Marlon Pinnock, the two Jamaicans, to give their thoughts for half an hour. Well, Derval Green tends to bowl very well from the Michael Ole then in this year's competition. Well, the other thing, he's getting a chance to bowl at Perez as well. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Indeed. Yeah. Pitch yeah. and leave the right hander. If you can get a look at the replay on that one, thank you very much, Mr. Dylan Sharma. Good delivery. Ooh. That's a sensational delivery, Penny. Excellent field placement here by Brandon King. And now he puts a gully in place as yeah. well. Yeah. And I was just saying, Devil Green has been bowling the Chan Nepal throughout, and he, he was sticking with that middle some line. Now he's getting a chance to bowl to the right hander. And it tends to move the ball away from the right-handers. Yeah. Beautiful again, squared up. Played with soft hands though there, Perez. Didn't get anything on that one. As I mentioned earlier, Derval Green tends to love this Michael Olin hen here at Spina Park. And by the last game, pull a brilliant delivery to dismiss Mikhail Louis as well. Mm. So he loves the right handers as well, Andrew. Indeed. It'll be interesting to see if Mindley comes from this northern end now. A little bit too wide there from uh, Green. And immediately apologize to his teammates as well. Wants to be that fourth storm area, forcing the right hander on the front foot. Hence why there is three slip and a goalie waiting. Acres of space on the outside as well. There's no cover. So you want to force him to play that big booming drive. Then the slip card comes into play.
gets the edge, but it falls just short of that gully fielder, flashed at that one, did Perez, but luckily for him, it kept low. And that speed someone the tallest fielder on the field for the Scorpions. And if you realize he was too tall in playing that drive, Andre. It's an excellent move by Captain Brandon King. As you can see here in the replay. Yeah. Tall driving. Lucky enough he didn't get that ball to that man at Gully and Pete someone. Lucky didn't get more of it. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, beaten all ends up. My goodness. How is the top of off stump still standing? Beautiful delivery to end the over. Four without loss after seven. I really need to go and take a breath to catch myself. All right, let's look at the replay here. And if you realize the first five deliveries of this over were going away from the right-hander, the last delivery came back sharply off the seam just missed the top of that leg stump excellent bowling here and another maiden completed fifth in a row here for the scorpions score remains at four without loss here at spina park spike commentator said it's a state start so far and definitely is so far just a full run so far, scored by the Harper Eagles. Five maidens in a chat by the Scorpions. To say a special welcome to Mr. Jerome Foster. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning, Marlon, and good morning to all our viewers around the world. This morning here in Jamaica, afternoon, night, wherever you are. Forceful shot there from Tejan and Chanda Paul. And it has been a struggle for the Harpy Eagles so far this morning in terms of run scoring. Not many problems created by the Jamaica Scorpions bowlers outside of that last over from Derval Green, which was testing a couple of deliveries going away from the bat. And then he was almost setting up the battle for that big in docker. And he got it off, but he just didn't take the top of the stumps. Couldn't believe it, Green. That one is backward of point. Good fielding here. It's a chance to run out at the non-striker's end. Ramon Lewis is a very good fielder. He's very quick, sharp in and around that backward point region. A standout fielder in his youth days and he's now showing the qualities. He's also part of this guy in a franchise with the inception of the tournament or this professional setup in 2013. So he's no stranger to some of these players. But showing there that he's almost creating a, an opportunity for the Scorpions who I dare say they need a win. And Ramal Lewis is a great leader as well. But back in 2014, I think he kept in the West Indies under 19. Brandon King was a part of that setup as well. Nikki P has a Nicholas Spurn. Still has the, the highest score for a losing player in the under 19 World Cup. Nicholas Spurn in that 2014 World Cup. Quick from Shields. Too quick for Morris. Had a hand on it, but it won't stop it from rolling over the boundary of the ball, that is. And it is. Four wides umpire Joel Wilson, it looks like. Yes, it is. So, runs given for the Harpy Eagles. Uh, they've been craving some. They have been struggling to get runs off the bat. Only two for Perez, one for Chandra Paul. And now some wides added now. So, the score goes up to eight without loss. And that was a little bit wayward from Shields. First run. 5.2 overs, Foster. <laughs> it was Joe for the RP Eagles. Joe she has decided to break that Joe here at Spina Park. So five wide, so it's nine without loss. A 
good, good, good yeah. delivery. I was about to say that Chanda Paul, this is nothing new to him. He's willing to wear the bowling unit down. He's willing to bat as long as possible, take as much time as possible. And at this level, as a bowling unit, you have to be ready to, to go the hard yards. And you saw it against the Barbados Pride when Craig Brathwaite was willing to dig in and put in the hard work. The Scorpions bowlers lost their patience. And he scored his first century of the season, his only century so far of the season. Going for that booming in swinger is Shields and just ill directed. But Chanda Paul is a similar type of player, similar style player to Craig Brathwaite, where they're not really stroke makers, they're not shot makers, they're not going to be scoring a hundred of 70 or 80 deliveries or even a hundred of a hundred balls. They're going to be taking as much time as possible. They're probably going to need all three sessions to score 100 based on how they approach the innings. And it's not to say it's a bad approach. It's just how they are comfortably making runs. And it is, it's an important aspect as well in this format where you're willing to bat for time. Something that you're never short on in four-day cricket, and that's time. That completes the eighth over. The second one for Shields, it's nine without loss for the Harpy Eagles. And they look at Bradwitt and Sean Paul, both opening the batting for the West Indies at the test level. Yeah, the nature, the nature of our batting, that is when I say our is the West Indies in this instance, is that you have players who are in the middle order who can score at a faster pace. Not that you have seen it consistently. Obviously, it's a transitioning team again. Well, people probably say that we're transitioning for the last 30 years, but it's a transitioning unit that is being rebuilt in a certain structure where you have free-flowing stroke makers in that middle order. Alec Athenes, the Hodge, the... Um, gonna get the other names. Perez plays that one up to, to point. Uh, you expect Jason Holder to be back in the team. Those type of players are players who are a little bit more free scoring. So they're going to score faster. The, the responsibility of someone like uh, Chandra Paul and Brathwaite, Kirk McKenzie bats at number three, well, has been batting at number three, is that Brathwaite and Chandra Paul wear down the bowlers, take as much shine off that new ball get the ball as soft as possible for the middle order to, to cash in on. Perez steers that one backward of point. Again, good feeling from Lewis. And he stops a single. And Perez is looking at Chandler Paul as to why he don't run. Well, I won't say stop a single. Maybe he stop a two or three there. Yeah. Excellent across the ground. It was Rama Lewis showing great commitment, Foster. And this is what you want to see from the Scorpions. been a real struggle for the Scorpions this season. He goes hard and aerially. He goes through cover point. Man from backward point, that's Ramon Lewis doing the chasing. And Chandrapur wanted three, not Perez. I think Green wants the ball to Perez as well. And that's another loose drive outside that off stump. Yeah, if you realize that drive from Perez, just the arm swing. No movement off the foot. That's why Captain Brandon King tends to go with three slip and a goalie. And Derval Green loves the ball to the right handers. And he's a bowler who really and truly can set up the batters. As you see in the last over to Perez. Bowl five out swingers. And then the last delivery was an in swinger just Got over the top of the middle and leg stump. And what you don't want is that you don't want this pair to bat 15 overs and score at a run and over or just under two runs and over. And then both of them get dismissed. It's going to defeat the purpose of batting or surviving. 
You have to be scoring at a pace that puts your team in a decent position that even if you lose a couple of wickets, they can still rebuild, but with a cushion. Not rebuilding from a hole after you batted <laughs> almost an hour. So that shot from Perez over cover point has forced a change in the field. The man from short leg, that's Carlos Brown, is now into the cover region. Three slips and a gully go down. Perez hasn't had this, the greatest of seasons. This is his, what, fourth game? So I think his best score is 23 so far. In, and I think for the, the Harpy Eagles in general, their top order hasn't really delivered. Tevin Imlock scored a century in the third round. Kevin Sinclair is obviously their leading run scorer with 412 runs, but he's batting at number six. And he's more known for his bowling, his off spin, than his batting. But he has worked on his batting over the last couple of years. You saw it in that second test against the Australians where he scored a half century. And that completes a ninth over at 11 without loss. And he, he constantly reminds people that he does a lot of work on his batting, Kevin Sinclair. A cricketer that he would want around your setup. Very energetic, lively. And has that confidence and aura about him that... And very hard working as well. Yeah. You never see him around a cricket field and he's not talking to somebody, trying to learn. pick their brains. He's trying to learn something new all the time. I remember when he was making his debut, he had a long conversation with Chris Gale, the universe boss, trying to find out means and ways how to operate on the international scene. And now... And that would be his T20 debut. Indeed. Yeah, that was, I think, 2021. Yeah. So, you, 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 it's, th it's that type of player where he's, he's so much in love with his cricket that you can just see it in everything that he, he does on the field. His celebrations. He's always talking. He's always trying to improve as a player. One for the future for West Indies cricket. She is with a full toss to Chanda Paul. Well, even the full toss here, Chanda Paul, haven't been getting away. And that's how he plays. Uh, Kevin Sinclair have his own celebration. <laughs> Scored an half century on debut for the West Indies at the test level as well. Just picked up a wicket though. idea from OJ Shields. Not a bad tactic to Chanda Paul to go around the wicket and just cramping for that room outside the off stump. He tends to flay at those deliveries outside the off stump but normally it's when the deliveries are across him. He's always, and as you saw in that series against Australia, the second series, the first series he did pretty well when he emerged on the scene. The second series, the Australians bore that top of the off-stump line and he, it was a struggle for him, especially to Hazelwood. That one hitting him in the front. So says Joel Wilson as well. Pace from OJ Shields doing the trick there. Fast, full, straight. And Chandra Paul looking to play through. Widish mid on. Missed it completely. And he thud into the, the front part. That is cannoning into the stumps. Yes, indeed. Good delivery. Good pace there from OJ Shields. And hence, he gets his reward. Of the Guyana RP Eagle opening batsman, Shonda Paul. And a big wicket as well. I think for the Scorpion's sake, you'd probably say this is a critical wicket because Shonda Paul can bat long. Scored a century in the last round. But that one is crunching into the stumps. Missed it. And Tevin Imlock makes his way, the captain and wicket keeper, to the crease. Was a part of that 2016 winning squad. Had that infamous stumping slash run out of Richard Pant in the final. I don't know if you call it a stumping. <laughs> Should be a run out. Yeah. <laughs> That time, Pant was the new hero for India's cricket. On the, 
under 19 and you see it transforming now he's now making his return after 18 months out following a car accident two broken leg mm. couple of acl surgeries and he's back playing cricket which is a good sign for world cricket because he's such an impactful player yes and you remember nicholas Pern had his two legs break as well yeah, they were broken here car accident similar situation so imlock and similar to the jamaica scorpion setup where the harpy eagles changed their captain in the season the the, the Harpy Eagles changed their captain after the second round. Kevin Hernandez started the season as a captain. And Imlock replaced him. And the Scorpions, they replaced Jermaine Blackwood, who coincidentally is not a part of the setup for this game. And you probably doubt that he'll be a part of the setup for the rest of the season because there's only a game to go. <laughs> and, and of course, Leroy Log as well. Imlock taking responsibility by batting at number three. I'm going to ask you about that German Blackwood decision no. after this delivery, depending on what happens to this delivery. Another full delivery from Shields. And Imlock ended up on his face. <laughs> but the great thing about it is that he got bat onto it because easily could have missed everything he lost his bearings <laughs> and that was quick pace again from OJ Shields and almost knock onto the bat under the bat I beg your pardon good pace there by OJ Shields cranking up some pace here at Sabina Park and why not yeah. must be pumped to getting a very important wicket of Shonda Paul better operation from him as well in this game aiming for the stumps thought in the previous rounds he was bowling a little bit too short almost wasting his space bowl as quickly as possible on the stumps and then you can really create damage as you can see there's no substitute for pace you look at Kevin Imlock's first class career 20 matches, scoring 847 runs at an average of 27.3. Only one century to his name. And he came in the last round as well. He tucks that one into the onside and gets off the mark for the first time. And it's 12 for 1 after 10 overs. A successful over for OJ Shields. Got the big wicket of Tej Narayan Chandrapur, the West Indies test opener. He went for four. And the Scorpions found a way to get that prize breakthrough. And I was saying about the Jermaine Blackwood situation is that uh, even though the coaching staff said that he was given that almost extension based on his body of work to play a couple more games because his form has been dire there's no two ways about it it has been poor his shot selections have been woeful and i personally think that that game against the hurricanes that last shot it was a horrific shot it was a shot of someone who lacked confidence and is short on confidence it's green continues to imlock and his head position was nowhere close to the ball. It's as if he wasn't even looking at the ball when he played the shot. And he ended up with his head pointing towards the clouds. And the ball was almost in line with the stumps. So that tells you that he wasn't looking at the ball for a long period, which I found to be more of a, a confidence issue than a technical issue. And I would say, I can tell you why I'm saying it's not a technical issue. Because I believe that he was just trying to hammer himself back into form or get some runs, get back onto ball. You're actually correct. Because the ball before, he whipped that ball over the mid-wicked region. Yep. And then the very next ball... It was a similar in-docking delivery from Jer Jeremiah Louis. Just a bit full on this occasion. Exactly. 
So I was saying that maybe you could have continued with him and just played out the season, given that he's a West Indies player. Former, I don't know if you can say former, but a West Indies player. Takes the edge. Buchanan dives away to the right. A third slip. Does the fielding. Javon Buchanan plays his cricket here at Kingston Cricket Club and he's making his regional debut for those who are just joining us. And I would say maybe it would be worth giving him that run. He has been playing for Jamaica since, what, 19 years old? So he has been playing for 13 years, you'd probably say, at this level. But also, with a team that is struggling. Oh, good delivery. Beautiful delivery from Green, shaped away from Imla. Touchdown on and about middle and off and just moved away at the last minute. And collected by Romain Morris. The fact that he has played so many years for Jamaica, I personally think that you could say that he has a little bit more in the bank that he could play with in terms of his body of work. But also, in a team that is struggling and struggling badly with the bat, I think the selector's hands were tied given that he's no longer the captain of the team. And if you look at his scores, his highest being 27 with three ducks is not something that gives you confidence as a selector. And the way how he has been dismissed or the ways that he has been dismissed recently. Yes, definitely shows it all. Yeah. You look at a Leroy Lug as well. Scored a few half centuries. And then he was dropped from the team. Yeah, but I think Lug's... Lug's detriment really came from the, the mode of dismissal, the way how he was dismissed, getting dismissed on the boundary when there was no pressure, getting dismissed on the cusp of a break, playing the balls aerially down to Long when there are only two fielders out in this format can create a problem as that one completes a maiden over from uh, Derval Green. At the end of it, it's 12 for 1, the guy in the Harpy Eagles. And if you look at the Scorpions, Butters got out in this year's regional championship, it's a poor. Our oh, Leroy Lowe got out, hitting the ball aerial to a mid wicket, boundary, a long on, sweeping across the line. At this level, you, you're not going to accept that as a coach. You won't accept that. A German Black would have been struggling. Remember, he was dropped from the West Indies team, then he came back said in an interview earlier he wants to make some runs at this regional level and get back into the West Indies team he was the captain lost the captain and his highest score in this West Indies regional championship I think it was 27 it was to show how toned Blackwood form was going yeah, and he has batted nine times batted nine times and I think his aggregate is 88 Less than 10 runs per <laughs> innings. Very poor indeed. She is just continuing. So, so you, you look at it and you can look at it on the face of it and say that if you're being honest with yourself that selectors coaching staff made the right choice in dropping him from the squad. But also, there's also another side of it in terms of the player side of it where you can say that this man has been playing for 10, 12 years. Maybe you give him the season to just finish out the season. But as I said, based on the situation, you could also be stopping somebody who is 20, like a Justin Beckford, from getting a, a crack at this level. Comes off the, the pad of Perez. It's and good Wilson give his, gives him. That one, it took some time from Wilson. It was a muted appeal for some time. Shields was a lone hand up. And he prolonged for a couple of seconds. Had it not touched the bat, based on what we are seeing here, I think he's out. It looks straight. Can we see it one more time? I thought it was bat and pad. And for a second, I was even getting distracted to say that this is a wasted appeal. But Shields has his second. Perez is limping off. Oh, no. yeah, that's a good decision, umpire Joel Wilson. That's crashing into middle stone. And if you realize it's all pace here from OJ, she is wicked to wicked. And two very important wickets to his name. Two openers. Defeated by pace. And a sheer pace. 
And this is what I've been asking of Shields all season. You have the pace, don't waste it bowling short deliveries. Get it on the stumps. Traditionally, the guy needs struggle against fast bowling. And now you're seeing it here, that fast, straight deliveries are causing damage. At 12 for 2, as we see, it looks like Kevin Anderson makes his way out to play. And FOJ Shields is not the quickest in this year's West Indies Regional Championship. He's among the quickest faster. Two deliveries to the two openers, very quick. Had pace. Beaten for pace. And hence why the Harper Eagles are now 12 for 2, courtesy of two wickets for six runs in his fourth over. By OJ Shields, 16 wickets in his first class career. Playing his eighth game here at home in Savannah Park. So winning the toss, inserting the opposition, the perfect start for the Scorpions. And I was about to ask about that as well. In terms of winning the toss and fielding first against a team that has a battery of spinners. And you just never know. But this surface that we're seeing is the same one that the Windward Islands Volcanoes uh, hammered the Jamaica Scorpions on by nine wickets. And the, the Scorpions were rolled over in their first innings, I think for 100. And, uh, well, it was less than 200 for sure. And then the Volcanoes scored over 300. The Scorpions scored 270 in their second inning. So, full again to Anderson. And he got his bat onto it this time. Two for six now, OJ Shields. And he has a plan this morning to bowl very full, fast, and straight. The first delivery to Imlak, he fell on his face, almost digging out a Yorker. This one to Anderson again, fast and straight, his first delivery. Well, why not win a get-in rewards for bowling full pitch delivery? Two wickets to his name. Short and fast. Got out of the way, Kevin Anderson. This is what we know OJ Shields for Foster. Love this. This fast, is full this is Caribbean and aggressive. heritage, yeah. Pace. Accurate pace as well. And it's almost as if he has gotten control since those last couple of rounds, OJ Shields. He's building up and over now. He's um you'd say i wouldn't say create an over but he's understanding how to to make an over or what makes an over complete that one is quick to someone down to find leg had to pull down the six foot frame excellent work there by feet someone let it look very easy foster had to get down in time it was traveling to him quickly so you can see that shields is building an over He's thinking about what he wants to do within the over. And if we realize O.J. Shields putting in a lot of work for this season. Last Friday he was at Upward Camp when Sopina Park was wet. He came to camp at Turville Green and Marquino Minley as well. Putting in the extra work. And so far the extra work has been paying off for O.J. Shields at completion of his fort is two for seven yeah and it's 13 for two and it's drinks here on the first morning of this sixth round clash between the scorpions the home team and the defending champions the guyana harpy eagles they have lost teja ryan chanderpaul he was the first man dismissed by oj shields he was leg before wicket and he was plumb in front there was absolutely no doubt about it the ball was crashing into that middle and leg stone and then the next man to go was Raymond Perez. And both of them falling to OJ Shields. And Chander Paul, he fell for one of 30 deliveries, while Perez made four of 30 deliveries. Imlak is one from nine, and Anderson has faced a couple of deliveries. He also has one at 13 for two. And we'll take a break and come back with more action here at Sabina Park.
Action resumes here at Sabina Park and after a sedate start from the Guyana Harpy Eagles, OJ Shields has done the damage, taking two wickets, the two openers, uh, for very cheaply indeed. Fozzie is absolutely delighted with proceedings as I join him here in the commentary box. Fozzie, good stuff from OJ to start. Yeah, he has been much better. He's been full and straight and his pace is up as well. And Kevin and Anderson, they're working that one too. Backward of square. The vice captain is feeling. A lot of changes since you were last year for the Scorpions. Yeah. And Duval Green, on the other hand, trying to remember the last time he conceded a run. <laughs> An excellent stop from him. He's really built up the pressure on one end. Yeah. And he started from the Courtney Walsh end, and it's as yeah. if he didn't get his radar right and realized that he has to make a change. Yeah, for sure. Left alone there by, by Anderson, who, interestingly for me, I thought would have been a little bit ahead of where he is now, because he was touted at the Under-19 World Cup a couple of years ago to be the next best thing. But we have heard so many of them from the West Indies' point of view. He was selected to go to South Africa, but I think he had some document issues, and that forced him to stay in the Caribbean and played yeah. in the Emerging Academy team against Ireland. He did decently. Well, I certainly think uh, he's in and around the conversation. Maybe uh, the likes of Athanas, Mackenzie and Hodge have jumped past him in the pecking order. Yeah. But uh, he certainly is a good find. Uh, certainly is a talented player. But of course, my, my, my boy is Kevin Sinclair, who is probably slated <laughs> to come in next. I think he comes at six. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's everybody's boy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant cricketer, Kevin Sinclair. Enthusiastic. Fantastic batter, fantastic bowler. Um, Kevin Imlach was, of course, one of the players that won that Under-19 Cricket World Cup under Shimron Hetmeyer. And uh, so it's good to see him coming up uh, as well. Maybe a little bit later, belated in his career. He certainly uh, has shown his capabilities with the bat and leading Guyana Harp Eagles. And he spoke this morning in an interview about uh, building a young team. Oh, flashing at that one. Appeal for court behind. Double Green celebrates, and Anderson is eventually given. That was a loose shot from him after the drinks break. They're in further trouble here now. 13 for 3, the Guyana Hop Eagles. Yeah, that's a horrible shot. It's a bad shot. His feet got nowhere close to the pitch of the ball, and he just threw his hands at the ball. And Green has been doing well this morning. He has gotten the ball to move away, slide a couple of deliveries to come back towards the stumps. And that one touched down on and about fourth stump. And it shaped away even further. And that was a wild hack from Anderson. Closed the face, trying to hit straight down the ground. And took the edge. Easy catch for Morris. And the Scorpions, they're cock a hoop. 13 for 3, the Harpy Eagles. Cock a hoop indeed. So interestingly, Imlak said at the toss that uh, he would have chosen to bat as well. I'm not sure he would be happy with what is happening here. Well, you're perfectly right. That's Kevin Sinclair. It oh, is indeed. Coming next. So we'll see what our boy has for us today here. Fuzzy, but he certainly... Boy, did the Guyana, Guyana Hop Eagles need him. Right. 412 runs so far in the competition. Uh, Sinclair started the day five runs behind Mikhail Louis of the Hurricanes. Yeah. Who played a, a match-winning knock here uh, two weeks ago against the Scorpions, and the Hurricanes really strolled home by seven wickets in that encounter. So, yeah. obviously, for someone to score 400 runs, must be doing something good. So this is a, a massive partnership, not just for the Harpy Eagles, but also for the Scorpions, because if you, if you can break this partnership bet be between now and lunch, you'd probably think that you're very close to really pushing home for an, ad an advantage here on, on the opening day. Yeah, Brandon King choose, uh, choosing to field here, and he's certainly delighted with his bowlers for making our decision. An excellent point there, Fuzzy. And I think, I think what, 
what impresses me more about St. Clair is that immediately after, immediately in terms of the, t- the team that came back from Australia, and it seems like Emlak is walking off. Yeah, he has an issue. He has a wrist issue, it seems, or a thumb issue. He's looking at his, yeah, it's his thumb. Well, his first delivery from OJ Shields, you remember, had him flat on the ground. It was a searing yorker from OJ Shields. So now the... Uh, so now it's two brand new batsmen in for the uh, Harpy Eagles. For the Harpies, and it's Kimol Savory. This is this is great for the Scorpions. Two bowlers were all at the top of their game in this encounter, having two fresh men to bowl. Well, first you were saying that the Scorpions need to need to separate this partnership, but they've done that without even a ball yeah. being bowled. I hope I certainly hope you see um Imla Imla back, come yeah. come back out. Because it will be a shame for the Harp Eagles to lose their captain. And it obviously is painful because at yeah. 13 for 3, your captain yeah. wouldn't be just walking off the field. It has to be very impactful on him. But this is a massive moment in the, in the game and it's only day one. Pleasant oh. drive by Sinclair. That's immediately off the mark. Immediately a true extra cover. And he has started in style with a 4. 17 to 3. I think it actually might be the first boundary. Not the first boundary, but yeah, it is the, the first bat, boundary. Off the bat, yeah. Yeah, it is the first boundary off the bat. And, and that was a sweet drive yeah. by Sinclair, showing no signs of the situation of 13 for 3. Yeah. You're in my half. I'm going to pick that gap between extra cover and mid-off. A flowing drive to the right of the cover. Beautiful. 17 for 3 at the end of the over. It's all happening here. So the latest news from the middle is that in addition to slipping to 17 for 3, uh, C- Captain Tevin Imlach, who is in at the crease, has walked off with an injury. Looked like a thumb injury or something like that. And uh, so they have two brand new batters at the crease here. And Savory is a left-hander, it looks like. Yeah. They have a right-hand, left-hand combination here. Not for the first time as well in this innings. The opening pair was like that. And Shields dislodged Chanderpaul for one. Yeah, it certainly, when, when you look at the early exchanges after this delivery, too wide, wide and wild from OJ Shields. But uh, from the early exchanges, clearly... Chanapol and Perez were all about absorbing the pressure. That's what I think that's what Chanapol does best. Perez probably taking the lead from his, his senior opening batter partner. And uh, they, they did well to a certain extent, but then OJ Shields has come on and with two fantastic deliveries got both got rid of both Chanapol and Perez. And then uh, Anderson unfortunately throwing away his wicket when he had when it was a perfect opportunity for him to get some runs on the board. Yeah, I think that was a a lack of awareness shot. It was a very bad shot. Yeah. Wider delivery. Fuller trying to get something on that savory. But again, coming back to this Kevin Sinclair, I think what, what really impresses me the most about him is that he's come back from that tour of Australia and immediately joined the four-day team, four day, the four-day championships. Um, not, not many players have done that. Of course, uh, Braffitt has done that. Uh, Athanas and Hodge took a little bit of time off as well as the silver. But Sinclair's come in and he's performed at the level that you would expect from a senior West Indies player. And consistently as well, even Bra- jo- Joshua De Silva had really hasn't made any runs all tournament and neither has Athanas. I think Hodge had one score. Uh, Sinclair has been absolutely and utterly consistent in every game that he's played. As you mentioned, over 400 runs. And you know how he is with the ball. You can't, you can't discount him at and all. And in the field as well. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, well, let's not even talk about that, yeah. Fuzzy. That's a whole other conversation that we'll need another four days by itself to discuss. Yeah, a little bit too wide here for my liking from Shields to the new man. There's only played a couple of deliveries a Savory who hasn't really set the tournament alight or the championship alight this season only 50 150 this season 
that was against the academy team four single digit scores to his name so it's obvious that guyana they are persisting with their players and they're willing to give them chances throughout this season because that's a good delivery well dug out by savory and the run is on he gets it quite comfortably in the end to get off the mark He's over the wicket here to the left hander, but of course it was against it was around the wicket that he got the the chander Paul LBW, I believe. I think. Well, he was round the wicket just now yeah. to Savory, and he got chander Paul around the wicket as well. Oh, so. it was around the wicket yeah. as well. Okay. Well, then he will definitely be looking for that line of attack. I think the Scorpions are sensing here that they can create some problems. They've now sent back. Uh, that looks like Carlos Brown to deep backward square. So they're going to be testing Sinclair with a short delivery, but it could also be that double bluff where he goes full as well, just giving him the signal that someone is there for him to be on the back foot. There's only one delivery to come in this fifth over for Shields, probably his last over in this spell too. Oh, beaten. Did he get the edge as it goes to the fielder? No. Does it fall short there, Pozzi? We'll have to have a look at the replay on that one. I think it may have just fallen short. No, I think he has dropped it. He went straight into the lap of Bokianan, who is at third slip. Look at it again. It went, yeah, straight to him and straight out. Oh, my goodness. That is really unfortunate there. That would have been a brilliant wicket to end the over. And unfortunately, 18 for three. Oh, unfortunate there for Buchanan. And that was that would have been a perfect setup because the man was sent back to square leg but he just went top of the off stump and the sheer pace of shields too good for sinclair and it went straight into the hands of the debutant and he should have taken that yeah, had really to take that he went straight in yeah. and just popped back out yeah it was a comfortable height as well um maybe just went at it with hard hands there poor fellow and that was the dangerous Kevin Sinclair. So thankfully, if you're a Kevin Sinclair fan, you might still get to see a bat throughout the course today. Fozzie is not happy because the Jamaica Scorpions could have been, you said they were cock or hoop. They would have been cock or hoop Even do, more. Do 20 times <laughs> yeah. over. That was, that was a massive chance. It's a massive moment in the game as well. Yeah. The importance of Sinclair, the importance of his wicket, his importance to this batting unit so far. And this is where the the Harpy Eagles have scored majority of their runs in the season as well, from numbers five to eight. Pramal has also gotten amongst the runs as well. So that was a big miss. You hope for Buchanan's sake that it doesn't cost him too many. And, but for Sinclair's sake, you probably want to see him score more runs yeah. and so entertain who are here. Yeah, make use of that chance. We're going to see spin for the first time in the game, Pete Salmon. I'm not surprised that he's in. But I am slightly disappointed because the Pacers have done a good job here, Fuzzy. Yeah. I mean, Salmon is, a, is an excellent competitor and he's, and he's done well for Jamaica. Really one of their shining stars. And with ball and, and bat as well. But uh, Mindley, we only saw two overs or so from Mindley and then we haven't seen him at all. Um... And you can understand why, as you see him going through his stretches, I think he's going to be replacing Shields, who doesn't normally bowl more than five overs per spell since he has been included in this, in this um, squad. He played the second game. Yeah. He didn't play the first one, but from then he has been bowling short, sharp spells, which is to prevent him from getting injured. Well, of course, uh, Jamaica have had a little bit of problem with their fast bowling injuries, even OJ Shields, even though he's now sort of starting to shine and we've seen his capabilities. He was one coming back yeah. from injury as and well. And their leading fast bowler to start the competition, Gordon yeah. Bryan, has been missing for the last three rounds. A sweep there. Guess can enough connection. And that will go fine enough for four. A badly lined delivery by Salmon and Savory enjoyed that shot. Yeah, badly lined angling towards the leg side and he really just helped it on its way he has enough pace on the ball as well someone easy for the left-hander that's bread and butter for any left-hander 
even myself. So that takes it up to 22 for three. I'm gonna say something after this ball. And I don't want it to sound as if I was, I'm just saying it after the fact. But before, at the end of that over 15, it's 22 for three, the Harpy Eagles. When I came this morning and I was seeing the slip cordon, I know that Javon Buchanan is a good slip fielder based on what he does in Senior Cup. That's where he feels. But I was saying, as a debutant, I would probably have someone who has been feeling there all season in the, in the region. But you didn't see it. And it has cost the Scorpions a wicket. You know, the, the traditionally young fellow goes under the helmet there. You see a, a shot of the famous Kingston Cricket Club. Yeah. And he plays here, by the way. Buchanan. Mindley's back. So what would have been a final a wicket to complete a spell for Shields? I've seen him being replaced by Marquino Mindley. But I'm surprised he didn't go to Brandon King and beg for one more over and say, <laughs> please just give me one more. I mean, of course, there, there's the over rate to think of because 15 overs have gone with just about 40 minutes left before lunch. So that's probably a concern as to why Salmon is in to get speed through some overs, of course. Yeah, they bowled only 12 overs in the first hour. Let's see what Minley has in his second spell. Starts with a no ball once again, and he started his first spell with a no ball as well. So he's consistent in that regard. Yeah, a little bit untidy there from Marquino Mindy. It's a massive problem. It's not something that has just happened to him, it's something that has been going on with him for years. No ball issue. He's always trying to generate that extra bit of pace, extra yeah. yard of pace. That's better from him. But of course, you know my thoughts on that, Fuzzy. I always say get your line and length and radar on before you strive for that extra piece. You have to the, the ascertain the, the spots on the pitch that will work for you. Line and the length. And then the other thing, of course, is Mindy started from the southern end and now he's coming from the northern end, which is, of course, the Courtney Walsh end. And the breeze is going across the ground in a different direction as well. A bit of a whiff there offered and cut down to that third man area. Sinclair is not going to miss out on that one. Easy pickings there for him. That's a top shot, by the way. He hit it on the rise, on the bounce. Got on top of it and flashed it back with a point. Ramon Lewis diving away to his left. He couldn't stop it. And that's good placement, good power generated on the shot as well by Kevin Sinclair. Bad delivery though from Marquino Mindley. The thing about Sinclair is that he just missed the positivity. I think whatever he does, he's just always positive. Um, which is a good, a good treat for a cricketer. Good treat in a young man as well. But I think, I think it's even more important that he shows his maturity, which he does as well. Following that shot, there was a change in the field as well. Three slips turned to two slips and a gully. Kurt McKenzie going to gully. So they reconfigure where they stand. Different markings as to what's the best place to be. The most say it's the surface doesn't give me a 27 for 3 type of surface. There's obviously a little bit of moisture in the wicket. It's early start. A little bit of grass on the surface to hold it together for the duration of the four days. Has been decent amount of bounce. It's not lightning pace off the surface. I just saw a couple of deliveries taken above the shoulder by the wicket keeper. But it hasn't been frightening by any stretch of the imagination. A bad shot by Anderson and a couple of full straight deliveries missed by the top order of players. 
That's a lovely drive to the extra cover region. Got presented the full face. That was four the moment it left its back. Kevin Sinclair, 31 for three. He's fighting for the Harper Eagles. And it's a shot of a man that is in form. He watched it onto the bat at the last minute. He didn't try to overhit the ball. Just allowed it to come onto the bat. And then the placement took over with that extension of the top hand and got it to the right of Brandon King, who is feeling at extra cover. Couldn't stop it. And once he couldn't stop it, Midoff had absolutely no chance. And that's beautiful runs for Sinclair, his third boundary. Has played nicely off the back foot. Down to that short. Oh, that was an interesting throw back in at backward point. I think Savory could have been in some trouble there. That was a risky run. They get away with it. 32 for 3 after 16. Coming back. Dad! Dad! Is that real? Yes, Fozzy. Uh, coming back to the pitch, interestingly, when I when I when I saw it at the toss, it didn't look like a first day pitch. It didn't look like a, a day one pitch that was hard and fast and and sheen. And it, uh, as we look at it again here, you would see that the grass is in the middle, while the areas by the batters are generally clear. And on both sides, the farther end, which is the southern end, looks a little bit flatter, a little bit more together, while the other side. They are cracks. It's not, they're not massive cracks. And of course, they've been rolled in, so it's flat. But there is something in there for the bowlers. And that is why I am saying, I, I don't think, based on what has been happening around Jamaica as well, not much rain for the last two months. Flashes at this one, <laughs> this Sinclair. And he sends that one square into the uh, Kingston Cricket Club stand for another four. Wonderful shot by him. Loose delivery by Salmon. Yeah, overpitched. And that's easy pickings, not just for anybody, but especially for someone who is in the form that Kevin Sinclair is in. He's going to cash in on that all day, every day. So I was saying about the surface is that it's, it's very difficult to prepare a wicket that is going to be hard for, throughout because there's not much water, yeah. not much rainfall as well. You have to be... See a little bit of spin there. A little bit of moisture is in the wicket, as you can see, with the, with, the, with the areas being marked out on the surface as well. shows you that there's a little bit of moisture in the wicket. But Nicely driven, nicely by Sinclair. There's a long on in place. So easy for him at the moment. He's already pushed the Scorpions on the back foot, and he's 36 for three. But you wouldn't believe it, uh, because he has forced the captain to set almost a defensive feel to him and he's only 11 balls into his innings but I was saying about the surface a little bit more is that the fact that Guyana has Pramal, Moti, Sinclair I was a little bit skeptical about the Scorpions winning the toss and feeling first but uh, days, two, days 2 and 3 are normally the better days to bat so you'd assume that the Scorpions are saying that if we can Get them dismissed for a real small target today. And, and then bat, also, yeah, yeah. bat the back end of this day and bat the entire day too. You should have a comfortably enough lead where you can then not worry that much about what the spinners will do or how they will impact the game. That's probably how I'm looking at it because you're using up the moisture that is in the surface now. Get you a couple, three, four wickets before lunch. Then you try to put your, your spinners to the test in the middle session to get them dismissed. Beautiful delivery there from Salmon. Lovely flight there. Well judged by Savory, I have to say, in the end. Then that over 37 for 3 after 17. Yeah, good points there, Fuzzy. And uh, it's certainly, if you look at that trio, that's certainly not a trio you want to be facing on the last day. Exactly. Even if you have to face, a, even if you have to chase on, a, let's say, a 50 or 80 or something like that on the last day, that's certainly not something you want to face. And I mean, if they could have had a, they could have had Sinclair back in the pavilion as well, which would have been a, an Im um, amazing, amazing first session. The 
they're gonna ask uh, the questions are gonna be asked as to why Shields is not bowling. But as I've been saying, is that throughout the season a five-over spell has even served as a, a long spell so far. To Feel me, yeah. Feeling for that one was Sinclair, but he played it comfortably in the end. Taking a look at scores around the region, the Volcanoes have slipped to 83 for 5 against the Western East Academy. Barbados Pride strong against the Hurricanes, 92 without loss. And Trinidad and Tobago Red Force building back nicely, 103 for 2 after the combined campuses and colleges took two early wickets. Slash at that one. Gets enough on that one. That will run into the fine third man area for four. Kevin Sinclair is not taking any prisoners. And the Scorpions are feeling the bite from the Harpy Eagle batter. Yeah, he's going to be chancing his arm here. It was a little bit loose. Flashed at it. But what he did was that he went with everything. And he was convinced of playing the shot. It wasn't half-hearted. It was full-blooded. So even though he took the edge... I don't think Buchanan had any chance of catching that one. And it, by the time he got his right hand out, it was already into the boundary. And 41 now for three. Gets another chance to cut at that one, but a little bit too close to the body. Maybe a bit of in-swing there from Minley. And as the Scorpions, what you don't want to see happening now you don't want to see heads dropping. You don't want to see um, shoulders shrugging and people waving around and questioning everything. It's still 41 for three. You're still in a very yeah. decent position. It's just that this player is trying to counterattack and change the situation because if he continues to play like this, obviously he's going to offer it another chance. Yeah, they just have to keep that pressure up because that's what, that's what took the wickets. It wasn't that they were bowling spectacularly, but they were able to keep the pressure up and that's what, that's what got them two wickets. And it's, it's two good wickets as well in Chandafal and Perez. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, 103 for two. Keon Otley, 47 not out. Jason Mohammed, 41 not out. The old man, Mohammed, doing well there for Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. And... Uh, Lovely drive through the extra cover region. Excellently fielded by Duval Green. And uh, the overthrow allows them to come for the run that they probably shouldn't have been allowed. Yeah, that was a chance, by the way, for a run out at the non-striker's end. Because Sinclair hit it so sweetly, he thought Green didn't have a chance. He would have gone into the boundary. But Savory was looking at the possibility of a single. Good stuff from Green diving away to his left. And Savory ended up being stranded in the middle of the pitch. I mean, they couldn't get round in time to get back to the stumps, and neither was Shields getting up to the stumps. So, you know, just a wayward throw, and they ended up getting an extra single, and takes the score now up to 42 for three. What was a pleasant shot, almost turned into a wicket, yeah, and indeed. they ended up getting to a run. And he got awareness from Duval Green as well. It would have been a real good bonus there for the Scorpions. Good delivery by Minley, making good adjustment for the left-hander. That's the end of the over, 42 for three. Barbados Pride, 92 without loss against the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. Craig Braffitt on 40. Zachary McCaskey, 52 not out. And across in uh, Coolidge, the Volcanoes are 83 for five against the West Indies Academy. Taking a look at that score there. Well, Kadima Lane, Johan, Johan, Kadima Lane has taken two for 20. Naim Young, one for 15. Johan Lane, one for 14. The West Indies Academy doing really quite well here. As I welcome back Marlon Pinnock, Pinney, the commentary as Pete Salmon continues. Is Sinclair beating all ends up? He's bold, actually. That's through the gate there. And Sinclair is standing up bewilderingly. Brilliant stuff by Pete Salmon. You can see why they brought him on now. 
And it's 42 for four, the big wicket of Kevin Sinclair. Very important wicket to the Scorpions. This man, Pete someone continues to do a tremendous job for the Scorpions. Top delivery. Unplayable you'd want to see. Kevin Sinclair. Got the brute of a delivery. I'd like to see this one more time on the replay here. Oh, beautiful delivery there from Salmon. I really thought, wow, that was just a brilliant delivery. But I think it's Sinclair just played a, down the wrong line. Maybe it was a bit of drift away before coming back in. But absolutely fantastic stuff here. And the Jamaican Scorpions will be very, very happy to see the back of Kevin Sinclair. 42 for 4. And of course, Marlon Pinnock, Kevin Imlach, uh, left the field earlier because he was injured. As the new batter is Ronaldo Ali Mohammed. So it's all sorts of bother here for the Guyana Harpy Eagles. And Brandon King will be very, very happy with his decision to bowl first, that he would have to say. Definitely hats off to Brandon King immediately after won the toss this morning. Decided he's going to have a first bowl here at Sabina Park. And so far, have been paying dividends for the Scorpions. Four wickets to fall this morning as well. Yeah, absolutely cracking stuff here. Pete Salmon strikes, gets the big man, Kevin Sinclair. And so you'd have to wonder, I think the Jamaicans would love to limit the Guyani, Guyanese to less than 100 here. If they can get that, Penny, I think they would be very, very happy with that. You look at how Kevin Sinclair came out this morning. And his knock, I think about 4-4 scheme in that short space of time. At the wicket. Shows the confidence of Kevin Sinclair. But they took a brilliant delivery from this man here, who's doing a wonderful job for this year's West Indies Regional Championship for the Scorpions. In yeah. Pete Salmon. Yes, indeed, indeed. Really, really excellent work here from Pete Salmon. Been consistent throughout. Ramalus played in the last game. Did a reasonably good job as well. Haven't seen him so far into the attack and he can be very vital for the scorpions as well the outside as well played in the end there by mohammed it's it's absolutely what a it's it's such an amazing change in this game penny after after six or eight overs guyana were like four without loss five without loss now after 19 overs they slipped to 42 for four Realize excellent ch change of bowling by Brandon King. Every time you make a change, they all bring rewards for the Scorpions. Yeah, but I think it's credit to OJ Shields and, uh, of course, Duval Green. That man, Duval Green, who bowled so well. Really kept out the pressure. Appeal for a leg before there. Oh, he bowled again. My, my, my. <laughs> Salmon has slipped through. And it's <laughs> two and wickets in the over there, five for 42 now. And Ali Muhammad is bold without troubling the scorers. You realize, Pete, someone, when he gets his wicket, there's no signs of if he got a wicket. Look at the replay here. Pitch. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Top delivery. Absolutely beautiful there. Unplayable. <laughs> my, my, my. The guy in the RP is an eagle slipping slowly here at Sabina Park. There are now 42 for the loss of five. And of course, two wickets to feed someone, two to OJ Shields, and one to Turple Green. This is absolutely amazing what we're seeing here. Ronaldo Ali Mohammed, despite being dismissed, is uh, still on the field. I'm not Exactly, sit and wants to delay here. I don't know if the other bat is ready for the guy now. The Eagles would be very, very unfortunate if he timed out. Now, he is coming out here, and it is that man, Vera Sami Permol, who will have a lot of work to do with the ball. Now, this is the other consideration here, Penny, because while Pete Salmon is doing really well, well here, as Fozzie pointed out, 
The Guyana Hump Eagles possess probably three of the best spinners in the Caribbean. One of them coming out to bat here, but there's also Gudakesh Muti and then Kevin Sinclair as well. Three great spinners. Hey, look at uh, Pramal, who have so far have over 600 first class wickets. Well, Penny. Make it 625 to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Then he has a chance to take 20 Jamaican wickets to come. <laughs> so that would be 645. I highly doubt that. <laughs> if he takes 20, that would be amazing. Mindley to continue. Full delivery. And a thick inside edge. And I'll run close to the ropes there. I don't know what savory was doing there at all. But it's very unsavory from him. <laughs> Definitely. It's a loose shot outside the off stump. Well, got the inside edge. And lucky enough, he didn't get onto the stump. Yeah. And good for the guy in the Harpy Eagles. And a single to their score is up to 43 for 5 here at Spina Park. This is around 6 action. Ford playing 5th here at Spina Park. And so far, the Scorpions dominated procedure thus far this morning. Oh, in thick inside edge again there. And Pormal survives, and the throw comes in at the non-striker's end. Just about trotting in here. It's all happening, Penny. Absolutely. I mean, this morning, the first half an hour was so sedate. I mean, you could have you could have had a nap and woke up, and nothing would have happened in another half an hour. And then now, the second hour and a half has been everything has been happening there. And that's former Jamaica Scorpions all around Andre McCarthy. Having a chat with some spectators as well. The other thing now is that in this position, um, it's a good opportunity for Marquino Mindley to get a couple of wickets, get his form up and running as well. As of course, if you're into the, the lower end of the, uh, the guy and he's batting, well, only Marquino Mindley. I haven't got a wicket so far for the bowlers for the Scorpions. And they'll want to make a mark here. Clearly has a... Clearly trust his hand-eye coordination here, Saber, because his foot movement is nothing to be seen. He's throwing his hand on that one. But good stuff here from the Jamaica Scorpions. I mean, you, you, you don't expect them to want, you don't expect them to roll over on their home turf. Really haven't had the best of a tournament so far. That's a good delivery by Minley, just back of a length. Uh, now you see Marquina Minley getting into his own now, Andrew. Yeah, indeed, that's beautiful from him. But the other thing now is, of course, if, if you look at the table here, Jamaica in fifth position, Guyana in fourth. So if they leap for a Guyana and then they move up to fourth um, by the end of this round, the next game is against Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, who really haven't been playing that well. <coughs> so there's an opportunity for them to gain some ground, the Scorpions. End of the over. 44 for 5. So far in this year's West Indies Regional Championship, Jamal Warakan still leads with 30. Dancing of the pitch is Pumal to combat Saban. Pumal played a useful innings the last game for the Guyana RP Eagles. 
He was unbeaten on some 92 runs. Yeah. So he's certainly a very capable batter. Uh, gets the edge and that one just flies, uh, flies past the first slip. Really good bounce there. Will it run close to the ropes? It does run very, very close indeed. The flick back is excellent from Buchanan. And then uh, Carlos Brown mops up. Really all happening here. Excellent delivery. Causing a lot of problems here at Sapina Park. He speeds someone. Excellent work by Buchanan on day before the Scorpions. Excellent spill of bowling thus far from this man. For the Scorpions, beat someone. Two for 12 so far. Yep. And if you realize every game beat someone played this season for the Scorpions, he's among the wickets as well. And some useful runs with the bat as well. Showing good all round skills he speed someone. They do it, they um they can do weak swing after all. After the seven now, you know it has That's another thick outside edge. Well played by Savory Do. Directed that one away from the slips. And you'll get a run. <laughs> and know he'll actually uh, one delivery left for Pumal to survive. So that's good stuff there from Savory. Rama Lewis very quick across the ground. Limping to that 50 run mark are uh, the guy and a half eagles. But so far the Scorpions dominating this morning session here, Andrew. Yeah. End of the over, 48 for 5. The Scorpions sting certainly sharper than the talons of the Harp Eagles. Indeed. So far, Pete, someone 2 for 13. Oh, Jay Shields got 2 as well. Derval Green picked up the other wickets. A wicket, should say. Some from all. Not out 4 from 4. Himlock retired. Hurt. Wonder if he's okay though, Andrew. Yeah, it's a very unfortunate scorecard there. Only Sinclair getting into double figures, 18. Um, I certainly hope we see Tevin Imlach return because I think uh, Guy and a Half Eagles will really need him in a situation like this. Might come out after lunch. We'll see how long these two batters last. Mindley to continue. Mainly came back very good in his second spell so far. From this, the Kooten Walsh end. Started from the Michael Olin end. It was a bit to bear it, but came back here from Kooten Walsh end. So far, pang on target for the Scorpions. Marquina Minnit want to register a wicket just before the lunch break interval. This the first day of the six run action from Sabina Park. A beaten. Beauty. Absolutely beaten there. But that one kept a little bit low there from Minlu. He's dying on the weed. Give it to wicket keeper Morris. But a good delivery by Marquina Minley. As I mentioned, he came back good strongly in this second spell here. The Scorpions would want to wrap up this Guyana Harp Eagles innings. Early after lunch. Oh, short delivery. Uh, Savory almost pulled into the, uh, the pull shot, but pulled out at the last minute. Well played in the end. Kept his eye on it until the very last minute. I think it just got big on him there, actually. Good decision in the end, though. Marquina Mille is getting some good areas at the moment. Yeah. Want to make a mark for the Scorpions. Who's in command so far? A load appeal this time. 
I think that one's heading down the leg a little bit too much with the angle on it. I think Minley knew that as well. I li but I like what I'm seeing here from Minley in this second spell here, Penny. Let's have a look at the replay on this one. Yeah, excellent decision by umpire Joel Wilson out of Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, in, the, in his first spell, he was trying to use the short ball too much. But I think when he uses it sparingly here, and Savory is going to wear that one on the glove as well. And that, that's what I like about Mindy. When he, 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 he has that deceptive, he's very deceptive. When he goes too hard at it, I think he sort of loses his radar. And Savory is going to wear that one. Definitely feeling that one. Mark Healy is known for his wicket-taking abilities as well. You see here on the replay, yeah, there's an extra bounce there, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Like a Marquina Millie, seven five wicket, all for the Scorpions in regional cricket. This is a testing over here. Let's see if he finishes strongly. He does indeed. No, he doesn't. Well, he gets the gets a run there to uh, end the over and spoil Minley's maiden. But uh, it's 49 for 5 after 22 overs gone. Just about 10 minutes before lunch, Marlon Pinnock. You're dreaming and jibbling about your rice and peas or whatever else we get with it. Not at all. I will, I'm thinking about some fruits here today. No, some fruit. Mm. Going on the diet. <laughs> uh, the uh, Guyana physio is now on the field here. Has, uh, we had a close-up of the Michael holding in. That's his signature on the southern end of the ground. Personally, I would have called it the whispering death end, Penny. Any Little particular reason why? <laughs> because it's such a better name than Michael holding. I mean, <laughs> whispering death. It was a great man, Michael holding. Oh, yes, indeed. And continues to be a great man. Indeed. As well as Andrew Chang as well. Very great man. Oh, no, 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 no. Tobago. I'm nowhere near as great as <laughs> whispering death. He was known as the Rolls Royce of fast bowling. I don't think they'll even call me a toy car of fast bowling, Penny. <laughs> when you compare me to Michael Holding. I remember you bowling an excellent spell. At the army grounds. Wow. <laughs> Getting the ball to swing away from the right handers. Mm. <laughs> Your good friend Bisham Lalmon was at all ends as I thought to play it. Was in twos and threes up there. <laughs> Pete Salmon to continue. See if he's going to hunker down now, I think. But that guy in um, that guy in the dressing room is going to have some interesting conversations at lunchtime, Penny. I'm sure he'd love to get a camera inside there. Well, I'm not sure you'll understand, Penny. This is the other thing. Why delivery at cut and well fielded there at backward point. Rama Lewis, the man at backward point region. Yeah. Doing a wonderful job in that region as well. Yes, because of course uh, my ca our cameraman, Kadir Mohammed, who's also your very good friend. We're saying that when he talks in his Trini Patwa that you don't understand the Maidani and he's saying, Oh, that's just so strange because you know, I'm speaking, you know. But even though we're all speaking English penny, whenever we speak our broken English, our language version of it, country version, but, uh, there's a lot to be left in translation. <laughs> and, uh, and our producer Dylan Sharma doesn't speak at all, so that's even harder to <laughs> understand what he's saying. I want thing for sure though, I love his food a lot though. Yeah. Pleasant drive again, my savory. Really embraced the Jamaican culture, Penny. He had porridge and fritters this morning. And last night, so I saw have a pack of snack as well. Yeah. And he loved the Jamaican culture so much, it had him laughing for hours on end, Penny. Yeah. We how his bag was full of snacks. 50 up after 23 overs, 50 for 5, the Guyana Harpy Eagles. 
23 overs bold and boy oh boy are the scorpions enjoying this time on their home too scorpions are scorching on they are big so far here at spina park Pete someone continues from where he left off in the last game here two wickets for 14 on so far to his name Scorpions would want to register a win over these four days. And fourth playing FIFA, as I mentioned, Anjo. Yes, indeed. If the Scorpions win here today, they stand a chance to go further up in the table. Could be fourth. <laughs> Mainly continues to pull a nugget length outside the off-stump to the left-hander. So yeah, yeah, I think this second spell, he's really settled down here, Mindley, um, showing what he's capable of. And the other thing is, I mean, to keep the, the Western East bowlers generally seem to have a problem bowling to left-handers. I'm not sure if it's because of shortage of left-handed batters. But uh, certainly it shows that he's, he's worked on it. It's, it's an aspect of the game that, uh, that you need to work on. Marquina Miller really works on his game a lot, though, Andrew. So on Thursday and Friday, up by the Jamaica Defense Force ground. And that goes to show the commitment of Marquina Miller. Short delivery and uh, spelled by Romain Morris, but no damage done. He recovers very quickly. He's Morris. So you're doing a fantastic job this season for the Scorpions. It's been off a, a bit a uh, uh, boil. He started uh, the season uh, really hot and set. He was re very, very good. And the sort of middle rounds, four and five, he really didn't come to the party as much as he would have liked. But uh, certainly one of the standout performers for Jamaica. Ooh. Beaten by that one. Excellent. Pure delivery. pace there. Pitch and straighten there. Excellent delivery by Marquina Minley. You can see here on the replay. Pitch and straighten. And I think uh I think that off some got a shave there, Penny. Walking with the drive this time. Not as around. close as, as the shave that you're wearing. <laughs> Actually, from myself last night. Mm. <laughs> well, left by Savory this time. The really, really good mix of bowling here, and I, I think that I think that that that's what that's what's impressing me most about Mindy in the second spell. Yes, he has the back of the length delivery. Yes, he has the the bounce in his arsenal. But it's good to see that he's, he's mixing it up and he's showing control and variation in his control. Yeah, so far in the second spell, he's doing just what Captain Brandon King want him to do two minutes before 12 o'clock here in Kingston, Jamaica. Finishes off with a good delivery on that line of off some. Well played by Kimal Savory. A maiden for Mindley, 50 for 5. And the Guyana Arpel Eagles on the back foot in this first day. Six run action from Spina Park. Excellent bowling by the Scorpions this morning. OJ Shield started the procedures for the Scorpions this morning, picking up two openers. Then Derival Green. Bowling a wonderful line outside the off stump to the right handers. He gets his reward. Beat someone immediately as he was introduced into the attack. His first over, I think he picked up two wickets and two value uh, wickets to the Scorpions. As Rama Lewis will bowl the final over before launch on the one of this West Indies Regional Championship at Spina Park. Ooh. Thick outside edge again. Squared up Buzz Permal. He'll run very, very close to the road. Buchanan will stop it just before it comes on. They get two runs there. Ramal Lewis immediately starting on the money. Good 
delivery. Good bounce there. Just wide of Abiji Mansing there at slip. But good start here by Ramon Lewis. Yeah. I, that's, I think that's about the second or third time that Permol has played that shot. And they're now going to bring in a second slip here. And it's uh, the skipper, Brandon King. Yeah, and why not final over before lunch? But uh, I want you to have a look at, at how they're scotting here at slip. Brandon King is a lot lower than RBJ Mansing. And I think if RBJ Mansing was lower for those two chances that came as we well, might have gotten a hand onto it. I think the Scorpions would want to take another wicket before lunch. Be very good for the Scorpions. Uh, he's not low enough, Manson. Look at look at his hands not in, aren't even getting to the ground because of course you know you would know Pin it's easier to go up than down. Uh, especially from your from your time behind the stumps. That's hooked away nicely. Well, 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 he got a piece of that dead per ball, and he sends that all the way for six. No, not the best delivery from Ramal Lewis, but easily dealt with by Pamal. Short, picking to be hit. Pamal went back and cracks that one over the deep mid wicket for the first six of the contest as well. And uh, a player who has to retrieve the ball is sent into the mound stand, Pinny. And have to hop the fence to get back over. I enjoy watching cricket from that moon stand as well. I'm sure you did. <laughs> I'm not sure how much of the cricket you'd have seen between the haze of rum and uh, jerk chicken smoke, but... I really enjoy my time, man. It's yeah, of course you over do. There. Watching some of the greats. Christopher Henry Gill scoring 100 in that CBL game down here as well. Pomal is actually up to double figures with that shot. Good stuff from him. And uh, that is the last delivery of the 25th. The players come off. It's 58 for 5 at lunch uh, with the Guyana Harpy Eagles and all sorts of bother. The Jamaica Scorpions doing the damage first up in this first session. Some final thoughts from Marlon Pinnock before we go for lunch. Excellent bowling performance this morning by the Scorpions. They won the toss this morning and immediately decided to bowl. And so far, they are doing just at Spina Park, picking up five wickets in the first session for 58 runs. We'll be back in 40 minutes for more action from Spina Park.
Action resumes here at Sabina Park with the Guyana Harp Eagles after being asked to bat. They went into lunch at 58 for 5. All sorts of bother here. And we're going to see uh, OJ Shields taking up the ball from the northern end of the ground, which is where he started the slide for Guyana. They were 11 for 1, then 12 for 2, 13 for 3, 42 for 4, and then their fifth wicket falling with the score at 42 as well. Andrew Chan in your company alongside Marlon Pinnock for what could be a very, very interesting session here, Pinny. It will be interesting to see if the Guyanese can uh, mount a partnership to get them back into the game or if the Scorpions can wrap it up, wrap up their first innings very, very quickly. Yes, good afternoon to our viewers. So far, so good for the Scorpions. Doing a fantastic job in the middle of this morning. Five wickets to them. Guyana RP Eagles on the back foot, 58 runs to their credit. It's the first ball after the lunch break. What is she so far? Doing an outstanding job for the Scorpions. Into his sixth over, two for eight. 16 wickets in eight games in regional cricket. Yeah, that first spell was uh, really quite something from O.J. Shields. Got both open as LBW. He was fast, he was straight, he was full. Along with Dover Green set the early uh, tone for the Scorpions. Short delivery. Fended away by Savory. I think he's weighing that one on the body as well. A uh, square leg feel will, have, will come over and have a look at that one. Well directed bouncer at the body. Let's have a look at the replay. Yeah, good pace. Good line, good lint as well. But had uh, no room whatsoever. Yeah, he got himself in an awkward position there, Savory. It's actually the second time he's been struck on the body. Um, I think it was Mindley who got him on the glove uh, just before lunch. And OJ Shields, as we mentioned in this year's competition, bowling with a lot of pace and also getting bounce out of this wicket here at Sabina Park. Another short delivery outside the line of your stump this time. It's good to be see OJ Shields coming off his injury and packing the Scorpions lineup as well. And getting pace. And we know how quick he can be once he gets his ears right. This Spina Park wicket can be problems for the RP Eagles who so far this morning in a lot of bother at Sabina Park at 58 for 5, two wicket going to Shield, two going to Pete Summon, and of course one to Derval Green. Full delivery flailing at that one. Really doesn't use his feet at all, so he just sort of throws his hand at that one. And uh, a bit rattled here, I think. She was so far very economical as well. Credit to Kim Altsavory. He's, he's been a one batter, Penny. If you look at nine or 44 deliveries, he's a one batter who's, uh, who's been willing to stick around because uh, the, the, the scores and, and, and the number of deliveries faced by batters in this game, uh, or at least by the Harpy Eagles, has not been good at all. Another short delivery. Shields getting... Uh, a little bit overexcited here. But he starts with a maiden, I believe. No. One delivery left in the over. Two short deliveries from OJ Shields. Just outside the off stump. You want to kick those deliveries into the body of the left hander. 
which she speaks can be very detrimental to the RP Eagles batters at the wicket. These two batters want to make a rebuilding for the RP Eagles. Down the leg side, two down the leg side. He won't get an LBW appeal there. But uh, still ask the question at the end of the over, 58 for 5. So I'm meeting over to start after the lunch break. As you can see, that final delivery just hunting down the leg side. But you can see where Uchi Shields causing a lot of butter here, Anjo. Yeah, indeed. And Brandon King decides to start with his off spinner in Pete Salmon. And why not? Doing just for the Scorpions so far in this year's competition. 29 wickets to his tally. Been doing an all round performance for the Scorpions with bat and with ball. Mm. Some useful runs in the middle as well. I think he scored some 8 yards in one of the games. Some 40 yards and some 30 yards. And when it comes to the wickets, he's dominating for the Scorpions. Excellent. Seem to be Captain Brandon King typing around in the field. Leading from the front as a captain. That's a commitment you want from your leader. So far, Brandon King doing a fantastic job in the field as well. 58 for 5, and just one slip in place, Penny. What do you think about that? Uh, we saw that uh, Pramal was squared up a couple of times before the lunch break by both Lewis and Salmon. I think this field needs to be a little bit more attacking. And I second you on that. I think the fielder on the deep mid wicket boundary. I will certainly have a, a second slip in place. Dancing up the pitches, Pamal gets a thick outside edge, and I will run through the, the extra cover region. It will just reach the ropes. No, I think the fielder does well, gets the foot down there. But he was shaping to go straight, I think, and just about got enough on it to get through the cover region and come back for three. Not the most convincing shot at all. But let's look at the replay. Mighty close. Touch and go there. Seemed to be OJ Shields. Doing some tidying up there. See if a single. Yeah, looks like uh, he can do a job for the reggae boys as well, yeah. OJ Shields. Fancy footwork there on the boundary ropes. A good midfielder as well. Indeed. <laughs> Shot of Ongo there by Promol. And back to this one as Savory closes it down. Well, I think, I, I mean, in terms of Promol, the fact that, that the Salmon and Lewis are very, very good spinners. Promol, of course, is a low order battle. Uh, so he's trying to impose himself. I think that's the best he can do given the circumstances. And uh, Promol can handle his butt good at, at moments. At the completion of the 27th, it's 6 2 for the loss of five. Yep. And the other thing is, of course, he'll be facing up against OJ Shields there. That's the big West Indies all rounder, Odin Smith, as well as Michael Clark, who played U cricket as well. I think this year is his final year at the under 19 level. He's for the Lucas. Cricket Club who lost to the Jamaica Defence Force in that quarterfinals last weekend. And that's of course Michael Clark, Jamaica, not Michael Clark, former Australian <laughs> captain. <laughs> that's to clarify in case uh, anyone was interested. A pleasant, uh, I think it would be good afternoon or good evening to any Australian fans who might be tuning in to the stream. Pormal is out getting some attention, it looks like. Or is that savory? Savory. It is savory. Yeah, he's definitely feeling that one in the ribs from OJ Shields. I 
think they're going to get another batter under the helmet here for Permol as he will be up against OJ Shields when our action resumes here. Guyana Harp Eagles physiotherapist has had quite a bit of work to do here, Penny. All morning. <laughs> All morning. Some short sprint working on his cardiovascular. Yeah. <laughs> We might have to direct it to the nearest pharmacy to get some of that magic spray. Maybe he's uh, with a whole lot in that bag, though. Yes, Andrew. indeed. <laughs> so, OJ Shields will be bowling to Pamal. So far, 16 from 14 deliveries. Being on the aggressive side of things so far. Was not out on some 92 in the last game. Have some batting capability as well. And boy, oh boy, does the guy in RP Eagles need it today. And not comfortable there was uh, Shields with his run-up, so it's a dead ball signal. In terms of the batting to come, there's uh, Moti, Niall Smith and Isaiah Thorne. Now we'll look at the replay here. Just didn't let go of the ball there at OJ Shields. Um, so Moti, of course, can battle a little bit. Niall as well. Uh, Isaiah Thorne, it's a very young fellow, one of the under-19 players. Short and well played and up in the air. And the catch is taken. That is the end of Veer Samuel Pomol. The ploy has worked. And the Guyana Harp Eagles have lost their sixth wicket with the score on a 61 for 5, and it's the third wicket for O.J. Shields. Pace here from O.J. Shields, and Pramal was in no man's land here at Spina Park, an easy catch. Carlos Brown, he won't drop that. And the Cayenne Harpy Eagles in it, is in more trouble up on trouble here at Spina Park. They are now 61 for the loss of 6. 3 for 8 for O.J. Shields. Excellent awareness from Carlos Brown because, of course, he had to parry it before he eventually settled and took the catch uh, and completed the catch as Gudakesh Moti is the number nine batter to come out. So excellent awareness by Brown and uh, good work by Morris, of course, giving him the space, you know, it uh, could have Morris obviously <laughs> running to take the catch as well. So all the journalists that are joining us from the various uh, Jamaican uh, ensemble there, Penny, are happy today for sure. The beautiful day, a Wednesday afternoon here at Sabina Park. <laughs> for this lovely game of cricket being played here between the Guyana Harpy Eagles and, of course, the hosts. The Scorpions at Spina Park. Fantastic figures from your friend OJ Shields. Three for eight penny. 6.1 overs. That is excellent bowling. Not only wickets, but in terms of economy, in terms of uh, getting the ball in the right areas. Good delivery to start a multi. Will you realize the three wickets OJ Shields has gotten so far? I've been pace on. Last delivery. The new batter was shot into the body region. Goes to show how fast this young man OJ Shields is bowling. But OJ Shields going to home with Technical High School. Oh, oh spicy fast delivery bowling. again. Well held by Romain Morris. I would like to see this on the replay here. It was really quick. Mm, excellent tape by Morris, as I mentioned. This is good as style bowling here. As a part of OJ Shields cranking up some pace here at Sabina Park. You should be pumped, though. Yeah. Figure shows it all. Three for eight into your seventh over. Mm. I think I think the best. Uh, what I really like about OJ Shields' action is that he uses the full 
length of his arm penny. And I mean, I, I know it seems strange to say that, but when he comes around, you can see that the arm is fully extended and it's stretching as much as possible. That's a beautiful delivery to follow up. And uh, he really comes through there. And yes, it's a bit of a shoulder action as well. Yes, of course, he has to use the shoulder to get that, that pace generated. He has a good jump. Doesn't hang in the air that much, but yeah, good wrist as well. Um, I'd like to see him get one on the stumps now, because uh, Moti will definitely be rattled. He just needs to get one on the stumps now. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Well played by Moti in the end, but still back of a length. Needs to get that one full now. I think Irikush Moti was unsure in this occasion, but lucky enough and good for the yeah. guy in RP Eagles. He's still at the wicket. And of course, a partnership is needed urgently by the RP Eagles. Yeah, absolutely urgently. So far, we haven't seen a partnership. Yeah, certainly not. <laughs> 13 to 42 is the biggest partnership that was between Sinclair and Savory. Beautiful. That is a brilliant delivery then by OJ Shields. An absolutely gorgeous wicket maiden from the fast bowler. Three for eight after seven. 61 for six to Guyana Harpy Eagles. And boy, oh boy, OJ Shields is enjoying his time in the sun here at Sabina Park. And why not here at home at Sabina Park? Doing just for the Scorpions. Who started this round in fifth. And the Guyana Harpy Eagles was in fourth. Still would want to see a more attacking feel from Brandon King. Just a deep backward square leg on the boundary. Repeat someone. Yeah, I mean, even though even though they, it's up against Saber, who's now faced a half century of delivery, he only has nine runs, Penny. You have a team 61 for 6. You can afford to have another slip in position, another fielder close at, at Silly Medoff. Salmon is on top of his game, 2 for 17 of 6. Ramal Lewis, his one over was very, very interesting. Remember Ramal Lewis has played one game so far in this West Indies Regional Championship. And so far, doing... What is required of him? I think he picked up five wickets in that game as well. The drift from Salmon across the left handed uh, Savory. But it's two left handers at the crease now, which is the other consideration. Oh, oh beauty. Yeah. Pitch and spun there. away from the left-hander. That is what you want to see from your off-spinner. Spinning the ball, getting the ball to spin and bounce on this wicked top delivery. Excellent take by Morris as well. This covers this one better, does Savory? To complete the 29th, a maiden at 61 for the loss of six. So not one of the best batting shot you'll see from the Harpy Eagles. 61 for 6. Top scorer so far. Yeah, I think credit must be given to, uh, to Brandon King and his Scorpions bowling. Because other than the first couple overs from Marquino Minley that were a little bit wayward. They weren't expensive, but they were certainly not on target as much as you would have liked. Every single J Jamaica Scorpion bowler has held up their hand. And, uh, and really come to the party here. Yes, Durville Green, steady, building that pressure. OJ Shields got the early wickets. And then, uh, and then Pete Salmon, of course, swimming in smoothly. 
And of course, Marquis Lamine came back in the second spell. Bowl a fantastic line outside the offstone to the left handers. Oh, <laughs> why the signal by umpire Joel Wilson of Trinidad and Tobago? Let's look at the replay here. Yeah, getting a little too carried away here with uh, the, the short delivery as OJ Shield. You have to remember what worked for him um, in his earlier spell. <coughs> Three for nine off seven. Much better, but a little bit too straight on that occasion. I like the aggression being shown here by OJ Shields to Moti. You know, Moti can be very aggressive, he likes to get butt on ball. So far, OJ Shields on the money, well, as you mentioned, not giving away anything of sort to the uh, Guyanese. Oh. Tucked nicely across the hip. Uh, it may have fallen just for short of short leg. The shy comes in at the non striker's end, and there's no run. Well, the shy, the throw did not come in. And there's a single. And there is a single. Let's have a look at the replay on that one and let's see how far away that was from the short leg fielder. Yeah, just to the left of the fielder. Played well in the end by Moti. I thought it was up in the air a little bit, but he played it down and away from the fielder. And that's his first run. Yeah, indeed. Lovely drive by Kimon Savory. That was full and that was met with the full presentation of the bat, that was a delightful fall. Probably the best shot we've seen all morning. It is indeed over pitch delivery by OJ Shields. And did it got the treatment it deserved? As you mentioned, full presentation of the bat face. Tremendous timing as well for his first boundary. At 67 for the loss of six, the guy in the Arp Eagles after lost the toss this morning. I was sent into bat by the Scorpions. Scorpions doing a fantastic job so far, picking up six wickets this morning. Goes for the short ball, gets the top edge, that will go down to the third man. How far does it go? It's four. Back to back fours for Kimon Savory. A little bit of a counter attacking here by the uh, Guyanese batsman who's willing to stay out there and fight in the middle. Not the most convincing shot. But four runs nonetheless to the Harp Eagles. And four more runs to Savory is up to 17 from 57 deliveries now. And it's Harp Eagles up to 71 for the loss of six here at Sabina Park. As the sunshine comes out in its glory here at Sabina Park. But not a lot of spectators here, Andrew. Yeah, the first four that, uh, that Savory struck, I don't think it was that bad of a delivery. He maybe missed his, uh, maybe over pitched by about an inch or so. But I think that's the line that, that O.J. Shield should employ when he's bowling to Moti. But Moti, of course, might lose his shape. Kimon Savory was uh, is adept enough to just uh, meet the pace of that with, his, with the full face of the bat. Switching angles now, which I think is not a bad ploy at all from Shields. And if you realize there's a fine leg and a deep backward square leg in place, Three for 18 so far. Two bounces came in this over. So before that, it was three for 10 from 7.3. <laughs> and it's actually three for eight, Penny. <laughs> A 10 runs conceded in this over. Slightly denting his figures. 
Oh. And that's a lovely drive to the extra cover region. Beautiful shot by Kimal Savory. Got full face of the bat in that one. 14 runs in that over. And at the end of the over, they progress quite nicely. I think it's about 75 for six. Tremendous timing, great dexterity there by the left-hander. That is what you want to see from the youngsters. Salmon has a chance to bowl a full over at Moti. So you'll see what happens here now. <clears throat> Thick inside edge, and that will run down to the third, the short third man area. They come back around for two. In fact, fine leg region. David Tan. Cannon covering some ground to his left, but can't prevent the second run. I think he has a shirt with his number on it now, Kenny. I don't think it was uh, available to him in the first session, <laughs> but his number is 71. Javon, he'd be happy to have a shirt with his number on it. I'm really happy for him as well. All has been performing at the JCA to the competition over the years, and hence why he has gotten his reward in the six round action at Savannah Park. And what parish is he held from? Kingston as well? Kingston. It's good to see his wife here watching as well. Mm. In fact, his wife is doing scoring here at Savannah Park. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Cut nicely. Gets that through the gap. That will run onto the ropes of four. A bit of a loosener there from Pete Salmon. Short and wide and put away by Moti. Not often you see a bad delivery from Pete Salmon, but this was short, begging to be hit. And Moti obliged. Yeah. It wasn't an absolutely rank long hop, though. I mean, it wasn't uh, a horrible delivery at all, but well played by Moti. And he picked the gap nicely. That's his first bungee as well. Appeal for a leg before. Umpire Christopher Wright, not interested in this occasion at the completion of the 31st. 81 for the loss of six. Turn our attention to the replay here. Ooh, just outside the off stump. Excellent decision by umpire Christopher Wright. The two umpires in this game is umpire Christopher Wright of Jamaica and Joel Wilson of Trinidad and Tobago. Indeed. OJ Shields will be continuing, Andrew. And why not? Figures of three. for 22 so far to his ninth over the last over was a bit on the expensive side of things you realize the last two overs the Guyana Arp Eagles getting three bungees should be four is that what the Scorpions would want at the moment Fighting 21 of 60 from Kimal Savory. Easily the highest score. After Sinclair's 18. And then Permal's 15. Kevin Sinclair. 
there came out very positive this morning. Got a brute of a delivery. Pete Salmon saw his demise. Pleasant looking drive off to a whitish mid off this time. And a good single, good cricket. Immediately after stroking that ball to a whitish mid off, batters acknowledge each other. Yeah. And this is what you want to see from the RP Eagles. Positive cricket, good intent. And as you mentioned earlier, partnership is needed. And so far, this partnership blossoming at the moment for the RP Eagles. Well, you still need to blossom to a lot more, Penny. <laughs> 82 for 6. They'll be hoping to get to the 100 without uh, losing any more wickets and then push on from there. Well played by Moti, fending at that one. You'd stare that down to third man. That will run close to the ropes, and it might just win the ro race. It does indeed. Well played by Gudakesh Muti. A little bit of width on that, but played it quite nicely. Yes, I've been offered, but well controlled. In command of such shot. Just opening the face of that bat and just guide it down to the vacant third man boundary for a second boundary. Excellent batting here by Muti. As I mentioned earlier. He's like to be counter-attacking. As easy as Sunday morning is that boundary. Just guide it down to the vacant third man boundary. Follow up runs to the RP Eagles. Getting himself in a tangle there, Mochi. Just trying to turn that into the leg side. And then uh, handling the ball, but there was no appeal by the fielder. <laughs> Let's look at the replay here. Final delivery. The strain on the line of the leg stump. Those two feelers behind square. It's a fine leg, anti backward square leg in place for Moti. This is a shot of the Kingston Cricket Club. Some value of the spectators here supporting the Scorpions. Good delivery. So J Shields, 3 for 27 so far. One delivery remaining is nine, doing an outstanding job for the Scorpions. This partnership is building for the RP Eagles. Yeah, it came together with a score at 61. Put on just about 25 or so. The yeah. second biggest partnership, obviously, uh, between uh, <laughs> after Savory and Sinclair. End of the over, 86 for 6. I think soon and very soon, we've seen uh, Rama Lewis just bowl a one over so far in this contest. It's a shot of beautiful Spina Park. A blessed country it is in Jamaica. Very nice country here in Jamaica. Yep. Excellent work by the cameraman, Kadir Mohammed as well. Pete Salmon will continue from the southern end of the ground, but there will be a change in commentary as Fozzy will come in with Pinny after the silver. Pinny is so comfortable in his chair there. He's put his feet up. He's enjoying the scenery. There's a cold beverage and a hot beverage at his disposal. Beautiful breeze blowing across. It's grown here at Sabina Park. And lovely sunshine as well. Yep. Excellent day for cricket. Absolutely wonderful, glorious conditions for cricket. I don't think the skies over Sabina Park have seen a cloud at all. Not at all. Well, the only thing we're not seeing is any spectators here at Sabina Park. There's a few. A handful of spectators here at Sabina Park. with the Scorpions doing a tremendous job so far, you'd expect the spectators to be here this afternoon. Yeah, I'm still disappointed in this field though from Brandon King. I really I really want him to see that to put a little bit more pressure, maybe not necessarily on Savory, but certainly on Moti when he's at the crease. 
Ooh, good delivery. Beautiful stuff there from Sam. And I think his bowlers are making sure, uh, putting that pressure on him to get that extra field. And I'm surprised Salmon isn't saying, hey, let's bring in one of our fielders because they're not going to get him away. What if you realize how someone operates here, Andrew? Yeah. He's a man of few words. <laughs> the team that the skipper give him, he's a man who just works with what he's have in place. That is what I like about Pete Summon. Cut away nicely. They'll get a run to spoil uh, Salmon's maiden. But they are at the end of it. 87 for 6. Kimal Savory takes a strike as Fozzie takes over from myself. Excellent work there. Marquino Minley showing good commitment in the field as well. And this is what the Scorpions was locked off in the early phases of this West Indies Regional Championship. But so far, so good in this six round pictures here at Sabina Park. You can see the fighting spirit of the Scorpions, and hence why they are on top this morning here at Sabina Park. Glorious day here at Sabina Park for cricket as well. As you can see, a change of bowling from this or commentary box end. Derval Green is back into the attack, as well as Jerome Foster. Yeah, Marlon, good afternoon to you and all the listeners, our viewers in this case. 29 runs added since lunch, a wicket that of Vera Sami Pramal. Quick bouncer by OJ Shields, who bowled a couple of overs since that break. He took the wicket, he has three wickets to his name. Derval Green from this day. Northern end and he has been excellent so far this morning and he well He was excellent in the morning session and he took the wicket off Kevin Anderson as much as it was a a Poor shot you felt as though Green deserved Some luck and deserved some reward for what he was doing. He was moving the ball away from the right-handers shaped a couple back towards the stumps and was causing problems testing the defenses of the batters. And he's now started to the left-handed Savory, who has 23 from 69 deliveries. Has played a couple of drives through the offside. And looks a solid player. And what you'll see, a fighting knock so far from him. Spending time at the wicket for the Harper Eagles. Very crucial. So far, he's doing a fabulous job in the middle. Moti at the wicket as well. Steering that one back with a point. Good diving effort by Carlos That Brown. looks like Carlos Brown. Can't deny a single. Good energy being shown in the field by the Scorpions. They dropped a chance earlier. It was an easy chance for Javon Buchanan, the debutant. Mm. Finally has his number in his back now. Was operating without a number in his back earlier today. Well, that special you know, has number. Number 71 in his back now. He's still in the slip cordon. Cost the team 23 runs, but the Scorpions won't mind. It's 88 for 6 after inserting the opposition. So, you feel as if you're on top. One thing for sure, Gudakesh Moti can wield his bat. You see him a few times playing for the West Indies and even for Guyana. Loves to counter attack, loves to get bat and ball. So the Scorpions won't want to take this for granted and allow a partnership to form here, a seventh wicket partnership to form here. Plays of decent drive up to a forceful shot off to the man at cover. That's Captain Brandon King. 
Derval Green won't mind that shot from Moti. Played away from his body. At 88 for 6 with Tevin Imlock, we're not sure about his status in terms of if he's going to be coming back to, to bat. He was hit on the hand earlier this morning, went off, ret retired, hurt. You wonder what, what's the plan here for Guyana at the end of the 34th over at 88 for 6. Is that what I'm getting at is that 88 for 6, it's not a position of comfort by any stretch of the imagination. So hanging around is one, but I think they need to score as much as they can. And given that Savory has shown some defiance with that 70 ball knock so far, you want to find someone to stick around. As I said, Gurakesh Moti can bat, has a first class century. I think his highest score is 110 and made that century a couple of years ago. So he can bat. He has the luxury of scoring runs at this level before. Yes, he has useful contribution as well at the lower end for the RP Eagles. Yeah, tends to score his 30s and 40s. So the Scorpions must be wary as well that it's not game done by any stretch of the imagination. They are closer given that the status of Imlak is still unknown. Early wicket in the session within the first hour, I think, is ideal. But for the Guyanese prospect, Savory has to bat out this innings. He has to be unbeaten for them to get anywhere close to something respectable. And he's guiding that one down to third man. It's going to go very close to the boundary. Two runs at least, and two is all they will get. And as I said earlier today, this surface is similar to the one that the, the Scorpions played against the Volcanoes. And it was a similar type of outcome. In terms of the first day, the Scorpions were at sea to the movement, the seam, the swing. And that was in February. But things were completely different because it was rainy, a lot of cloud around. The pitch was heavily moistured, had a lot of grass on it have some grass on it now, but it's not as seamer friendly, as you'd say. I just think that the Guyanese, they weren't as circumspect as they should have been. No one coming back towards the stumps by someone who has taken two wickets so far, and both coming in identical fashion, bowling uh, Kevin Sinclair and Ali Mohammed. I think the Scorpions at the moment are doing an outstanding job. This partnership were 29 from 46 deliveries. You don't want the seven wicked partnership to take the game away from you on day one. Yeah. I don't think you want a seven wicked partnership taking it away from you any day at all, but that completes <laughs> completes the over. And at 90 for 6. Green will be continuing. Step movers one for seven. Very economical so far of Derval Green. Want to break this partnership for the Scorpions though. We're at 29. Two straight. Yeah, so as I said, this surface had the first game of the season. And the Scorpions made 159 in their first innings against the Volcanoes. And Ryan John was, was the lead man there with 5 of 43. And he's a medium pacer. So I'm saying this surface, how today is playing is similar to what happened then, where the first innings was very difficult. 
but it got progressively easier as the game went on because the Volcanoes responded to that 158 with 340. That one takes the edge. Through second slip and gully all along the ground. No chance for either party. And Caval Savory goes up to 33. I don't think the Harp Eagles will mind how the boundaries come because they desperately need them. It is 95 now for six. Played away from his brother this time around, but played with soft hands, Foster. And why that ball traveled all along the ground down to that vacant third man boundary for four runs. Steadily on that off stump is Derville Green. That's where you want to be. Looking around to see if you have a change in the field, but I think based on this, it's not electric pace off the, off the wicket. And as you saw there from Savory, soft hands, the ball went all along the ground. So not a lot of pace in the wicket. Savory's up to 30 from 78 deliveries. Spending crucial time at the wicket for the RP Eagles. Effort delivered by the effort man. Turful Green. Oh, not bothered any at all is Savory. Decent. A little partnership building here, Foster. This is what the RP Eagles need at the moment a few partnership for them will do just for the the team as well so far haven't seen any chance of a shower or showers here at Sabina Park it's all a beautiful sunny morning so far Lovely breeze blowing across the ground as well. You can see on the umpire's shirt as well. It's beautiful day for cricket on a Wednesday morning. It's Pina Park, the home of cricket. And Savory has to be careful with those deliveries going away from the stumps. He's really hanging the bat at them. It's not going to give him a lot of success. It's just disaster waiting to happen. So if you're just joining us, this is the West Indies Regional Championship Round 6 action from Sabina Park. It's the Scorpions up against the Guyana Arp Eagles. Turned into the onside by Savory. And that brings the end to the 36th over at 96 for six the harpy eagles sent into bat the harpy eagles they lost the toss this morning and were sent into bat by the scorpions did the scorpions create havoc here in the first session five wickets fell in the first session this morning at that stage two went to shields two to pete someone and one went to terrible green they came back after the lunch break OJ Shields picked up the wicket off from all. He was caught by Carlos Brown by that short leg here, and that was the sixth wicket. So fantastic job so far by the Scorpions. They would want to maintain and try to reduce the Guyana RP Eagles for a lower total than they would want to achieve here at Sabina Park. Pete Salmon is continuing, 2 for 26. Pete Salmon continues to do an outstanding job for the Scorpions in this year's regional championship. 29 wickets so far in this competition. Tends to bowl long spells, someone. 
has bowled 11 overs. Has great variations as well, Foster. Sweep shot. That's badly lined. It's going to take some stopping, I don't think. Buchanan, yeah, he does well. Does extremely well, the debutant. And reduces the score to two. And takes the Harper Eagles closer and closer to 100. They are 98 now for six. And it looked a long way away initially. We're really tottering at 58 for five at at lunch that was an excellent feeling there by Buchanan covering some ground to his left Let's see if two runs for the Scorpions I like the commitment so far been shown here by the Scorpions in the field as well Foster didn't see that early on in this competition This is going to take some stopping. I think that's going to go into the boundary as quick as Ramon Lewis is. He won't stop it. Just a deft touch there from a Savory. Rocked back. Guided it. Had enough bounce to work with as well as much as width. And didn't really flash the blade. Just caressed the ball to the right of Lewis who is at backward point. Had no chance and the 100 comes up. At 102 for 6. And interestingly, the partnership is now 41 runs. Well played here by Savory. Just use the pace of that ball and just guide it down to the third man, Bonji. Ramalou stand no chance whatsoever. A wonderful partnership starts to blossom here at Sabina Park for the RP Eagles. Completion of the 37. It's 102 for the loss of six here at Sabina Park. And just an update from around the region. Zachary McCaskey has his first first class century. He was dismissed for 101. Barbados spread 175 for one against the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. Craig Brathwaite is on 71. And this is heading up to T. Eight minutes to T there. Trinidad and Tobago. Red Force, they are 186 for three. Jason Mohammed on the cusp of a second century this season. He has 93. Amir Jangu has 28. Kejoran Otley made 47. The Scorpions close out against the Red Force next week with Green continuing here to Moti. He's thinking about a run. Not possible. The Volcanoes, who had three from three to start, they haven't won in three. And they look set to be in trouble here. They are 162 all out against the West Indies Academy. And the Academy pushed the Scorpions to the limit in that fourth round game. They ended up on the losing end. And the top scorer in this innings for the Volcanoes was Shamar Springer, 31. Moti gets another run for the Harpy Eagles, 103 now for 6. And 4 for 24 for Joshua Bishop, who has now gone ahead in the leading wicket column. Started two wickets behind. Uh, Yohan Lane had 3 for 30. Naeem Young, 1 for 35. Kadima Lane, 2 for 20. So those are the matches that are in progress as well. So at this point, you'd say that Barbados in control, West Indies Academy in a good position, Trinidad in a strong position at 187 for three. And of course, here at Sabina Park, the Scorpions in a commanding position as well. Yeah. So one, one team already bowled out before T. Scorpions looking to follow suit here. But I think Gurakesh Moti and Kemal Savory has other ideas. They're looking to get as much as possible. 
driven nicely to the right off cover it's gonna be a long chase let's see if brandon king can cut it off he does with a tumble ramon lewis was very close behind him and they can't stop three runs and savory goes up to what 40 now it's now 106 for six and remember his highest score so far this season is 53 savory yeah over pitch delivery there coming in from jungle green slavery just came on the front foot just caressed that ball through the cover region and a good chase for brandon king Save a single for the Scorpions. But I like the work that is put in here by the Scorpions as far. A tiring looking Derval Green second spell foster yeah, this is what his ninth over today well I wouldn't say tired looking but he hasn't bowled as quick as he did earlier so it's, <laughs> it's 106 for 6 at the end of the 36th thing for sure though is consistently hitting the good areas so far as you can see how windy it is here at Sabina Park the trees is blowing heavily here at Sabina Park and the sun is very hot Heavy breeze and, and lovely sunshine here at the home of cricket, the Mecca, Spina Park, Scorpions dominating procedures here. That's going to see a change of bowling from the Michael Olin Hen. Rama Lewis gets ready to bowl his second over of the contest. Bowl the first over before lunch, Foster. The first delivery to from all hit the hedge just wide off Abhijay Mansing but he's back now for his second over this time around he'll be bowling to Moti who's on 13 from 25 deliveries I think that's still savory and Lewis is going to be coming from around the wicket well around the wicket a little bit flatter with the trajectory is Lewis. Shorter than Salmon. So it's a different angle now for the batters to pick up the line of the delivery from. Or a different height as well. So square cuts and those pulls will be a little bit more difficult. And because he's short, he's a lot skiddy as well. It gets to you quicker than you think. Doesn't give a lot of air. But what you can probably do to him is probably advance a little bit more rather than with Pete someone. And we have seen so far in this competition, he has taken a lot of a lot of wickets that have fallen to him have happened in front of the wicket. And the player is trying to hit him down the ground from a stable base, but the ball gets to them quicker than they think and they are through the, the shots at times too early he's tickled that one saver he's running hard he's thinking about two what will Buchanan do run out chance he can't stop it it's two more runs that was positive intent from savory had his head down and thought about two from the outset and he got home pretty easily excellent cricket immediately after turning that ball behind square the call was a two you can see that in the running as well the aggressiveness that's what they Happy Eagles need at the moment. So far, this partnership is building. Turn behind square once more for an easy single this time around. 
109 for the loss of six. RP Eagles after lost the toss that were sent into back this morning. Yeah, partnership now 48. You always expect a, a good partnership within an innings. It's just you don't want it to be number 7 to 11. <laughs> a Not little bit all. more painful. Gudakishmoti showing the full face of the bat to complete the over. And at the end of that over, it's the first hour of play completed. And what? Four. Yep. 41 runs added in the session. First hour after lunch. Yeah, so uh, 41 for one, you'd probably say even. Given the state of the game, though, the Scorpions are well and truly on top. And at 109 for six, the players have a drink in this post-lunch session. All right, welcome back to the sixth round action here at Sabina Park between the host team, Jamaica Scorpions, in a strong position, having the Guyana Harpy Eagles at 109 for six. This is the first day of action.
the second session, the first hour just completed. This partnership between Gudakesh Moti and Kemal Savory holding out here on the Scorpions. Derval Green continuing. Pace has gotten wickets. I think the Scorpions are trying to maximize their fast bowling points here. As much as they want to dismiss the Harpy Eagles for as few as possible. They want to ensure that they get as much points to enable themselves that if they are able to get th those winning points, they can surpass a couple of the teams in front of them and see that the Barbados Pride look as if they're turning the tide now and turning the screws on the competition. And if they're able to win that game against the, the leaders, they're in a very strong position already, 175 for one. The Hurricanes, they could be putting the, the, the rest of the teams under pressure. And of course, the Barbados spread is in third at the moment. Yeah. Four wickets between the pace bowlers. So they need another wicket to get a fast bowling point. And you get 0 0.5. So she is well, 0 0.2 per wicket for a fast bowler. <laughs> and if you get five wickets, you end up getting one point, which is critical for the fast bowlers. Indeed. She is three wicket to his name. Interval Green, one for 17 so far. Would want to make. That's a loose now. That's a freebie. And for someone who is on 43, even if you're not, you love those. And he thrashed that to the boundary. Kemal Savory. And takes him up to 47. And now Derville Green leaks an easy boundary there. Indeed, as I call it, freebie. Easy pickings. For Savory as a 50 partnership comes up as well. 52 partnerships so far. A valuable partnership. For the RP Eagles, well deserved. At 113 for six. Staging a recovery here at Spina Park. Good delivery, equal to the task but this time around. And so far, these two battles in the middle showing dominance so far. It looks as if. Savory is more comfortable to anything that is back of a good length, which is a normal thing for any player. Hasn't really been tested a lot with the short deliveries, and the, the, the Scorpion's quickest bowler didn't bowl a lot of deliveries to him as well, which is she's slower delivery that is from Green, trying to lure a faulty shot to complete the 40th over at 113 for six. You look at the bowling chart, OJ Shields 3 for 27, beat someone 2 for 32, Turval Green 1 for 21. And it's a more even distribution, as I said, with the bowlers. Now Shields has what? 9 overs. Uh, Green has bowled 10. I think Minley has bowled 7 or 8. And these, uh, Green had some injury issues in the past. He has been a lot stronger and fitter this season. Shields has an injury issue. Mindley has injury problems. Gordon Bryan as well. Yeah. So in this game, I'm talking about managing the, yeah. the workload and ensuring that the workload is shared equally. Ramal Lewis to continue. Good at Kishmoti. Ramal Lewis bowling his third. Brandon King. Good at managing his bowlers throughout. Couple rounds we've seen from him leading the Scorpions. The man at backward point has gone a lot finer for Lewis. 
Kurt McKenzie. Another good player who have played at the highest level. Test cricket. So far in this regional tournament, haven't kicked on the way how the Scorpions would want him to do. Getting starts, but not capitalizing for the Scorpions. One of those players who came out of the Bryce Academy. First to play test cricket as well. Short. A long hop. And smashed over mid-wicket. All the way for six. Motif. That's the second one of the innings for the Harpy Eagles. It was too short. It was really asking to be hit. And slammed in front of the scoreboard for six. A rear bat delivery. Coming in from Ramal Lewis. And he got the treatment he's deserved. Short begging to be hit. And Moti won't miss out on that. His first six of the contest. 119 for the loss of six. The Guyana RP Eagles, after lost the toss, are sent into bat by the Scorpions. Seeing now the change in the field. Long off, push back. Well, mid off, push back to long off. Man at mid on. Gone to long on for Moti. It was just a matter of time before he unleashed a powerful shot. And he pushes that one down to the, the long on. Smart cricket there from the left under. And Shields is tumbling down. Oh no, this looks like it could be painful. He is going to feel the ball and then he just that went over in a heap. I know he's looking at his leg. It seems as if it's an ankle injury, like he turned his ankle when he went to feel the ball. So if we could get a, another replay, well, it's definitely not Shields, it's Derval Green. He was out of the shot. They were going for an easy single. And then he just went down in a, in a heap. And he's grimacing now. And the physiotherapist is on the field. But it's not a good sight. He's a strong person. He's a strong player. Tough fellow, Derval Green. Hopes, we hope that all is well with him. Yeah, we hope so. Get himself in an awkward position there was terrible green. Let's hope all is well for him though and for the Scorpions as well. The spectator there just looking on. Not pleased with what happened to Durval Green. You can see the anger on his face as well. Just below our commentary box. So welcome back to Sabina Park. Derville Green is in some distress here. He's not walking freely. He has taken off the right boot. And it looks as if he's going to be walking off the park. So another injury setback here for the Scorpions. Who have lost several of their key pieces so far. Not sure about the status of Nkrumah Bonner, but Lost Gordon Bryan since round three. Lost Marquino Minley for three rounds of matches. And those are two fast bowlers. Well, a substitute fielder in Andre McCarthy making his way on the park for the injured Derval Green. 
beat someone two for 32 so far. Doing an outstanding job for the Scorpions in this year's West Indies Regional Championship. 29 wickets to his tally so far. And batted well. He's going very vital runs at regular times for the Scorpions. Changing angle now for Salmon as well as End. He's now bowling from this, the Courtney Walsh end or the north stand. So the wind is in his back, ball moving from the leg stump to the off stump. And beats the man at backward point, a diving effort. Shields is giving chase, but to no avail. It goes in front of the Kingston Cricket Club. And another boundary now for Gudakesh Moti. And he played that like a top order player. Got on top of the bounce, rode the bounce, and got it in front of point for an easy boundary. And that's a tremendous timing as well. All class, all good timing. And just caress that ball down to that point boundary. This is good on the part of Moti. Doing just what the guy in the RP Eagles would want him to do. And so far, shared an unbroken seven wicket partnership of over 60 odd runs, Foster. Looking even more easy on that front foot is Moti. And he's showing you signs of the wicket getting a lot easier as well. Short and hammered away. This time backward of point. He got the first one in front of point. But this one is a back cut. And he slashed it with ferocious power. Andre McCarthy had no chance. And it whistles into the boundary for the second four of the over. And Gudakesh Moti signaling some intent here. Indeed. Pat delivery here coming in from Deed Summon. Short begging to be hit. And Moti obliged for his second boundary in the over. And Falver runs to the RP Eagles. Let's close out the 42nd at 130 for the loss of six. Three minutes to two o'clock here in Kingston, Jamaica. Wonderful building partnership by these two Guyanese batters in the middle. Shown great fight, great commitment. And hence why a wonderful partnership is building so far. Boy, oh boy, did the Guyana Harp Eagles need this partnership. Blossoming so far. It's going to be Ramal Lewis, so off spinners from either end. A little bit strange that someone has moved to this northern end. Given that his success has come from that Michael Holding end. Really wasn't down to the wicket alone. He used his variations pretty well. And Savory pushes that to mid on. It's a quick call for a single. McCarthy can't stop it. Takes Savory up to 48. McCarthy was on his heels there. Good cricket. Excellent cricket, Foster. Happy Eagles getting into their own now, Foster. Problematic times here for the, the Scorpions. I think the partnership is worth 70. And you look at it, 70 very important runs to them as well. Seems as if Brandon King has had enough of this closing field. He's asked the man at cover point to take a couple more steps towards the boundary. We we'll go a little bit deeper. Moti has 30 from 39 without a shot in anger. <laughs> Haven't seen no signs of Abhijay Mansing being introduced into the attack 
this morning into the 43rd over. And he's standing at slip all morning, Foster. Beaten. Playing on the back foot this time around was Muti. Good delivery coming in from Roma loose. But no harm done. Partnerships still blossom here at Sabina Park. 70 from 94 deliveries for the seventh wicket. Sweep shot from Moti. That's going to be another boundary. And the runs are flowing here between Moti and Savory. That one was on the stumps. It looked as if it was a dangerous shot. It was. Mm. But he got the blade down in time. Got it on the full. And it goes into the boundary. And takes the score up to 135 for six. Guy and a Harpy Eagle sent into bat. And they have recovered from 61 for six. Had Moti missed that, Foster. Rama Lewis would have his first wicket of the contest. He keep his eyes on the delivery and swept it very fine and efficient for yet another boundary to him and for the Guyana Harp Eagles. Partnership 74 runs, valuable 74 runs. The Scorpions won't want this partnership to get away from them here. Slap that one up to cover. Slavery so far is over 100 deliveries to 103 to be exact. Spending time at the wicket. That's oh. going to be gone to the boundary, I think. No. McCarthy is quick. Not quick enough. And Kevin Savory brings up a second half century this season. Too short, too wide from someone. And he's giving free runs now to the left-hander who has scored a huge volume of his runs through that third-man region. 52 from 104, and the score is now 139 for six. Well played to the man as well. Came to the crease when the guy in RP Eagles is in a spot of bother and batted like a master and shown his class for full potential in the middle. And so far, reap the rewards of another half century to him. And a valuable half century to the guy in RP Eagles as well. And Moti on the other hand, doing a tremendous job. 34 from 42 deliveries, staging a recovery for the RP Eagles. It looks easy outside now for Savory, who is without his helmet now. Wants to get at least another 50 more. And why not? Getting easier and easier. Every delivery for the batters in the middle. They realize even the run rate tends to go over three at the moment. This morning, it was about 1.5 at one stage. And now it blossomed over 3.18. These two butters in the middle, scoring very easy, and scoring at regular intervals here at Sabina Park. 78 of 100 deliveries partnership. Any cricket you're playing, Foster, once you get two or three good partnership, it tends to be in command of the game. At the completion of the 44th, 139 for the loss of six. Savory, Savory getting some treatment from the physiotherapy. On the other hand, Moti doing what is required of him, showing all his experience in the middle. Like a 
have some problems with his right wrist. As a magic spray comes out from the physiotherapy. So a long wait here for the resumption of play. And the Scorpions have been pushed on the back foot now for the first time in this contest. Had the Harpy Eagles at 61 for 6. They are now 139 for 6. A partnership of 78 between Gurakesh Moti and Kemal Savory. Tejan and Chandrapal was the first man dismissed for one. LBW to Shields. He was followed by Raymond Perez for four. Also LBW to Shields. That is OJ Shields. Tevin Imlock retired hurt. He was hit on the hand early in his innings. And then after 10 deliveries, he went inside. Hasn't returned. Kevin Anderson played a bad shot. Caught behind off Derval Green for one. Kevin Sinclair. Was bowled by Pete Salmon with a drifter. And then Ali Mohammed followed in a similar situation. Another drifting delivery from Salmon dislodging his stumps. And then Vera Sami Pramoy got a quick bouncer from OJ Shields for 15. And now the umpires are asking Savory about where he stands as to what is happening with him. It seems as if he has a hand problem as well. And he's going to soldier on here. Has to. Only the fast bowlers, Nile Smith and Isaiah Thorne to come. If, M if Imlak is unable to bat. Bowling figures, Marquino Minley, 8 overs, 3 maidens, none for 22. Derval Green, 10 overs, 4 maidens, 1 for 21. He had to leave the field. With an apparent foot injury. OJ Shields, 9 overs, 3 maidens, 3 for 27. Pete Salmon, 13 overs. A little bit loose in his last couple of overs. 2 maidens, 2 for 44 in his 13 overs. And Ramon Lewis hasn't been as economical or effective as yet. 4 overs, none for 25. He's going to continue to go to Keshmoti. Close, and he chops this one away. Comes off the pad of Romain Morris. And Kirk McKenzie can't stop two more runs. It's now 141, no, for six. And seems as if it came off the flap of the keeper's pad as he chopped that ball down. Gurakesh Moti, who is now up to what? 36 or 43. Go straight to Carlos Brown, did it? No, not by the impression of the umpires. Probably just came off the pad because it went straight to hand. Yeah, went straight to hand, but it was off the pad. And there's a shout of catch him. It goes towards where a leg gully would be. That is definitely leg buys. And it's spotted by umpire Christopher Wright as well. Roman Lewis would want to make a mark in this game here at Savina Park. Been on the expensive side of things. None for 28 so far. To his fifth over. And after this over, I'll take my leave. And you'll hear from the voice of Andrew Chung in the commentary box. So far, an outstanding batting performance by these two batters in the middle for the RP Eagles, staging what has been an 
Standing recovery. 81 run partnership so far. Of 106. Came at quick time though, Foster. Cut away again. That man has gone a lot finer. Very backward point it is. And that completes the 45th over. The score is 142 for 6. And it's getting closer and closer to another break. It's half an hour to T. Scorpions a little bit behind with their run rate. Kevin Savory 52. Good Akesh Moti on 37. Action, action resumes here at Sabina Park. And the happy Fuzzy is not so happy these days as uh, the Scorpions have let it slip a little bit in this second session. Credit to Moti and Savory, of course, uh, Fuzzy, for the work that they've done. Yep, it's been a very good partnership. A lot of cut shots involved as well. A lot of runs leaked between cover point and that third man region, which tells you that the Scorpions bowlers have been either too wide or too short. You need to get a little bit closer to Moti and Savory, the two left-handers. A change of ends as well for Pete Salmon. Guided away again. This is going to take some stopping. Not from Andre McCarthy, but the ropes. And it touches it just about now. 146 for 6. And Gurekesh Moti goes into the 40s. And as I've been saying, too short, too wide. Easy runs again for the Guyanese batters. Yeah, I don't think it's particularly wide. But uh, the pitch, of course, is flattened out now. So it's easy for the batters there. Because, I mean, that was a, a fifth stump line, which wasn't too bad. But um, Sam are not getting that extravagant bones that he was getting before. But I think this, this, uh, this partnership really highlights the, the lack of uh, patience from the guy on the top order. Cut That's away it. again. Good stop this time from McCarthy. Substitute fielder for Derval Green did extremely well there. Yeah, but it shows it shows the lack of uh, of character, I would say, from the guy on his top order in terms of riding out the spell from Derval Green and uh, OJ Shields, etc. At the end of the over, one forty-six for six after forty-six. Yeah, it is. You saw it. A couple of the shots were a little bit dubious, if we're being honest. Especially Kevin Anderson, who I think has a lot of experience in this team. Yeah, and he hasn't had a bad season at all. Maybe just came out there overly confident. Um, so Romal Lewis to continue. And Kemal Savory has really... Digging in here for his team. He has been yeah. a warrior, fighter for the Harpy Eagles. Yeah, he's shown the application. He's been struck twice, Fuzzy. Once by OJ Shields and once by Marquino Mendley. So he's wearing his wounds of battle as well. Um, faced a century of deliveries now. So excellent stuff by him. Cut away again. He loves that shot. That area has been plugged for now. Kurt McKenzie doing the feeling there. We think after 111 deliveries, 
you should know his strengths. It's obviously not bowling outside the off stump or too wide outside that off stump. But the other thing I think uh, that I've seen from Savory is that he's not much of a, a foot movement guy, but he trusts his hand-eye coordination for sure. Um, he has very, very fast hands, very, very strong hands, very, very good wrists. Yeah, very good wrists. The way how he hits the ball through the offside as well tells you that he has strong wrists. Opens up the blade a lot. Plays a little bit later than the others, the top order players. So he passes Carlos Brown at short leg. They're contemplating two. They're coming back for two. But Cannon to the wicket keeper. They get home. Not quick enough. Savory was. And that's good positive running from the left hander. Right. Set out for two. Good pickup. The throw. Not bad, but he was just too quick. Yeah. It wasn't a bad throw at all. Yeah, you're quite right. It was alongside the stumps. So just moving away a little bit from the stump so that uh, for Roman Morris to gather and then get it back onto the stumps gave them that opportunity to get home for the second. Really, really good pressure there. 148 for six after 47. At the end of that over. You feel as though the Harpy Eagles are getting to a square, a score where they can actually get themselves back into the game. Just based on what has happened with the Jamaica Scorpions batting all season, you feel as though anything close to 200 is something that you're in the game with. Not a great stat, but it is what it is. Turns that one onto the onside. Gurakesh Moti, who is now up to 42, who I said had a first class century. Well, I mean, th th that, that's been the weakness of the Scorpions. I think their bowling has done okay. It's their batting that really hasn't come to the fore. Um, we've had a couple of scores from Romain Morris. Even Pete Samad, you'd have to say, has, uh, has come on as well. Carlos Brown, a knock as well. Brandon King has a couple of scores. But nobody's really pushed on other than Morris, who was, uh, and even Morris was, was very hot and sweaty at the start. But uh, in the middle rounds, he's really kind of boiled down a little bit. Like, uh, like the Callaloo bush, <laughs> which would start off all big and fluffy and then shrink to almost nothing. <laughs> Sweep shot. There's a chance for Morris. He ballooned in the air. Couldn't get there. No. Chadwick Walton for sure had a century. <laughs> and that's the only centurion so far, yeah. I think, for the Scorpions all season. So that tells you what the batting has been like. And uh, Romain Morris with a 94 unbeaten as well. Sweep shot has been, they play, uh, uh, credit, to the, uh, credit to both batters here, especially Savory, they play the sweep shot quite well when they've been given the opportunity. Nicely driven, and there's a quick single here from Savory. He's really looking to pinch those singles. It reminds me a little bit of Vishal Singh in terms of how he scores. Kemal Savory, and Vishal Singh was a very outstanding player for the Guyana Jaguars then. It's still yeah. the Harpy Eagles. Earned a West Indies call up as well based on what he did throughout the years for the Guyana franchise. But at the end of the over, which is the 48th, it's 150 for six. Yeah, 150 up as well for the Guyana Harpy Eagles. So they would feel extremely pleased with that considering they were. 42 for 5 and then 61 for 6. A hell of a recovery here. Um, and they're actually not far away from a, a century partner, partnership as well. As you see the, wind, the trees swaying in the breeze here. Lovely, lovely breeze at Sabina Park. A bit of a sea breeze as well with the Kingston Harbour in the distance.
And we're going to see RBJ Mansing, is it? No, RBJ Mansing, I don't think, has had a bowl for the morning. Uh, It'll be interesting to see when he comes in. You're seeing a fielding change, actually. Or a fielder change, substitute fielder. Justin Beckford is on. But I'm disappointed with the Scorpions here, Fozzie, because they really had an opportunity to close out the Guyana innings. Driven nicely by Savrian, as you call it, another single. Yeah, they really, really just didn't put enough pressure on, on these two. They sort of allowed them to dictate terms. So, uh, simple, like, uh, a simple thing as putting a second slip in for Salmon and, uh, and Salmon when he was on top of his game and getting that ball to bounce a little bit more. Goes inside out. That's a terrific shot. That's a top class shot. Any number three in the world will be proud of that shot from Gudakesh Moti. Just gave himself a little bit of room to extend his arms through the ball. And with the spin, got it over the head of extra cover. And to the right of long off, who had absolutely no chance. That's a, to that's a top shot. 155 for six. Yeah, went the aerial route, but picked it nicely. Goes for the cut just to show. <laughs> he wants to show a versus alias go to Kesh Muti. And he thinks Tade Shandapal can do at the top of the order. I can do as well. Yeah. It's four runs away from a first class 50. I think that was probably what he was looking for. He's looking with a cheeky four down to third man. He's annoyed with himself for not getting it. But credit to him, 46 or 56 has not been a slouchy innings at all. In the air, Justin Beckford does the feeling, the substitute. A lot of shots scored in that region. No runs scored in that region from Moti and Savory between cover point and third man. Want a single. Beckford was quick onto it. Denies any opportunity to complete the 49th at 155-46. Something I've noticed throughout this guy and a Harp Eagles innings is their urgency to get singles, Fuzzy. There have uh, they've been a very number of close, run, uh, close calls in terms of run out. But there is an urgency to keep the scoreboard ticking as you see a cross-section of, uh, of the spectators here as well as some Jamaica Cricket Association officials there. That's former captain Paul Palmer Jr. You'd say he has given up on the game. He's now living in the United States. No. Oh. Captain but the Scorpions up to last year for a couple of rounds. Yeah. Has, I would say falling out of love with the game, but he has looked to other ventures. Yet, yet here he is in Sabina Park watching the yeah. game. So, I don't think you can blame a person for that at all. Maybe you just don't have that competitive nose and, and fight and, and other things anymore. Marquino Minley to continue. He's actually replacing Pete Salmon. And we'll be continuing with this ploy from round the wicket. Has done so since this morning when Tejan and Chandapal opened the batting. Bowling from round the wicket to Chandapal. Didn't get him out, obviously, because he hasn't taken a wicket as yet. Shields also operated from round the wicket to the left hander. Got him out. So... Seems as if it's a plan from the Jamaica Scorpions bowlers or they find it a little bit more comfortable. And it's probably best suited given that these two players love with outside the off stump like any other left-hander to be honest. But they have scored predominantly backward of point so far. And he's chopping that one away. 
Yes, he is, and it rolls into the boundary. Kemal Savory on cue, really. It's a no ball as well from Minley. So he started every every spell with a no ball. Yeah, it is a no ball, and another cut down there, as you mentioned. But again, this is this is what this is what you see from Savory. He's not using his feet at all. He's just throwing his hands at the ball. Uh, good hand-eye coordination, and then once he gets anything on that, with the pace of Minley. But the amount of, is the, is the nature of the wicket as well. It gives him enough time to do that as well. You see how late he plays it. That's a better line from Mindley. It's coming back in a little bit. So you have a man at backward point who's gone very fine. He's almost behind the man that is at Gully now, who is yeah. Kurt McKenzie. So the Scorpions, play, they, they're trying to plug that gap while using it as a weapon. So two men around there. Let's see if we can get it in that region for another boundary. He drives it up to mid on this time. The other thing with Mindy, as if you notice in his run-up as he's going around the wicket, he's going further away from the umpire. If, I think if he gets a little bit closer to the umpire uh, and, sh and, and almost goes for that wicket-to-wicket -wicket line, because that's what he wants. He wants it touching down on off. I think what he's trying to do as he goes wide off the crease there is that he wants to get it shaping towards the stumps with the angle. The ball going towards the stumps with the angle and then it shapes away late. But not seeing the movement as yet. Like that, that perfectly. Yeah, beautiful. On cue again. Yeah, that's a, I, I understand that's what he's trying to get for. But in terms of, you, you have to make sure. Yeah, that's, that, that's absolutely gorgeous. But what I'm saying is you can still get that angle if you just get closer to the umpire. And that would ensure that you don't give that width. Because you don't want to stray. Because the other thing, of course, with this angle, once the batter knows that it's on that fourth stump, fifth stump line, it's not going to hit the stump. Just leaves alone. Yeah. Or they can go at it. Right. And tickles that one fine. Brings him to 61 at 161 for six. 100 runs. The partnership now. And it has been a painful second hour for the Scorpions. And a lot of joy for the Harpy Eagles who are showing why they are the champions. Showing why they are a very difficult team to beat because they bat very deep. And this partnership encapsulates that. Go straight. You don't get straighter than that. And another half century for Gudakesh Moti. Pitched up by Barkino Minley. And what a pleasantly looking shot. <laughs> Dead straight. That's yeah. not what a fast bowler likes to see. He yeah, absolutely stand and deliver stuff here from good occasion mode. He brings up his 50 in style. 50 or 59 deliveries. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And this is from a number 9, 10, number 9 batter here, Fozzy. Short from Minley. You expected that. He wasn't pleased. It was wide. Driven right back over his head by the, the number 9 batter. Yeah. Had to let him know where he stands. Appropriate response, of course, you'd expect from a fast bowler. Well dealt with by Romain Morris. Had to get very high. Almost tipping that one over the crossbar. And he's just tickling that one that got a little bit big on him. And takes the score now to 167. For six. 50 overs bold here, Fuzzy. And boy, oh boy, what a fight back from the... Uh Dad!
Yeah, what a fight back here from the Harpy Eagles. There's been an absolutely topsy turvy game. The first half an hour was all school. Yeah, it's the second first class 50 for good occasion, Moti. It's been an absolutely topsy turvy inning because the first half an hour it was nothing going on. And then the Scorpions scream back in with wickets. The first session ended at 58 for 5. And now 167 for 6, just about 25 overs later. Maybe even less. Yeah, yeah, 109 runs added in the session. So they're scoring at a good rate. Yeah. Scorpions on the back foot. I think this is something that I've seen throughout the season for the Scorpions. Whenever they start to leak runs, there's no middle game for them when they're bowling. Don't find enough time to plug the gaps as well as... So while you're containing, you're still hunting the wickets. They, they don't have that yeah. within their game. And you've seen it throughout the, the course of the season. But again, this is what is disappointing. You have your team under pressure. You have them 61 for 6. You have them 42 for 5. Keep that pressure on. You don't let go of the pressure before before and let them get comfortable like that. We played again by Morty. But I mean, as you mentioned, Fuzzy, that this pitch after that first session, it gets easier for batting for day two. And that's what they're experiencing now, the Harp Eagles. They had a horrid, torrid first session. And now they're enjoying themselves. But again, the Scorpions seem almost stuck in their ways. They haven't tried anything different. They haven't, they haven't uh, tried to put pressure on them at all. And you want to see the fight and the courage and the determination of the Harpy Eagles and show why they are the champions and show that it's not going to be an easy street, even if you have us 42 for 5. It's now 167 for 6. Yeah, just Niall Smith and Isaiah Thorne to come, but the other situation is, as we see uh, Kingston Harbour in the background, and the Palisados with the vehicles driving to and from the airport in the distance. And that's the open ocean behind uh, that, uh, that road there. That would be the Caribbean Sea, I believe. Minley is going to continue. It's been a little bit off color in this contest, if we're being honest. None for 34 from his nine overs. Three spells, and he has started all spells with no balls. But as well as a little bit two-sided bowling in terms of yeah. either bowling too straight or bowling too wide. And not many deliveries beating the bat as well. Yeah, certainly. I think that is where the, the Scorpions might have to think about bringing the game back now is tie up run scoring at one end. Find that bowler who can bowl for a long time, who can bowl a long spell, doesn't concede more than probably two or three runs and over. At the moment, that, uh, that is only Duval Green. He's the only bowler that has, uh, has done that for Jamaica. Other than, of course, O.J. Shields, who's been excellent, I think. And what you probably want to do as well is find a plan for Savory who is the leading batter in the, in the partnership or the top-rated batter in the partnership, find a plan which suggests that he's limited when you're bowling in this specific area and force him to do something out of the ordinary. Out, out of the ordinary. Now he's just waiting every so often on a bad delivery which he knows is coming. And those bad deliveries tend to go towards where that ball just went which is through the backward point and gully region. So what you probably 
have to do is set a straight a field, have someone probably at a short mid wicket, and then you target that Midland off stump because we have seen his prowess is outside the off stump with anything that is short or anything that is too full. He's going to cash in on those. Well, we, we've discussed at length the, the angle that, uh, that Mindy is bowling from. And I think that's the right thing. But maybe if you can get him to play a little straight to try to, to flick through mid-wicket and then get the leading edge into those fielders at gully and backward point. And then if you stray, I mean, if you stray, you're going to get punished because you know that Savory will put it through with ease and happiness. Moti is more conventional player. Moti, I think, is a little bit straighter, even though he's, he looks to pick that gap, but he, he can't work it as well as Savory yeah. can. He plays with a straighter bat as well, as you said. Yeah. His bat comes a little bit from first and second yeah. slip. I think Savory's bat comes a little bit away from him. And he's again he tends to get the angle that on yeah. the bat as well when he plays the yeah. ball. But you'd expect that, given that Moti would be around a higher level of yeah. expertise. Yeah, but I think I think if you can get um, maybe if he comes uh, over the, over the wicket and, and tries to get maybe Savory playing around his pads, and then you get that leading edge, so you can get him either with the LBW decision if you can get him playing around his pads. That is something the Scorpions can work on. He's yeah. now pushing forward, but he's a little bit off balance as he plays that delivery to complete the 52nd over. I think that's a maiden, actually. It at, is a maiden. At 167 for six. Not bad from Minley in that over, starting to get his radar. But unfortunately, he seems to get his radar in the, in the second to last over before the end of his spell, which is uh, quite a shame there. Another shot of the Kingston Harbour in the distance. Seems like that man, Brahma Lewis, will be continuing from the southern end. He's bowled a marathon spell, but he hasn't really asked as many questions as he would have liked. He doesn't have a wicket either. This one is down the leg side and uh, past the short leg fielder. Well guided by Moti. And I think if this batting pier is smart, they will ensure that this over is a last over before t it's two minutes before the scheduled break so you don't expect the innings the over to last more than the two minutes or less than the two minutes driven pleasantly up to mid off moti is late to set off but there will be no problems because mid off was deep enough it's now 169 for six. The partnership is 108. Yeah, it's completely taken the, the wind out of the sails here for the Jamaica Scorpions. And they haven't really played a lot of aggressive strokes either. No. It's been good accumulating, good running, good manipulation of the strike. I wouldn't say the Jamaicans have done anything particularly wrong. They just haven't gotten it all right there, Fuzzy. Yeah. It's almost as if, okay, we put all our efforts into that first session and whatever happened, we're going to just let it meander in the second. I think at 169 for six, if you insert a team, you would probably take it. Yeah. In the wide scale of things. But yeah, I think based sure. on what has happened so far in this contest. 42 for 5, 61 for 6. I think the Scorpions would be bitterly disappointed that they haven't closed out the innings. Yeah. Or cut away again. Justin Beckford in the way. And given that Tevin Imlach was injured, I'm looking at trying to wrap up this innings as quickly as possible so he doesn't get a chance to come back to bat because he's one of the main players. Because that's the other thing. I mean, even when uh, when Savory and Puma all were sort of building something just a little bit, they had a plan. 
Yeah. They brought in they brought in a shield and immediately got that short delivery to, to put more who flicked it to that short leg region. And that is T on day one here of the six round clash. It's one hundred and sixty nine for six. A session won and dominated by the visitors, the guy in the Harpy Eagles. They lost the wicket in the second over of the session. That was Verasami Pramal to OJ Shields. But since then, he went for 15. But since then, it has been the Gudakesh Moti and Kemal Savory show. And both have crossed the half century path. And we'll be looking at a bigger picture when they come back out at 3 p.m. local time. Because they'll be looking at how they can get to a century apiece. And as well as get the Guyana Harpy Eagles to a position where they can ram home an advantage. But at this point, 169 for 6, you'd still feel as if the Scorpions are the dominant team. But another two hours to come. 37 overs maximum to be bowled here today at Sabina Park as we take a break from your coverage here in this six-round clash.
Action resumes here at Sabina Park. Uh, with the Guyana Harp Eagles, 169 for 6. The match will not start soon. It's the third session that will be going on. Marlon Pinnock in your company. Alongside myself, Andrew Chan. Pinny. With uh, some cinnamon roll and orange juice around his mouth. Licking his lips. <laughs> Very happy to come back here. Special good afternoon to our viewers, wherever you are in the world. It's a wonderful game of cricket so far being played here at Sabina Park. Kayan Arpa Eagles staging a recovery here. The one stage they were six to one for six. These two at the middle, Sheridan and Broughton, seven wicket partnership of 108 so far. Yeah, been an excellent recovery by Savory and Moti. It's good to see Moti spending some time at the wickets. I should say the wicket. Very crucial for the Guyanese. Faced a 71 delivery so far. Men League to continue. He's on target to start. <clears throat> Marquino Minley searching for a wicket here for the Scorpions. And also a wicket for himself as well. Been out of the Scorpions team for the past three rounds. Let's play the first and second round. Then got an injury and was out for three rounds. I was back into the Scorpion lineup for the sixth round here at Savina Park. But the Scorpions dominated the first session. And then after lunch, it's all Moti doing just for the Guyanese. As I mentioned, and Bruton seven wicket partnership. Over 108 runs. Brilliant recovery. It's the positivity from these two, uh, Penny, that has really gotten to me there. The urgency to look for runs. Um, <clears throat> the urgency to, to take on the Jamaicans, despite the fact that they were down and out. That's 61 for 6, Penny. And the score runs in quick time as well. Bit of late swing there, I think, from Mindley. Well, it's good to see Derval Green back on the park for the Scorpions at the mid on the region. Yeah. And just a plus for the Scorpions. And I know you're ranked pretty high in the Derval Green fan club. Not as high as you are with the Wicked Keepers Union, of course, Penny. Well, as I mentioned, Derval Green, for me, is a fighter. Mm. And as a, as a member of the Jamaica Defence Force, that certainly appeals to you. Gets this one through the extra cover region this time, Savory. And that's all along the ropes, all along the ground, I should say. And a beautiful four to start proceedings in the third session. A glorious shot there. Full face of the bat being presented. Is that like a freebie from Makina Minley? The partnership continues to increase here at Sabina Park. Up to 112. Courtesy of that cover drive there. From the man who is in tremendous form at the wicket. Batting like a master. For the RP Eagles. That close out the 54th at 173 for the loss of six. And look at the scoring shots 
from the RP Eagles. They are not trying to create any shots whatsoever. They just playing each ball on its merit. And once a bad ball presents itself, Andrew, they're quick to capitalize. Yeah, it's been it's been a good a good judgment <coughs> exhibited by both batters. <coughs> Muti, you'd have to say the more conventional batter, more street, savory looking to work the angles, work the gaps. Don't want to say Muti the more aggressive of the two batters as well. Likes to get butt and ball. Likes to be on the counter attack. As you say, that counter-attack is a fielder going back to long on now. A long on and long off in position, actually. He played a delightful shot over the uh, cover region, over the extra cover region, uh, in that last session. As well as played one straight back over the ball, as it as Oh, well. yes, against Mindley. Didn't enjoy that one at all, Marquino Mindley. I think <laughs> Not Moti, at all. <laughs> Moti definitely did. So he's shown his capability at the wicket, his Moti. Another run to the Harper Eagles total, led by signal by umpire Christopher Wright in this occasion. Taking a look at what's going on in other games around uh, the Cricket West Indies four-day championships. The Windward Islands Volcanoes, having been dismissed for 162 against the West Indies Academy. Uh, Joshua Bishop taking 4 for 24. Johan Lane, 3 for 30. The Academy have slipped to 69 for 3. Uh, taking a look at what is going on in uh, the Queen's Park Oval. Leeward Islands versus Barbados Pride. The Barbados Pride have moved on to 204 for 2 penny. So they're actually able to take a wicket or two there, the Hurricanes. Um, Craig Bradford is not out on 89. McCaskey got to his 100, 101. Raymond Rifa fell for just three. Jonathan Drake's in there with Bradford. Flicked in the air, but away from that short leg field, and he'll get a single here, Savory. And... Uh, Something that doesn't bode well for the Jamaica Scorpions. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, after being in a spot of bother against the CCC, have progressed to 264 for three. Jason Mohammed, 128 not out. Amir Jangu, 74 not out, after 47 at the top from Keon Otley. His second century is Jason Mohammed, off this West Indies Regional Championship for 2024. Yeah, brilliant batting from him there. Thick outside edge, and it uh, fell just short of Mansing, who's diving there away at first slip to end the over. 175 for six, not a bad over from Ramal Lewis to start. So Jason Mohammed. In this encounter, you're going to see any signs of leg spin. And this time it's going to be Abhij Mansing from this old commentary box end. I, I'm surprised that the Jamaicans have taken so long to bring him on, to be honest, Penny. Um, he's a player that always causes a bit of damage and, and, and is very, very economical as well. And... Uh, I think Savory and, and Moti are extremely comfortable with what the Jamaicans are offering now. I would like to see the, the reintroduction of O.J. Shields. Um, we might see Duval Green again get a spell this evening as he's back on the field as well. 
think OJ Shields was the bowler who caused early problems this morning. Picked up few wickets to his name. Terrible Green bowl exceptionally well. Makina Minley has just been on the ups and downs. But he came back in the second spell. Bowl of fairly decent spell. Romelu is not at his best, Andrew. Yeah. But it's good to see Abhijay Mansing being introduced into the attack. By Captain Brandon King, who is desperate for a wicket here. So far, this partnership, as we mentioned, blossoming here at Spina Park. hundred runs well i think the partnership has already blossomed penny it's uh it's going into a full-blown orchard at this point it's up to the jamaicans to stop it before it turns into a whole savannah well the right person to try to stop this partnership getting more out of hand is abhijay mansing He's on the money immediately. First delivery, a bit of a loosener, but uh, the second one, he's got it on point. Good to see what is in the middle. Spending time in the middle. And that's why they are doing a great job for the RB Eagles. A lot of bottom hand there from Gudakesh Moti. From uh, Saver, I should say. So far, Abhijay Mansing on the money, we'll see. Not causing any problem whatsoever. For the RB Eagles, Butters in the middle. He's doing a fabulous job for the country. Look at how OJ Shields this morning. He's bailing, bowling with a lot of pace here at Savannah Park. And hence why I have three wickets to his credit and three very important wickets. Excellent first over completed by Abhijay Mansing. It's a maiden. 175 for six. The guy in the RP Eagles after lost the toss and was sent into bat. There were all sort of bother this morning. Immediately after Brandon King won the toss, he decided. So we're gonna take first ball here to Bayna Park. They lost their first wicket on 11, second one on 12, third on 13, fourth on 42, the fifth on 42, and of course this the last wicket to fell today fell on 61. And since there, on broken seven wicket partnership, and now the score is 175. For the same six years of Bina Park. Easily single this top down to the fine league region. Scamping through for another single. This is excellent batting here by these two batters in the middle. Doing just for the RP Eagles. And a wonderful recovery. As I mentioned early, a beautiful sunny afternoon here at Sabina Park. A lovely breeze blowing across the ground as well. Just a handful of spectators here. Ooh. 
Just jumping shot off that short leg feeler. It's going to be Buchanan on debut for the Scorpions. At home, where he plays his club cricket here in Jamaica. Must be a wonderful opportunity for him here at Sabina Park in front of his home crowd. And also Brandon King, the captain of the Scorpions, the captain of Kingston when he's around. It's only shot. Cracking that ball out to the man at backward point seemed to be Kirk McKenzie. Not a happy. Thumpy missed out on a boundary. Short from Ramal Lewis. Begging to be hit. Just find that feeler at backward point. This one is clipped behind square. The cross of one. Will they think about the second? Carlos Brown is very quick and does exceptionally well to prevent only a single. Excellent work by Carlos Brown at the completion of the 56th. Shot of some spectators here. So enjoying their time here at Sabina Park. And why not on a Wednesday afternoon after work coming to support the Scorpions? Was on the front foot earlier this morning, the Scorpions. Afternoon session goes to the Cayenne Harpy Eagles. Thanks to a partnership worth over 100 runs between these two at the middle. Stage a recovery. And a strong recovery. J. Mansing getting ready to bowl his second over of this contest so far. First was a meeting. Well, this time he goes over long on. Yes, it is. All the way for six. So greetings to Abhijay Mansing, his first delivery in the second over, a flighted delivery. And my word, he latched on to that very quickly. I hit that ball over, wide long on for six. This is excellent counter-attack here by the Cayenne Harp Eagles, batters in the middle. So the score on the screen here. Some difficulties here at Spina Park. Score is actually 184 for six years at Spina Park. If you're just joining us, the Scorpions, they won the toss this morning. Decided to bowl first in the sixth run. Counter at Spina Park. Scorpions, they won the first session quite easily. Picking up five wickets before lunch. And then after that, it's all the Cayenne Harp Eagles dominated. After that, two batters in the middle, both of half centuries to their name. Scorpions gone flat out there on the field as if they are just hoping for something to happen. Good delivery. Pitch. Spun away from the left hander to complete another over. The RP goes up to 184 
for the loss of six. Ramon Lewis haven't picked up a wicket in this country so far. They want to break this partnership for the Scorpions. And the Scorpion desperate for a breakthrough here at Savannah Park. It's a lovely Wednesday afternoon for cricket as well. Beautiful sunshine. Shed of any showers here at Savannah Park. So Rama Lewis. A hundred and eighty four for the loss of six here at Savannah Park. Some difficulties here with the screen as you see. Score on the screen is wrong here at Savannah Park. Actual score is a hundred and eighty four for six. This one is turned behind square by Moti. They cross over one and they are back for a second run. This is excellent cricket being played by the Guyana Harpy Eagles so far, Andrew. Yeah, I mean it's 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 been absolutely amazing. I think they've done they've done really really well to drag themselves up to 175 for six. And I think if they get anywhere close to 250, the Jamaicans will be in a spot of bother. Um, of course, with Purmon, Moti himself, and Sinclair. Uh, the spin trio for sure. Almost a, th a thousand wickets between these three. Mm. <laughs> Goes to show. We'll put, them all, we'll put them all having at least half of them. Indeed. He was looking a single there. That quite rightly sent back by his partner at the completion of another over 186 for the loss of six here at this wonderful venue, the home of cricket, Sabina Park. Yes, it is indeed the home of cricket, Sabina Park. We see a close up shot of the Weeper representative taking in uh, the action from outside the commentary box. Probably texting to let his weeper associates know that uh, Moti and uh, Savory are good players. 74 for Savory and it's 55 for Moti. Abhiji Mansing back for his third over. Slapped down the ground, but only as far as middle. Scorpions on the field so far, Andrew. It's been on the flatter side of things. Not been able to create any opportunity to a left handers in the middle for the Arpers RP Eagle. Doing an outstanding job in the middle. Pleasant looking drive down to yeah. a long on area this time. This is good cricket being played by the RP Eagles. Yeah, at, at this point, I mean, they don't really need to attack any bowlers. They don't need to put them off. They just need to, to work them around. RBJ Mansing is uh, definitely one of the more dangerous bowlers for Jamaica Scorpions. It's, it's amazing that he, he's taken so long. He didn't come on until the 55th over penny.
slapped again and it's uh, equal cricket by the two batters. A single down to long off, a single down to long on. Well, Moti, this time around, don't want to feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So this time, Moti goes towards the ons offside. <laughs> Excellent cricket all around. Again, very, very good cricket here. Just that easy single. No pressure here for the guy and a half eagles. They're so easy in the eye. Like taking a candy from a baby. These two batters in the middle. Doing a tremendous job. For the RP Eagles at the moment. Reminding you if you're just joining us. The last wicket fell at 61. And from there on. It's all these two in the middle show. For the RP Eagles at the completion of another over. It's 189. For the loss of six. One eighty nine for six, some thirty overs left in today's play here, Penny. As it just approaches three twenty five, three twenty six in Kingston. Ramal Lewis continues with his marathon spell. He's done an okay job, Ramon Lewis. Hasn't done a spectacular job. Hasn't taken a wicket. And this is what the Scorpions need at the moment. A wicket. Yeah. But, I mean, of course, it's a, it's a pressure that builds that takes wickets in the four-day game. And uh, Lewis really hasn't build, built that pressure as he would have liked. 12 overs uh, for 42 runs. Not bad returns by any means. I think he sort of, he sort, in a way, he sort of sums up what, what had been offered from the Jamaican bowling today, which is just okay. Uh, they were really spectacular in, in, in terms of using the pitch and the, using the moisture in the pitch in the first session. They just let it get away from them here. I think not long from now, we're going to see a reintroduction of OJ Shees in the attack. So far, being the pick of the bowlers for the Scorpions, a few wickets to his name. And your good friend Duval Green as well. I, I would expect him to get a boost. Based on all these two butters batting in the middle. Seem like an easy wicket to button here at Spina Park at the completion of the 61st. 188 for the loss of six. So she is he got Two for 27 from nine. Beat someone two for 50. Terrible Green had a wicket as well. Abhijay Mansing will start his fourth over. And none for nine so far. He was introduced very late into the attack by Brandon King. One thing for sure though, Brandon King rotate his bowlers very well so far after being given the captain. The Kimal Savory is 27 years old, hails from Guyana. Um, 
He does have a century at the first class level, just one. It's 101 not out. He actually played for the uh, West Seas Emerging players as well. He only played 10 matches in terms of first class matches. Uh, 397 runs. Actually only made his debut last year. Appeal for a leg before. And it's been given. That is the end of the partnership. Gudekesh Moti falls LBW to RBJ Mansing, but it's an excellent innings here. 189 for seven, the fall of the seventh wicket. Excellent delivery by RBJ Mansing. Just playing away from his body was Moti. Excellent wicket keeping by Morris. And a very important wicket for the Scorpions as well. This partnership worth over 130 something runs. And this man, Abhijay Mansing, came in the attack. Took him 19 deliveries to get this breakthrough. And what a delivery. Oh, it's actually a court behind. My apologies. I thought it was an LBW. <laughs> but uh, caught by Morris, well bowled. And it's good to see that Tevin Imlock is coming back out. Uh, he retired Hurt, having come in at the number three batter. Um, after I think he was struck by Mindley. It was either Mindley or Shields. So Imlak has come out. And it's a... Uh, I'm glad for Kimal Savory particularly that he doesn't have to try to shepherd the strike to get to 100. He has a capable batter in the form of Tevin Imlak with him. Captain Imlak should be thinking here to build the next big partnership for the RP Eagles. Should be thinking 250 on beyond here. This nice batting shot here at Sabina Park. Almost every game played here at Sabina Park. All the teams scored over 300 runs, Andrew. Yeah. Just goes to show how good this batting shot is at Sabina Park. But again, it only took. Mansing 20 deliveries to get a wicket penny. Why did King wait so long? When he saw that Ramal Lewis, or when he saw that Pete Salmon wasn't as effective in the second, um, the second session as he would have hoped. I wonder if, if Avijay Mansing is at his fullest fitness. I see him standing at slip all day. Well played by Imlak. Off the mark immediately. Turns it down to a backward square leg for a single. Feel has to run all the way off the boundary. Well, Imlak is up to two. Scored a run this morning before he retired Earth. And the very first delivery. After making his engine towards the wicket, he got a single. And a magnificent partnership has come to an end, Andrew. Yeah, it really was an excellent partnership. A 129 run partnership for the seven to Kid Penny. A very, very important one for the guy and a half Eagles as well. I realize so far in this spell from Abhijay Mansing, he is consistently hitting good areas. And hence why he got his reward of the wicket of Moti, who was well set. Pulled nicely down to that long on field again, and he'll get a single there as Kimon Seiri keeps the scoreboard ticking over his scoreboard as well. 77 as they close in on the 200 mark, they're 190 for seven, Penny. 
indeed wonderful recovery by the Guyana RP Eagles recovered very strong from 61 for 6 and now they are 190 for 7 129 seventh wicket partnership and really stood tall for the Guyana RP Eagles and this is why the RP Eagles dominated regional cricket for a number of years I think they won some 23 titles mm. yeah the uh, Guyana RP Eagles have uh, enjoyed their, their, their stint at the top might change this season more than likely will change to be honest but uh, it's all to play for here as we see of course the hurricanes who are top of the table are, are struggling against the barbados pride penny hmm. And just past that first left fielder goes down, it will go down as a difficult chance. But Imla gets four and uh, feeling for that one outside the off stump. Ramal Lewis gets an edge and it's just past Mansinger. But I mentioned to Fozzie, I think I, I, I can't remember if it was earlier with you, I would either you or Fozzie, but Mansing doesn't stay very low at slip, um, he comes up a little bit too early. I think if he had stayed low, he might have been able to get that one. Because by the time the ball is coming, is delivering the ball, Manzing is already on his way back up. Well, this will this be costly for the Scorpions? You realize Imlock pushing to the deliveries rather than playing with a soft hands. And hence why that man at the short leg region is very very important the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force have progressed to 305 for 300 not out for Amir Django as well so that middle order for the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force really doing some excellent work there um, 305 for 3 against the CCC Lewis seems to be enjoying bowling to the right-hander a lot more than the lefties. At the end of that over, 195 for seven. Good over from Rama Lewis asking questions. So look at Captain Devin Imlock, first-class career, playing his 21st first-class game. Across at the Queen's Park Oval, Craig Bradford has moved on to his 100, 108 of 255 deliveries. A typical Craig Bradford his innings. His second of the season. Yeah. First one was against the Scorpions here at Sabina Park. Oh, my. Penny was up close and personal with that score. <laughs> well, were we were at Chedwin. We were at Chedwin for that game, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. J. Mansing getting the important breakthrough for the Scorpions. Break that partnership of over 129 runs. Slap through the extra cover region. Got a piece of that at Kemal Savory. And that was a delightful four. That carries him up to 82. And that crosses the 200 mark for the Guyana Harper Eagles. No, actually, my apologies. They're on the 199. My max is <laughs> off, a little bit off. A shot of authority there by the solid left-hander. It was hit with ferocious yeah. power. The man at mid-off have no chance whatsoever. And this man is doing a fantastic job for the Guyana Harper Eagles so far. As you mentioned, 199 
Yeah. For the loss of seven. Yeah, our producer and genius, Dylan Sharma, was shaking his head at me for that horrible match. He's giving me an F for that. <laughs> and that means a failure. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. He just sipped his hot drink and spat it out with disgust. I think he's enjoying his coffee all day. Yeah. Loves his coffee, man. The man of few words is Dylan Sharma. See, carrying his kettle here at Sabina Park as well. Yeah. Good oh, delivery. beautiful. That is a beautiful delivery from RBJ Mansing. Good response. But it was always going away from the stump. So as a body, if you know where your off stump is, Andrew, yeah. you don't have to play after those deliveries. Yeah, he certainly doesn't. Gets the cut now, but he doesn't get it past that fielder. Just there at a short backward point. Thought that ball was too close for him to play that cut shot. No, but according to Fuzzy, that's a, that's a, that's his meat and drink shot. That's his corner shot. Bread and butter. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Just like that. Oh, in, in Jamaican parlance, the bun and cheese. I know you enjoyed and you enjoyed your your bun and cheese for Easter, Penny. I definitely did. Oh, good delivery! Squaring the batter up to complete the sixty fourth. Just lucky got some batter on on that <laughs> one. I was looking to turn that ball towards the onside. Some leading edge there. To complete over number 64 at 199 for the loss of seven. A shot of the regulars from the Kingston Cricket Club there. Enjoying the breeze and uh, obviously the cool beverages on mm. offer there. Having a chat as well. Mm. <laughs> but that last delivery from Mansing, it's, it's something that I haven't seen the Jamaicans do. I wanted to, the fast bowlers to to do it as well because Savory is obviously very good outside his off stump. We haven't seen many leg side shots at all. Have a look at it again here. And it, it, when you have him trying to play around his pad, he definitely seems to be in some problem. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, it, I think it's a ploy that they will really need to work on uh, the Jamaicans. Tevin Imlach in strike, on strike for Roman Lewis. Ooh. Getting the ball to spin, getting the ball to bounce. And this occasion by Rama Lewis. Yep. And none for 47 so far into his 15th. Do you want to make a mark here in this six round fixtures at Sabina Park? It's a good single. Excellent run in between yeah. the wickets by the RP Eagles. And that's a 200 up for the Guyana RP Eagles. That is indeed. Master Penny on his math, 199 plus 1 equals 200. It is indeed. Indeed. I think the guy on the Arpa Eagles batted very well to get to this milestone here of 200 runs. At one stage, you were saying it doesn't seem like they're going to get 100 runs. Indeed. Well, they doubled that here at Sabina Park. And thanks to this man. For sure, Kim Wall Savory, 82 of that 200. Ably assisted by Gouda Keshimoto, who scored 58 as well. Flick nicely. You'll get that fine. Will they come for two? He's interested in two. Imlak is not. Fielder comes very quickly off the boundary. That looks like the young Beckford. Slap that square, does Imlak. Will that run to all the way to the ropes? The ball looks like it's going to be winning the race. It does indeed. Hit that square. Hit that nicely. That's four for Tevin Imlak. And 50 conceded for Ramal Lewis as well. That's his first boundary. Kevin Imlak. Flighted delivery outside the off stump. Easy pickings for Kevin Imlak. He won't miss out on that. 
205 for the loss of seven. The Guyana RP Eagles doing a wonderful job here in the six round fixtures here at Savannah Park. What a recovery! This is what we want to see in this regional cricket the fight, the commitment at the wicket on the field to complete over number 65. At 205 for the loss of seven. So OJ Shields will be the man to take up the mantle from this or commentary box end. If you're familiar with Sabina Park, it's a north stand. There's a Courtney Wall gent. Yeah, it's that man OJ Shields. Uh, I think it's much needed from the Jamaica Scorpion. Maybe a little too late. So maybe Mansing is going to come from the southern end now, which will be interesting to see what happens. But there's a theorem that says it's better to be late than never. And OJ Shields with 3 for 27 so far would want to get a 5 wicket all yeah. for the Scorpions. And also for himself who is desperate yeah. for some wickets in this year's regional championship. So far played 8 games at this regional level. And 16 wickets to his name. Uh, he's been in and out because of injury, OJ Shield, but I think we, we've seen the best of him today in this uh, nine-over spell at his bowl so far. Let's see how he comes back in his third. Short delivery. A wild swing at that one from uh, Savory. Well, I think Imlak is going to go down and have a word with him, in my opinion, tell him, hey, you're closing in on 100, brother. Don't let it go. Yeah, the very first delivery from Jay Shields in his third spell. And a shot like that from Imlak. Not acceptable at this level with two men out for that hook shot. There's a man at the fine leg boundary and also a deep backward square. I think he was hoping to place it in front of square. That's well bowled. A good uh, follow up delivery from uh, Shields. So just a slip and a goal in place for Jay Shields. I do like the positioning of that gully penny because uh, as Fozzie said, he's, he's gotten run through that third man area. So there's the, the gully and then the sort of backward point as well. And the point is well behind. Yep. Some aggression being shown here by OJ Shields. Getting, getting good pace and bongs out of this wicket here at Spina Park. Very strong lad, Andrew. Mm. Tends to generate pace on any wicket given to him. Want to get his career best today at Spina Park. You can Hello. see a spectator there just having a nap in the north stand. Should see the George Headley stand there. And this one is tear delicate down to the third man boundary for another boundary. Mm, cheeky shot there. But four runs nonetheless to his credit. Just using the pace of that ball. So you can see on the replay. Excellent yeah. cricket. Yeah, those fast hands and those strong wrists opening the face of the bat there. Staring that down to third man. And they've leaked a lot of runs in that area, as Fozzie has uh, pointed out. Again, Savory and uh, against. Moti as well. 
Just using the pace of that one. Clever batting from Savory. Showing great experience. Didn't try to overheat it. That Shot class at the wicket so far. It's up to 87. Again looking for that gap. This time going a little bit wider. I think he's eyeing up his second regional century. Another shot of that spectator at the George Edley stand. Having the whole stand over there for himself, Andrew. Indeed. Joe. Should be very comfortable. Has Talk been about a king size bed. <laughs> And he looks very, very comfortable indeed. Eh? Why not with cool breeze blowing over there as oh well? Oh dear, definitely. Good delivery. There's a chance for a run out. Excellent response there by the captain, Kevin Imlock. And this is the sort of cricket you want to be playing at this level to complete another over. Good single, excellent cricket at 210 for the loss of seven. Yeah, I think even more importantly, it gets uh, Savory, another run to move closer to that 100 mark. He's on to 88 now. 88 of 188 deliveries. It's been a wonderful innings from him. And rem remember, he came to the wicket. The guy in the Harper Eagles was in a spot of bother. <laughs> more than a spot of bother, indeed. <laughs> And there's a shot of uh, one of the groundsmen, or they're doing some work there at the Kingston Cricket Club. Yeah, they're actually doing some yeah, painting as painting, well. Painting, yes. Hmm. Pretty up you know, the home of cricket here at Sabina Park. Yes, Beautiful indeed. Kingston Cricket Club. Lovely ground, Sabina. I, I like this. Uh, th th this is the sort of feel that you, you didn't see from for when Moti and um, and uh, and Savory on the attack here. There's a slip. There's a leg slip as well as that short leg fielder penny. A lot of batters are close around the bat. A lot of fielders, I should say, close around the bat. Yeah, Ramalou is getting the ball. It's a chance for a run out. Well, 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 Carlos Brown, he went with the foot instead of trying to pick that one up. But good running, good pressure there. Savory gets a single to move on to 89. And that's what I like to see. You, you, you have the fielders closer on the bat, and the, the batters are going to do whatever they can to get those fielders away from the bat. Excellent understanding between the two batters in the middle as well. Immediately. After playing that shot, you could see Kevin Imlak calling through. So, so, so the sweep shot does Imlak, gets that one uh, fine enough for another single. You're continuing to accumulate here. Reminding you of joining us, this is a West Indies Regional Championship being played here at Sabina Park. Round 6 action, Skyana Harper Eagles against the Scorpions. Scorpions, they won the toss this morning. And add the Harper Eagles in lot, a lot of bother at 61 for 6. And then a wonderful recovery of 129 partnership. Set the Harper Eagles back on the front foot at the completion of the 67th uh, 212 for the loss of seven and it's drinks here at Sabina Park
Action resumes here at Sabina Park with the Guyana Hop Eagles progressing to 212 for 7. This is after they were 58 for 5 at the end of the first session and 169 for 6 at the end of the session. Second session, halfway through the third and final session of the first day in this round six match. Jamaica Scorpions having asked the Harpy Eagles to have a bat. Short delivery to start with by OJ Shields and it's a wide. As I welcome back uh, Jerome Foster, aka the Fuzzy Man, into the commentary position. Despite the fact that he's been here just about as long as I am, he still smells absolutely wonderful. Then if he had a chance to go and take a shower or rinse. I don't know why, but he doesn't seem to break a sweat at all, this fuzzy. Because I'm calm. Oh, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Let me. Well, what is not calm is that the scorpions are struggling to get those last set of wickets. Oh, yes, indeed, here, fuzzy. Edged, and that's through and past Remain Morris. I think he got a hand to it. It won't run to the ropes. Um, and they only get one for it. It's a despairing die, but it really should have been taken there, I think. Yeah, as if he started to move to his left, so the weight was not transferred. Ended up that he was diving late towards the ball. Let's look at his footwork here. Yeah, started to go a little bit to his left. So the weight didn't transfer and ended up lunging at the ball. That should have been a regulation catch. Yeah, he should have taken that one Didn't either go way. far away from him. Footwork letting him down there. And it's another mischance for the Scorpions. Incidentally, Tevin Imlat didn't seem interested in running back. <laughs> Remember, he was hit on the, the finger by... OJ Shields earlier this morning. That could have easily been two, but he opted not to return. Savory, 193 balls, 89. Down the leg side, and it's a no ball this time by OJ Shields. Probably annoyed with that last one. Feel as though the energy has been sapped away from the Scorpions' bowling effort. Looking to see how far he went over. Yeah, good call on by Wilson. Could see it there that it was a long way over. Three for 35 for OJ Shields. Easily could have been four for 33. Savory hasn't looked as expressive against the pace as he has against the spinners has a six to his name a couple of lovely drives off the spinners one exquisitely off uh, abhijay man singh through the extra cover region but 215 for seven represents a good position for the home team it's just that you know where the, the Harp Eagles are coming from. Gets a single here to take him into the 90s, does Kimal Savory. It's been hard to classify his innings. I, I, I would just think it's a, it, you could just, it's a rare god fighting innings. That's all you have to say. That it hasn't been, he's had some excellent shots. I think was one particular punch down the ground that was absolutely beautiful. Um, and uh, the, of course, peppering that third man with, with deft touches. Couple of nice drives through the cover. But it's really just been a fighting innings from uh, Kimon Savory. He certainly deserves three figures. And uh, you could say dogged innings as well. A lot of tenacity yeah. in this effort. Had to fight his way through. Edged again, but guided this time down to that wide third man area. A despairing dive to the left by Kirk McKenzie in the gully region. Couldn't get anything on it. And another four for Tevin Imlak. That was controlled by Imlak. Imlak, it was aerial for a while, but it seemed as if he was in control, as if he wanted to play the ball there. It's not a safe shot by any stretch of the imagination, or not a shot that you would really uh, ask to be played regularly. Yeah. But he was in control for most of it. 
I think, but what I've enjoyed from this innings from the Harpy Eagles, of course, their top order really didn't click at all. But their manipulation of the strike, Fozzie, it's something that, that's good to see. Their urgency in running singles and uh, playing the balls into gaps, getting, getting, uh, getting the ball into gaps for runs. Because I, I don't think it was until about the seventh or eighth over, maybe even the tenth, that they actually got a genuine boundary off the bat. Good stuff here from OJ Shields, but again, it's a no ball. He's just striving a little too hard here. Of course, uh, should have gotten a wicket probably with a second delivery that he bowled. And every time the ball hits the bat, Imlak removes his right hand off the bat, showing some discomfort still with that area. Remember, he had to retire hurt early this morning at 13 for three. Got hit on the, on the hand. So he's still feeling some pain. But he's still fighting on. He's battling on for his team. And he must feel proud of where they are from where they started. Well, I think the other thing is after the fall of Moti, it's just Niall Smith and Isaiah Thorne to come. So he probably at least wanted to be there to help uh, guide Savory to his 100 at least. And then whatever happens after that is, is a pretty much bonus. And his... His presence is also important to Savory because this is a young guy on a team. He's, Imlak scored a century in the third round against the Volcanoes. And there was an early delivery in this spell from Shields where he bowled a quick bouncer. Mm. And Savory flashed at it. Was in no man's land, really. He was in the 80s. And then a couple of words from Imlak is saying to him, you can easily duck that. You're not going to get anything from that. And since then, he hasn't tried to play a shot like that. I'm just saying that po possibly, had he not been out there, he would have been probably tempted to play that short delivery, take on those short deliveries some more. Who knows? But it's just a difference when you have leaders in and around you as an inexperienced player. You bounce energy and bounce responses of them you see former reggae boy uh lovell palmer in the background there a lot of level of maturity is good to see however you look at it i think we're gonna have a change in bowling it looks like buchanan i'm yeah. not certain both off spin mm. they really need to try something here the jamaica scorpions pete salmon really not as effective as uh, as we'd have liked but I think uh, I think Salmon didn't adjust his game well enough, Fozzie. Okay, yes, he's a strike bowler. Yes, he, he's he's accustomed to taking wickets, but he needed to change his game. Flick past that short leg in the air. He'll get a fortuitous single here, does Savory. That could have been a dream debut for yeah. Buchanan. It hasn't been his day in the field. Missed a chance early. Created one there to Carlos Brown, but went to his left. And he has taken some good ones under the lid, Carlos Brown. Yeah. So that one was a difficult one. But he's, he almost allowed his captain to look like a genius there. 91 to Savory. Coming off a very short run up. Up by right, having some issues with where Wakanan is ending up on the pitch, running straight down the wicket. He goes to inspect it again. saying he's a little bit more pleased with where he's finishing off his delivery stride. Took a couple of steps to his left. I 
Gets the sweep out and well fielded there. That was uh, to that man. Cook McKenzie in a flash there. Did really well there. Just a backward square leg to pull that out. Imlach looks a little bit better now when he's facing the spinners or the spinner. No effects of that hand injury. And the score is 2-2-2 two, two, two for 7 at the end of 69 overs. Another bad first over from Buchanan. I'm not sure if he will continue. If it was just uh, maybe a change of ends or something like that. Just uh, shuffling the pack a little bit there. I think we, that's a member of the Kingston Cricket Club, more than likely going for net sessions in the back. It might be a younger player. Yeah, well, he plays for Kingston. That's Andre Bailey, but he's part of the training squad for the Scorpions. Indeed. Another over here coming for Shields. I think this is his third over in this spell, which is his third spell today. has bowled with good pace throughout the day, especially that second spell. I thought he was extremely quick in that second spell. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's amazing. Even though he took wickets with the first spell, he was even more impressive with the second spell because I think it was more, it's more his control that, uh, that really impressed me. Um, yes, he has the pace. Yes, he has the bouncing delivery. Well played by Savory, riding this one, and then we'll move up to 92. <clears throat> you mentioned, of course, uh, with the observant and keen eyes eyes of a falcon, Jerome Foster, that uh, Tevin Imlach isn't as comfortable facing the paces with that slight injury on his right hand. As a pacer, would you definitely target his hands? Looks comfortable on that back foot. Looks easy behind the ball, picking up the line of the ball as well, and the length. Mm -hmm. Got the edge of a delivery that was on a good length, probing length on and about that off stump, searching for answers. But you expect him to go short again to Imlak at some point, just for that fear factor. Gets with this time and he's able to punch that through the cover off the back foot and that will go all the way to the ropes of four. Loose delivery there by Shields. It stood up nicely for him, like, and he punished it. Too easy. Too wide. Didn't even have to throw his arms at it. He could control it because not much pace got onto that delivery. And he just picked the gap perfectly. No better side for a batter. And when you pierce that gap and the ball runs into the boundary, it takes him up to 17. Importantly, the Harpy Eagles are getting closer and closer. Well, he's on 21 now. He's getting closer and closer to that batting point, which is 250 runs. And they were well away from that earlier this morning. That's a good delivery from Shields, getting a little bit closer to that off stump. But I think this game sort of, sort of typifies how Scorpions have played throughout the season. Yes, they've had their moments of brilliance.
but they just haven't had the mental fortitude to see out the game as best as as, as they would have liked. Because I mean, you have the talent in your in your in your batting lineup. You have the likes of Cook, McKenzie. You have Jimmy and Blackwood, uh, Brandon King coming back into the fold. Carlos Brown has a couple of scores. Yeah. And in addition to that, your tail end has been, has been wagging for you, Romain Morris, Abby J. Mansing, Pete Salmon. No consistency throughout. Haven't played a, a complete game. Beautiful delivery there. That's the length that he has to operate with, especially given that Imla is not really interested in coming too far forward. And he's just poking at that. Luckily, it didn't take the edge. And that completes what? The 70th over? At 227 for seven. And Shields completing his 12 for three for 46. But I agree with you. As we. Dad! Dad! Is that real? Cannon is continuing. Been straight so far with his line. Sees that the Scorpions trying to get to that second new ball as quickly as possible. Another inside edge there. And he'll run for a single. Dealing only in singles is Kimon Savory, but either way, he gets up to 93. And he's faced 200 deliveries here. Excellent stuff from him. Captain Brandon King is off the field for Andre McCarthy. Justin Beckford has been on the field for Derville Green for some time now. Green came back after tea, but he had to change his plans. Remember, he suffered a foot injury in the second session. Mm -hmm. Went to field a delivery and turned his ankle. It's unfortunate for Jamaica. Derville Green certainly one of their hardest working players. Oh, going for the cut shot there. Extra bounce from Buchanan. Pulled out of that one, Imlak. Well taken by the wiki keeper as well. well Good done. glove work. Only one from that over. And it's 228 for seven. Tidy stuff so far from Buchanan. And he's, he's created some problems as much as he's a part-time bowler. Looks like Mansing will take up the mantle from uh, OJ Shields. So it's obvious now that the Scorpions not just wanting to get through their overs as quickly as possible. They want to also have their fast bowlers fresh for the possibility of taking that new ball, which is due after 80 overs. It's been a long day, energy sapping day as well. Yeah, definitely. Still another 19 overs left in the day's play.
and we approach just about 4.18 p.m. in Jamaica. Swiped into the leg side and another single there to a wide long on for Savory. He was interested in two. I don't think the two was on. And he's going to do this in singles now, I think. And he has all the time in the world to do it. Because... I don't think Tevin Imla plans to take any risks. And Savory, with that man pushed back at long on, the possibility that he can just earn those six runs in that area. A lot of protection from Mansing in the offside. Here's a short extra cover, regular cover, a deep fielder. Uh, sweeping as well. well. Played by A Black. showing that he's not interested in coming forward. I'm going to be playing from the surface. That's a safe option on a day one surface. And maybe it is that he's not comfortable against leg spin and he wants to pick the spinner from what is happening on the pitch. The other thing is, I mean, he's playing him under his eye as well, which is, which is excellent. He's a his defense looks solid. But he's moving across his stumps a lot, so he's have to re make sure he doesn't lose his uh, trajectory and uh, his line there at the end of the over. Good over for Mansing, 229 to 7. It really is the most interesting scorecard you've ever seen there. In terms of the fall of wickets, first wicket at 11, second at 12, third at 13, the fourth at 42, the fifth at 42 as well. As we see a father and his uh, daughter just enjoying the cricket here. The sixth wicket at 61 and the seventh at So together, these two have actually put on 40 runs, which is excellent work. Imla coming back from an injury that had him retired hurt earlier. You can't say that the Scorpions haven't tried everything against Savory. They have inserted a man at leg slip, leg gully. They've had a short point, a backward point, a short gully. And everything that has been thrown at him, he has defied it. And he has been very defiant and resilient. It's now getting closer and closer to a magical moment. The one shot away, as it were. Good study stuff from Buchanan, you have to say. Into his third over, we're just conceding the two runs. Cut nicely and a little bit of a misfield at, uh, by McKenzie at backward point, but there's no run. second first class century savory so he has been in this position before yeah it's 
Scorpion's trying to test on his patience. That's pushed nicely. Will he look for two here? No, he won't. It's again to that wide long on position. 95 now. Two thirty for seven. I just don't think the the scorpions did enough uh, to to control Moti and, and Savior. I think they let them dictate the pace of that innings there, Fuzzy. I, I agree with you that they've tried they've tried things. I think they've, they've waited too long to try things. They, RBJ Mansing didn't come on until the 55th over, and then he took 20 balls to get rid of uh, a Moti and break that partnership. I think they just went a little bit slow on the uptake in terms of dealing with the situation. I wouldn't be too, I wouldn't grade them too easily, but I wouldn't grade them too hard because I thought the pair batted extremely well, sensibly, similar to what Savory is doing now because he knows that he's only four runs away from three figures. He's just pushing that delivery down to the deep fielders. And that's what they did. They mixed their aggression. They picked their moments for their aggression. But they were very, very cautious in how they went about defending yeah. and how they went about scoring. And they picked specific areas as to how they were going to score. Driving was not a part of their scoring mechanism. It was always about scoring from the back foot because the pitch was a little bit too paced earlier. Leading, a, leading outside edge there for Imlach. And he gets a, a single to take him up to 22. Kimal Savory gets a strike back at 96 with his score on 96. It's just after that first session, you had them 58 for 5. And then you just, they got the wicket of uh, Permol, I think it was fairly early in the session. Good bowling again by OJ Shields. And then after that, for example, Pete Salmon was on top of his game. There was only one slip in place. Gets the sweep this time. Does he get it fine enough? Uh, it's a half stop. No, it isn't. It gets into the ropes of four. Kimal Savory can save at the moment because it's a wonderful hundred here for the young man. He's, not, he's yet to acknowledge it. I think he now realizes. Yes, he does. He now acknowledges the fact that he has a hundred. He didn't realize he was on one. But that delicate sweep takes him up to his second first class century. And it's been a fighting knock from the number Five batsmen for the Guyana Harper Eagles. Uh, brilliant innings. Badly line delivery. And this has been the perfect way for him to get to a century. Because this is how he has batted all day. Just waited, bided his time, and picked his moments. His 13th four, resulting in his 100th run. Brilliant innings. And immediately gets a cut shot to get another hundred to get another single, and that will tie him with his highest first class score of one hundred and one not out. Brilliant effort. There was if there was ever a moment that a team needed a desperate knock, this was the moment. Savory. But it for all three sessions. And given that the team was wobbling at 42 for five. He has seen the team five runs shy of 200 runs since he has been at the wicket.
At the end of the over, 237 for seven. The Guyana Harp Eagles. I still think, however you look at it, Fuzzy, to have a team 61 for six to then be 237 for seven. And the 50 partnership up as well with these two. That, yeah. that the Jamaica Scorpion just let it slip. However you look at it, however you want to paper it, however you want to say, well, yes, they batted well, yes, they did that. To, to, from 61 for six to 238 for seven, that, uh, that just shows that the, the, the Scorpions got away with that one. Or the, the Harpy Eagles, I should say, yeah. have, have, have let it, have gotten away and escaped from, uh, well, uh, as they could, they could say, yeah, they escaped without, from Without jail. a shadow of a doubt, they have let the Harpy Eagles off yeah. the hook. But I don't think you can say that they haven't tried hard enough. I'm just saying that the batting peers should get some more credit for what they have done. Because Gurakesh Moti is someone we know who loves to be aggressive, loves to hit the ball in the air, loves to go hard at the ball. But today it was completely different. He did hit a couple in the air, but they were well placed, shots. they were controlled, and he maneuvered the gaps well as well. Nice, nicely played again by Kim Alsevran. He will officially have his highest first class score now of 102. You feel as if it's just petering out to the end of the day now. All the excitement and jubilation which started the day for the Scorpions has fizzled out. I mean, they have to back themselves here, Fuzzy, however it looks. You have to say, okay, yes, they've, they've gotten up to 240. If you can limit them to maybe 280, we can still put 400 on the board and make a game out of this. They have to back themselves. There's still a lot of time in this game. Uh, uh, 15 more overs. Just have another hour of play possible. I think if you bowl the spinners, you will definitely get those. End of the 75th, 240 for seven. I'll take my leave for a short while as uh, Marlon Pinnock resumes his commentary duties. So Abhijay Man Singh, one for 24. He brought that 127 run, seventh wicket partnership between Gurakesh Moti and Kemal Savory, who is on 102, make that 103 now. He punches that one down to long off. Well, more like hammered that one. Excellent inning so far from him. Staging up. Very important recovery for the guy in the RP Eagles. Captain Tevin Imlak as well is at the wicket. And another partnership building for the guy in the RP Eagles at the moment, Foster. In 
inching closer to that 250 mark. Imlak looks technically sound as well. Showing no ill effects of that hand injury now as the longer he has gone on since returning. Well, he was dropped by Romain Morris off the bowling of OJ Shields earlier. And so far, OJ Shields have two catch. Drop off his bowling foster. Yeah. Could have easily had a five for two easy chances at this level. At one stage, early before lunch, we were thinking about the guy in the RP Eagles being bowled out before tea. And now it seems like they're going to bat out the whole entire day on the first day here at Savannah Park. That's the importance of batting time at the wicket, building partnership. Mm -hmm. So far, the lower order and middle order of the Guyana Arp Eagles tends to be doing dividend at the moment for them. But if you look at what they've done all season, this has been a consistent... A consistent outcome for them all season is that their top order has struggled throughout the duration of these six rounds. And it has always come down to what Kevin Sinclair, Verasame Pramal, Savory, what they can produce in large parts, as well as what this, the, the one standout century from Tevin Imlock in the third round. Other than that, Tejan and Chandapal got a century in the last round, but... Predominantly, the runs have been scored between, between numbers 4, 5, and 6. And then, Pramal batting at 7 gives you that assurance. That's a shot of the Kingston Cricket Club at Sabayana Park. Supporters giving the Scorpions some support as well. Pete Salmon is back. Leading wicket taker for the Scorpions in this year's West Indies Regional Championship for 2024. He speeds someone with 29 wickets. And goes for the cut there, Imlak. Misses out. Has to be careful because someone has shown that he can take that off pole with him. <laughs> Did so twice this morning. Really bamboozled Kevin Sinclair. When walking off, was asking the, the assistant coach if he saw what happened. <laughs> it was a drifting delivery. It took, that went right through him. He was playing for the line of the ball. He played the first line of the ball. The ball went the other way. Pete someone has been special. He's been special for the Scorpions this season. With ball. And also with the bat as well. Saw him batting at six for the Scorpions this season. And then King says one he wants to show or he wants Pete someone to show that he's an all around cricketer and has all around capabilities. Two substitute feelers on the field as well. Andrew McCarthy and Justin Beckford. A straight issue mid wicket is Andrew McCarthy. And of course, at backward point, it's Justin Beckford. Good to see them getting some outings here in this regional cricket. Tidy over completed by Salmon and Maiden. And at the end of it, it's still 242 for seven. As the shadows lengthen across Sabina Park, you can sense it's getting close to the end of the first day of the six round West Indies Regional Championship at Sabina Park, that's in Kingston, Jamaica. Shut off the George Edley stand. 
beautiful shot of the Savannah Park ground as well. All the way over to the Palisades Highway. <laughs> Going to the airport. That's the way you drive to the airport. The final sun of the afternoon, Foster. Coming out very bright here at Sabina Park. Jay Mansing, one for 26 so far into his ninth. And as I mentioned, break that partnership that were at over 127 runs. Special delivery to get rid of Moti. was caught by Morris. Seventy eighth over in progress now, so let's see if the Scorpions are just biding their time for that new ball or trying to just close out these ninety overs for today. Savory looks as if he plans to come back for tomorrow. He's been very solid. Face over two hundred and seventeen deliveries. Sharp turn there from Man Singh. Too easy for Savory because he was on the back foot. As you'd say, in Jamaica, as easy as Sunday morning. Very easy in the eye. What do you the plan for the RP Eagles so far? I think this is good from the Scorpions as well. Is that they're as much as they're laboring in the field, as if they want to get off the park, <laughs> they have been able to bowl consistent dot deliveries to the pier in the last four or five overs. As I say that, they get a single. And that's the substitute fielder, Justin Beckford. Plays for the Lucas Cricket Club here in Kingston, Jamaica. Had a wonderful season so far. Scoring two centuries and a big half century. You see, third umpire getting ready for the water break. Good stop there. That's good feeling. The big man, Pete Salmon, got down. So at the completion of the 78, it's 243 for the loss of seven here at Sabina Park. We take a break and have some refreshment at Sabina Park.
All right, so welcome back to this, the final hour of play. Don't think you're gonna get an hour of cricket. 42 minutes maximum. Cutoff time is 5.30. Scorpions have bowled 78 overs. They have taken yeah, more than just below six hours to bowl those <laughs> 78 overs, but it has been a very hot day. A lot of stoppages as well. Several injury breaks. So, which forced the retirement of Tevin Imlach. He's back on the field. Savory had a long time on the field getting his recovery. Pete Someone is going to continue from over the wicket that was close. Looking to force the issue on this occasion of Savory. John Foster was a bit close for that shot. Lucky enough, he didn't got a feather through to Morris. Almost went straight to Carlos Brown there. I think the Scorpion would want to get these last three remaining wickets this afternoon. Sweep shot comes out from Savory. That's definitely pitching outside the line of the leg stump. Leg by signal by umpire Christopher Wright as well. Pitching outside the leg stump. 244 it is for seven year. 1 6 action. D1. Quick single here. King picks it up and throws it away as well. Easy single for the Harpy Eagles. And they have run the Scorpions ragged for the last two and a half hours. And if we're going to be highly critical, we'll probably say three and a half because <laughs> since the dismissal of Vera Sami Pramal at 61 for six, it has been the Harpy Eagles all the way. All that moisture in the wicket has dried out and it has become a placid Sabina Park, a traditional Sabina Park wicket. And you realize the RP Eagles, when you're not getting the boundaries, looking to run the singles. That's a game of cricket. They're looking for the runs. They're looking to put the fielders inside their periphery under pressure. And when the boundaries don't come and the fielders are pushed back because they have shown the inclination to go over the top, they've just used common sense and get those singles to the men pushed out to end over number 79 at 246 for seven. And this is what we want to see at the regional level. Sense of a cricket being played here by the Guyana RP Eagles at the moment. Playing basic cricket. They are dominating the last session here at Spina Park. And another partnership building here, Foster. Seventh wicket partnership was 127. And now this partnership blossom here and here at Spina Park between Captain Tevin Imlak at the wicket. Imlak has two centuries as well in regional cricket. And the man who is on 105 from 225 deliveries got his second today as well. Between these two patterns in the middle, they're gonna lie on a harpy eagles for centuries in regional cricket. So far, at the wicket, they are showing their dominance over the scorpions thus far. And what you want to see as well is that Man Singh, into his 10th over, hasn't been as probing as you'd like. It's day one, it's gonna be very difficult for him. But he's, he's trying. He's trying different options. Haven't seen a lot of googlies so far as well. At the start of the season, he did admit that he wasn't so confident in his... Well, how the, the deliveries were getting out of his hands. He wasn't comfortable. 
who was struggling at the first part. He bowled very short in the very first rounds of the competition. And he's one of those players who works very hard on his cricket as well. I think that's a, that's a cause of concern there. Brandon King goes down. And you could see that he went to feel the delivery, but it, as if he lost his footing to his left. And it could be a groin issue or an ankle issue for a minute. Yeah, oh. got stuck in the ground. And we're looking beyond just this regional championship. He has always had some knee issues. Missed the series recently because of that. The Super 50 as well. He's supposed to go to Nepal later this month. And the World Cup is just about 55 days <laughs> away. So, and he's one of the 13, I am sure, that, kept it, that coach Darren Sammy has penciled down. As you mentioned earlier, he's one of your sure picks. Yeah, he was. <laughs> and that was confirmed on Monday. What a beautiful sight that is to know that you're going to a World Cup two months out. The coach has reassured you that you just need to come, be fit and present, and you'll be at the World Cup. That's mm. clarity. Indeed. Another over completed. It's the 80th over. And no signs of the third umpire to say that they're going to take the new ball. No. But we'll take a break and be back shortly. So Pete Salmon to continue. No signs that Kemal Savory will be dismissed anytime today. Not in here at all. Yeah. <laughs> Look as solid as a rock out there, Foster. As a batter in your dish, Foster. I've never looked this solid. <laughs> Yeah, never let this study. <laughs> when I bought the at the crease facing over 229 deliveries. You know what's going to happen is that he has to give away his hand. Or you have to find something Special. magical. Yeah. Everything is easy. I've seen every single bowler. Seven of them have been used so far today. He goes for the sweep shot. There's no one there. And even if there were, they would be a spectator because that has gone all the way for six. That came out of nowhere, actually. Mm. He hasn't shown that inclination to go aerial. Shot of anger there on top of the Kingston Cricket Club here. My word, that's some shot. Showing the class of the man. 100 and 230 deliveries for his 112 run and what a shot that was he picked up that and dispatched it over the backward square leg for six that's a tremendous blow and the timing was terrific as well Excellent innings so far from Kemal, Sa Kemal Savory. And the guy in the Harpy Eagles have their batting point. He goes again. Justin Beckford is at deep backward square. It has gone in front of square. And guess what? It has gone for another six. And, and again, this one from someone outside the line of the leg stump. 
and he just cleared his front leg to create that space. And guess what? The 250 comes up for your guy and the RP Eagles. Yeah, 259 now because it's 12 runs added. And that's a shot of authority from Kemal Savory. 118. And now the, the think tank of the Scorpions team get together. And they're looking to see how they can break this partnership, a threatening partnership. It is now 71 runs. And of course, they got the batting points as well, Foster. This yeah. is really good by the Guyana Arp Eagles. What a recovery. And this the first day of the six round action. Who would have thought the Arp Eagles would have battled the entire day after being at 61 for the loss of five? Well, it was 61 for six. Mm. Yeah, so it is even more spectacular what they have done. It's going to be 200 runs since that six wicket because Imlak has stuck that one backward of square. Short delivery coming in from Aviji Mansing. Easy picking for so Captain Imlak. Just came inside the line. And just steer that ball. Down to that vacant square leg region for two easy runs to his credit. And more so to the RP Eagles, who's up to 2 6 1 for a loss of seven. Scorpions have been handicapped by the unavailability of Derval Green, who has been off the field for close to two and a half hours. Captain Brandon King has tried every option. Turned away again. This is going to be runs. As quick as Justin Beckford is. Can't stop two. 263 now for seven. The Harpy Eagles are really pushing home the advantage here. 202 runs added since that sixth wicket fell. Not, nothing unnecessary. Here by the RP Eagles, the playing basic cricket foster. And when the bad ball presents itself, they're quick to capitalize. Spinning away there was Man Singh. I think Man Singh should have bowled in that middle and off some area to the right hander. Try to spin the ball across him. That ball pitch about fifth stump. No need for Tevin Imlock to play at that. At the completion of the 82nd, it's 263 for the loss of seven. Seems like Brandon King, captain of the Scorpions, is going to take the new ball here late on day one. Some would say long overdue. It's eight overs to go, maximum. Half an hour. I don't think you're going to get eight overs in that. I don't think the Scorpions openers are looking too interested in even batting tonight as well. So it's probably the best thing for the Scorpions to take it now that even if they dismiss the Harpy Eagles, it's not many overs for the Scorpions. But you doubt, based on what you've seen so far, that they're going to be batting today. Unless something magical happens. Marquino Mindy is marking out his run up. And of course, Buchanan on debut. Don't think he want to face the fire this afternoon. He wants to, he wants to sleep tonight. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. It's been a long day for him. Bowl a few overs as well. Two umpires having a chat as well in the middle. That's umpire Christopher Wright of Jamaica mm -hmm. and Joel Wilson of Trinidad and Tobago. 
was doing a tremendous job in the middle so far to experience umpires as well I don't think you're gonna have any light issues you're gonna be able to get through these overs today Marquina Midley would want to had I have a wicket to his tally having to register a wicket in this game so far Up over 127 first class wickets faster. Good start. The extra bounce from Mindy. Surprised to know there's no no ball. Has bought three spells so far. Started all three with no balls. The fourth one, he has been better off. Actually, Mark Eno mainly played one test for the West Indies as well. I think that was against Australia. Both only two deliveries. <laughs> and Savory slaps that to King. Oh, he drops it. It was a good effort. And he threw the ball in disgust. Flung himself to his right. And I think he had it. And then he lost it with the elbows going hard on the ground. That shot came out of nowhere again from Savory. He was trying to bash that through the covers. A good effort from King. But he's so dejected. He feels as if he should have taken it. Yeah, you could see the reaction on his face as well. Threw the ball with disgust as well. Let off. The Centurion in the game so far. Will this be costly for the Scorpions? Wraps him on the pad. Umpire Christopher Wright unmoved. It's 264 for 7. That was a tough chance. Let's see the replay. I think that one was a little bit high. Jagged back from Mindy. Got closer to the stumps. Yeah. Had that hit him on the pad, he would have probably been out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a little bit high. Excellent decision then. Yeah. Good use of the crease as well from Minley to get that in swinger. It's a good swing bowler is Marquina Minley. Yeah, just this injuries that really affect the Scorpions fast bowlers in the recent time Foster completely different lineup from what they started the, the season with and that was always going to be difficult Ooh. and shape back very late as well haven't seen it Call some garden for some time here at Savannah Park. Getting very dark here at Savannah Park, Foster. Don't think we'll get in those eight overs. The third over has been completed. 264 for the loss of seven. OJ Shields. Back for his fourth spell. And no surprise, he'll be coming from this. The court was end where he picked up those two wickets of the two opening batters. And so far, with figures of 3 for 46 from 12 overs.
contemplation as to what they should do with the field. Brandon King has left the field. It seems as if he has an injury concern. What was that? <laughs> That's just a wild whoosh from Kemal Savory. That was clearly unnecessary and totally unnecessary. He's batting so well. Yeah, not interested in the short pitch deliveries. Not at all. <laughs> and so far. If you're gonna gonna be playing at higher level, I don't think hundred and nineteen is gonna get you there. Especially if you show signs like these that you're not interested in playing the shorter pitch deliveries. Clearly not a fan of short pitch deliveries. Fast and straight from Shields this time. But you want him to show a little bit more comfort, assurance for someone who has faced 236 balls. Don't give it away. Push the Scorpions even further to going back into the field tomorrow. Have them in the field. The longer they are in the field, mentally, that plays on the, on the batting unit. You wear them down even more. It's a strong possibility that you can rip through that top order. And talking about positive and great courage, you look at uh, Solozano of the Windward Island Volcanoes. He's a good batter. Tends to get behind the deliveries. But with a lot of ease so far in this year's regional championship. I think he'd, he made his debut for the West Indies in a test, but didn't get to bat faster. But for me, it's a solid opener in regional cricket. Morris struggling with his footwork there. Took some time to get to his right. Has to be skipping some more. Started the season on a high. Then as the season get closer to the end. See the struggles from Morris. We take nothing from him. Did a wonderful job early on in the season for the Scorpions. Both with the glove and with the bat. Slashes! And dropped again. Another chance goes up begging for the Scorpions. And the third of OJ Shields as well. It went quickly to Kurt McKenzie. Flashed at it. Should be taken. Really should be taken. It's a comfortable height at this level. It's as if they weren't expecting it. Another one goes down off Shields. And he's not happy. That's the third chance down of Shields. It could have been over already. It's 264 for seven. And with OJ Shields pulling out his heart here, he won't be a happy man, Foster. Goes hard again and misses outside the off stop this time. It's 264 for seven. And Savory looking to finish everything off today. Four overs completed so far. Two six four for loss of seven. Another catch. Been dropped off the bowling up for Jay Shields. His third. Won't be a happy fellow, is Jay Shields. Bowling with real pace. Putting you, giving you all out. To see catches chopping off your bowling. Won't be pleasing to him as well. Another six overs remaining in the day's play. 
Uh, this is the first day of the six round action. Scorpions started the day on a high afternoon session not doing the job that was required of them and hence why the game is going away from them Foster so we count what four chances gone down overall she off shields mm. another one of the bowling of I think it was Makino Minley Good effort from Brandon King, diving away. Well, it should be five then. I think Abby G. Mansing dropped a, a catch at slip yeah. as well. Yeah, uh, from all Lewis. That was the very first delivery he bowled to Tevin Imlock. Indeed. Yeah, so five chances gone down for the Scorpions. Not good at all in regional cricket, any form of cricket. Good single, excellent cricket by Tevin Imlak. Scheme inside the line and tuck that ball to the vacant mid wicket errors and chattels through for his 31st run and 265 for seven. The Harper Eagles staging. Wonderful recovery here. Scorpions feelers just going through the motion here. Not seeing the urge and the fight as if we were getting this morning at about 10 15, 20, 20. Foster. Tiring looking scorpions on the field. Another no ball from Minley, his fourth. Another run added to that no ball, so it's two runs. Going wide off the crease this time, Marquina Minley. Umpire Christopher Wright spotted. Scorpions guilty on this occasion. Five job catches in a game can't be accepted at this level. Savory up to 120 from 241 deliveries. Pulled away, but can't beat the man at <laughs> square leg. It's Andre McCarthy, the substitute feeler. On for Captain Brandon King. Hills out of the parish of St. Elizabeth. This is for the St. Elizabeth cricket team as well. Pass on the 19th player. Another no ball. This is poor stuff from Minley. He's fifth now, Foster. See that mainly he's trying to get extra close to the wicket to get that ball to nip back. Try to see if he can get him like caught in front of the stumps. Well, that completes over number 85, 268 for the loss of seven.
more medical attention here for Kemal Savory. Sixty-eight for seven. Another five over overs remaining in the day's play. Savory, who was hit earlier today by Shields as well as Minley on that same right arm. Fought his way through to 120. It's getting closer and closer to the end, so for sure the Scorpions will not be batting today. So, whatever happens from here, Guyana can say that they have recovered extremely well and are in a very good position. At Stumps at St. Augustine in Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago, 374 for four. Jason Mohammed, 157. Amir Jangu, 151. And this is against the combined campuses and colleges team. As the medical official leaves the field, or the physiotherapist leaves the field for the guy in the Harpy Eagles. Barbados Pride, they batted the entire day, 248 for three. Guess who has a century? Craig Brathwaite, 117 from 275. Mm. 13 fours. He's this second. Is against the Leeward Islands Hurricanes, his second century. Zachary McCaskey scored his first regional century, 101. 12 fours and two sixes, 248 for three there. OJ Shields is getting ready. To bowl his 14th over and over at Coolidge. I'll tell you that update after this delivery from Shields, which is a wide one to Savory. The West Indies Academy 99 for 5 in response to 162 by the Volcanoes. Uh, top scoring so far is Kadima Lane with 35. Carl and Bowen Tuckett is Ted not out and Joshua James 14. Tyson has two for 30 for the Volcanoes. Ryan John and Shamar Springer, the other wicket taker. There was a run out of Akima Geist. And he has replaced the left handed player who was here. So. Five twenty here in Kingston, Jamaica. Getting very dark here, Foster. Trying to remember what's Warrior's first name. He slipped me, but he has been replaced by Aki Magis for the academy team. Oh, that was quick. at it again from OJ Shields. Oh. Yeah, too quick for him. Lucky enough he's he got out of the way. I almost took him out. Indeed. Yeah. Rashawn Warrell is the name. So three deliveries to come in this over. Nine minutes of play to go. Talks up Savory. So it's been brilliant from the Harpy Eagles. Outstanding work. You have to give them credit for what they have done. Still no signs of Brandon King coming back. He took a catch. Slight worry because he seems as if he had an issue with his ankle initially, and then he went for that diving catch. Missed it. And 
has been off the field since. Full from Shields, driven pleasantly. He has hit a couple through that region, but I think this one is probably his most pleasing one. Another boundary for Kemal Savory. Over pitch from Shields. And even though Ramon Lewis was interested, he couldn't stop it. And the 270 comes up. And the Scorpions have been backed into a corner here. And they're getting punched by Savory and Imla. Yeah, over pitch delivered there from O.J. Shields. And great dexterity there being shown by the man in tremendous form so far at the wicket. Savory doing an outstanding job for the RP Eagles. And leaves that one alone. Three for 50 for Shields. It's 272 for seven. Maximum of probably two more overs to come. Seven minutes of play left in the day. Well, four overs remaining. I don't think the Scorpions would get in that much over. What a wonderful recovery from the Guyana Happy Eagles. I would say they are in command of the one Foster. This morning they lost five wickets very early before lunch. And we're seeing the, the, the Scorpions will be batting today. Outstanding performance by the middle order and the lower end. Sees the Kayana Arpel Eagles in command so far. A 272 for the loss of seven. Magnificent hundred second century. Steady left hander. Savory. And Moti. Cut in half century as well. Really set a platform for the Harper Eagles. Pete Summon is back from the Michael Olin end. Got two wickets early this morning was Pete Summon. Then since haven't been asking any questions whatsoever. And he's back figures of two for 64 from 18 overs scorpions just moving gingerly in the field as is and getting close to the end of the one in this round six of this West Indies regional championship so someone to continue Tucked around the corner. Beat someone. 29 wickets to his tally this season. This year's regional championship. Some big wickets involved as well. The le leading run scorer in this year's regional championship. It's Kevin Sinclair. Got a beauty from Pete Summon this morning. So just spinning down the leg side there, Foster. Still getting some spin out of this wicket here. It's Pete Summon. Carlos Brown was outstanding over the weekend, scoring his first double century in Cena Cup cricket against St. Anne in that quarterfinals. Completion of the 87th at 272 for the loss of seven.
Scorpions just seem to be laying back now. Just hoping for something to happen. Hoping for a miracle. Uh, I think this is going to be the final over of the day. She is just going to be bowling. So the Scorpions are still going to fall short by two overs. And it's just a reflection of what has transpired so far for them because in the first session, they didn't bowl a lot of overs, but you, you felt the energy. You felt as if they were going to be creating a wave throughout the day that evaporated throughout two brilliant partnerships. 127 for the first one between Moti and Savory. Gudakesh Moti, that is. 127 run partnership for the seventh wicket. And you're wondering why Imlak is just batting. He had to retire hurt. Hit on the hand earlier. Had to wait until that partnership was broken for him to re-enter. He has since joined the party. And along with Kemal Savory, who has 125 to his name now. Has taken the... For the Harpy Eagles to 273. And this partnership is now 85 runs. And 85 valuable runs for the Harpy Eagles. Who is sitting at fourth in this West Indies Regional Championship for 2024. And the Scorpions in fifth. So fourth playing fifth here at Sabina Park. Eagles inching closer to that 300 mark. Already capture a batting point as well. It's going over 250. That's a plus for them. No ball spot. It's a quick single. Excellent cricket. Great commitment being shown by Captain Tevin Imlock. Immediately after playing that a shot, he called through the non-striker. to respond very quickly between the wickets. This is the sort of cricket you want to see at the regional level. 275. For seven here. This morning, the Scorpions, they won the toss and asked the Harper Eagles to take for a strike. Scorpions made early inroads in the first five wickets inside the first session. And then since two magnificent partnership really took the game away from the Scorpions at present. A partnership of 127 then this partnership, 86 so far. Middle and low order for the Harper Eagles. Plays dividend throughout this competition so far. Guided away this time by Savory. Justin Beckford, substitute fielder. And only a couple of deliveries to come. Shot of some spectators here at Spina Park, giving the Scorpions some support. But you can see on her face, Foster, not, not any pleasing face there. Martina Milley and Pete Someone offering some advice to Jay Shields. Have one of his worst days. A worst day in the field. Had three chances to drop off his bowling. And as a fast bowler, any bowler at all, he won't accept that. Good single, excellent cricket. Even when there's two deliveries before the close of play, Foster, you still see the urgency by the RP Eagles in the middle. 
that shows good commitment. Hence why they are doing so well in the middle. She ever see every face over 250 deliveries. Riding is locked though. Looking to ensure now that he will not be dismissed for day one. And he won't be because the final ball is coming up. And this has been a brilliant partnership. A 90 run, 8 wicket stand. So, two slips and a gully. Don't understand why there are two men out deep. I don't think he's going to be hooking with the last ball of the day as a captain. And if he does and gets out, I think he should be stripped off the leadership role. Beautiful delivery from Shields. It doesn't get better than that. But guess what? It wasn't good enough. It didn't take the edge and it didn't take the off pole. And that's the luck that Guyana need to close out a day that really and truly, some would say, honors even. But the fight and the courage and determination from the Guyana Harpy Eagles, I would probably give them the leaders of the day at 278 for 7 with all that has happened with the Scorpions throughout this season batting-wise. But a beautiful delivery from Shields who has been very impressive today. 3 for 56, along with Pete Salmon, 2 for 64. And Derval Green, along with Abhijay Mansingh, getting a wicket. But... The day belongs to Kemal Savory. 127 from 251 balls. A top, top innings. A innings that anyone can be proud of. And makes his way off the field, greeted by the coach. And he should be. He should be worshipped by the Harvey Eagles top order today. Based on what he has produced. So 278 for 7. The Guyana Harpy Eagles after 88 overs. They lost Tejan Ryan Chandrapal for 1. They lost Raymond Perez very early as well. He went for 4. Kevlin Anderson went for a duck. And at that stage it was 13 for 3. And then after that it was... Kevin Sinclair with a couple of boundaries. He got, his, got up to 23 before he was bowled by Pete Salmon. And then Ronaldo Ali Mohammed was bowled the very next over. Similar style by Salmon for a five ball duck. At that stage it was 42 for five. Went to lunch at 58 for five. Came back out at 61 for six. When Vera Sami Pramor was dismissed by Shields. And then Savory. And Gurakesh Moti added 127 runs to give together before Moti was dismissed by Abhijay Mansingh. Savory is still there. Imla, the captain, returned after being hit earlier. He has 33. And the Harpy Eagles will resume the second day at 278 for 7. So you can rejoin us here at Sabina Park on Thursday for day 2 action. Until then, stay tuned.